Well, hello everyone. Happy Friday and welcome to another lawn care live stream. My name is Ron Henry and this is a live lawn care q and It's all about you. The way this works is pretty simple. If it's the first time here, welcome. Uh, the way this works as far as getting your question answered is you drop your questions down in the chat and I work through them in the order it comes in. Uh, sometimes I have the answer, sometimes I don't, but either way, we have a great time talking about lawn care topics. I have to tell you guys, man, I'm a little bit stressed tonight. Um, literally an hour, about an hour ago, one of the worst things happened that could happen if you are having to do live streams, like at least from a technical perspective. They were out digging in the front yard and what do you think, what do you think I'm gonna tell you? They, uh, they dug up the fiber that feeds feeds the house. So right now I am on um, a Wi-Fi hotspot, hence why I'm streaming at 1080p tonight. So forgive me for that. Um, I've done some testing, so hopefully it's coming through okay for you guys. Um, if it is, give me a thumbs up um, or just let me know in the chat, looks good, and uh, we're gonna make the best of it. So to that end, I'm also gonna try and get the um, the giveaway tonight done a little bit earlier than I normally do, because I wanna make sure you guys get your goodies. But I just wanna you know apologize ahead of time for any technical difficulties that I might run into. If my connection drops, I will reconnect just using my phone. So either way, we're gonna, we're gonna make this happen tonight. So thank you guys for your patience tonight. All right, so let's see what we have in the live stream. Oh, we got Higgy Pop here in Coming GA. He says, uh, hey, Ron, it's blazing hot here. See, this is my first uh, my first uh, challenge. Um, it's blazing hot here, Coming PA. Um, I'm putting out a light com uh, co application of 1648 um, every uh, two to three days and leveling the lawn. Great video on spot leveling. All right, Higgy, well, I appreciate that. Let me see if I can do something about... Um, about making this uh, smaller. Let's see if we can drop down your font a little bit and see if that will work. Uh, that looks a little bit better. All right. I think that will uh, get that done because now I'm at 1080p, so that's hence why we're uh, why we're not uh, why it's not uh, quite as big as it as it normally is. All right. So let me see if that that's a little better. All right. Cool. I think I think we solved it. All right, so um, you're saying that your Bermuda loves heat. You're putting down a line application of 1648 every two to three weeks, and the lawn seems to like it. Great video on spot leveling. I appreciate that, man. It's it was a ton of work to put that video together, um, uh, a lot more than my than I, than I normally put into some of my other videos. So I'm really glad that you guys liked it. That it was well received. Um, but uh, but yeah, it was a it was a fun one. Hopefully we'll see if it hopefully it does well as it continues to um, to get out to the masses. Appreciate you watching. All right, so we got uh, Kevin Sheehan in the house. What's going on, Kevin? Thanks to thanks for coming to hang out. I appreciate you, sir. Um, what else? Who else we have here? Mark Baker. I think Mark. I think you're you're relatively new to the live stream, but welcome. Thanks for coming to hang out with us this evening. And again, guys, tonight the topic or the questions that I'm, I'm mainly looking for are questions around top dressing. Um, if you guys know here and lately, I've been on a top dressing kick, both on my Instagram and also like the project that I was doing on the lawn. Uh, it, some of you guys have asked about um, you know timing as far as top dressing goes, especially if you have warm season grass. And we are nearing, we're getting close to, not necessarily the end, but you're getting, um, I'm gonna say, so we're getting to the decision point. So if you're deciding you're gonna top dress this season and you got warm season grass, um, you know, in the next week or two, you really need to make up your mind on whether or not you're going for that because you wanna make sure there's enough time for the lawn to recover uh, properly. Hence why I, um, I put out that video on, uh, on top dressing. So that, that's what we're looking for um, a lot of um, uh, this evening. So uh, Kevin has a question about carbonized PN and sand. Let me um, go down here and so I can find that one first and then I'll go back and take, get some of the other questions. So his first question was, can carbonized PN and a sand mixture be used as a leveling mix and should it be put down before or after Humic Max and Carbon Kit monthly lawn feeding? Great question. So. Uh, the way I would do that, Kevin, uh, is is I would treat, yeah, so to answer your question, first of all, yes, you can mix carbonized PN and sand. Carbonized PN will be like your organic portion of the uh, the top dressing mix. And uh, yeah, that works absolutely great. You can do carbonized PN by itself. It's a little bit expensive to do it that way. Um, but yes, it absolutely can be mixed with sand as long as you got the time to, to, to do that. As far as um, when it should be put down before Humic Max and the and the carbon kit, so the, I, the way I like to do top dressing is if you are aerating your lawn, which if you're doing a big top dressing job, I recommend aeration. Um, but if you are aerating, what I would recommend is aerate, then put down your fertilizer, then top dress, and then if you have any, um, you know, like you do talk about the, the, the monthly carbon kit, which is largely foliar absorbed, you can either do that a couple of days after you're done top dressing, or if you want, you can do the carbon kit prior. So like I, I would not, um, 
In other words, I wouldn't put sand down and then go do the carbon kit right on top of that, right? Because a lot of the grass blades are going to be um, covered with sand. So I would either do um, the your, your monthly carbon kit feeding um, either a couple days prior to, to top dressing or a few days after when the grass is beginning to grow through and emerge. If it were me, I'd probably do a little bit early. I'd probably do it a little bit prior uh, to top dressing. But I mean, as far as sequence, it would be aerate if you're doing that, then humic max then your top dressing mix, and then, and as I said, whether or not you do the carbon kit or not, that's uh, largely dependent on whether you, um, you know, you can either wait a little while after or you can do it a little bit before. So uh, yeah, it's a great, great mix. I gotta tell you, like a carbonized PN is awesome. Like my, my front lawn has never been greener than when I top dress it strictly with carbonized PN. But again, it, just using it alone as a top dressing mix is a little bit cost prohibitive. So that's the only, only negative. That's kind of the way things are in life, right? If it's really, really good, it tends to not be cheap. So, uh, so yeah. All right, so let's see who else we got here in the live stream. And Kevin, if that didn't answer your question, if you have any other follow-up questions, let me know, Hit him, drop them in the chat, and I will do my best to get to them. All right, so Lamont Smith's in the house. What's going on, Lamont? I appreciate you from hanging out, sir. Thanks for taking some time out of your Friday evening. And then uh, Timothy Smith is here. He says, hey, Ron and everyone, looking forward to the leveling q and I'm actually doing that this weekend. Well, I'm happy for you, and I'm also sad for you, man, because leveling, I mean, it's, it's I say that kind of tongue-in-cheek, because leveling is a ton of work. Like, top dressing is a ton of work. But once it's over and you get the results of it, um, you know, it's it's something that that a lot of people, I haven't had anyone that's done it, that's come back to me afterwards and said, you know what, I really wish I hadn't done that. Um, in the moment, they hate it, but once it's all done, you are uh, you really, really like the results of what it does for your lawn. All right, we got Joseph Roberts in the house. What's going on, uh, Joseph? Thanks for coming to hang out. And again, guys, just to, uh, as a reminder, um, for those of you, for the 68 of you that are in here, I'm gonna give you guys a little, little peek, a sneak peek. Remember, we were giving away four things tonight, so, um, first off, first up, like the prize number four is going to be just your, your stripe action sticker. These are available on the YouTube, um, the merch store. So if you're looking to get one of these and if you don't win tonight, you can get one here, Ron Henry, youtube.com forward slash Ron Henry, uh, forward slash store. So these are going to be giving away tonight. Also, you're going to have your choice again, choice of a, one of the live stream stickers. So you're going to have either the, um, the white live stream sticker or the baller, gaudy, in your face, psychedelic chrome stickers. You have a choice of one of those two. Those are your second, that's the third place prize. Um, second place is going to be a, a lawn leveling tool, oh, sorry, oh, sorry, a lawn leveling tool, a manual weeding tool, uh, this guy. So I was talking about this in a video a couple of weeks ago, so I'm gonna give you one of these away because I always talk about the merits of manual weeding. And uh, so I figured why not give one away? And then the grand prize guys, literally, literally this is one of two in existence. There's only two of these out there. Uh, unless Josh ordered another one, but I mean, that I know of, there's only two of them. Uh, you have the Desert Tan Ron Henry hat with a leather patch done by Western Rider. It's a pretty cool bit of kit. I really like this, and someone is gonna win this tonight. So stick around for that. Should be a, uh, a great time. Just wanna give you guys a reminder. As, uh, oh, the way you have to um, enter to win. So last week's live stream, it's the one with the weed on the on the on the um, cover. I actually, think I think that's what it is. Let me see here. I think that's what last week's live stream um, uh, thumbnail was. I'll tell you here really quick. I should know that, right? Um, well, yeah, the one that says on the topic of summer weeds. So the, the thumbnail that says summer weeds. That's the one that you're gonna want to. Um, that's the one that you're gonna want to um, to to look at. Um, and all you have to do to enter is leave a comment at the um, on that page uh, on that a comment on that video saying what you're doing for your fertilization. That's it. That's all you have to do. You don't have to be a subscriber. You don't have to do any of that other stuff. Just just leave a comment, and that and you that you get entered to uh, to win. All right. Okay. So let's move on to our next question. We have uh, Shazi um, from the UK. I always love it when we have the UK contingent uh, stepping in. Although you guys are, are, are laying the smack down on us, man, and, and the Olympics, I think in, in swimming you guys are doing really well, and you know I'm sure and some other events we got it coming to us, but uh, but yeah. All right, so it says, hey Ron, um, and everyone all good here in the UK, finally got some heat wave, it's finally broken, some valuable rain at least, glad to hear that, because I know last week you guys had like, what, 75 degree weather, and it was, it was, uh, it was horrible. And this is an interesting question, so he says, or she says, um, Ron, can you please explain to me what humic acid is and the benefits, I can't seem to find granular form in the UK and wondering if I'm missing out on something useful. So I'm surprised you can't get humic um, acid in some form in the UK. So what it is, is um, best way to describe it 
it's a nutrient, it's a nutrient that helps feed the soil biology. So it helps with nutrient uptake, helps stimulate microbial activity. So you can think of it the way, how does it help nutrient uptake, right? By stimulating um, microbial activity, microbes break down or make available like the fertilizers and other um, um, elements that are in the soil that the grass needs to thrive. So by, by improving microbial activity, you're, you're essentially improving um, nutrient uptake. Um, and like I said, as well, it also um, prevents um, uh, or it helps with drought tolerance, another benefit of it. And I see you had a follow-up question as far as where it comes from um, and, and whatnot. So humic max, um, from what I understand, sorry, humic max, what, humic acid, from what I understand, is um, if you take like plant material that has been broken down like, like tens of thousands of years ago, so really, really old plant material, another organic material that didn't quite make it into the state of coal, but is also just very, very rich. So it's, again, it's stuff that's been broken down in, um, over a long period of time. Um, that is what where humic acid comes from. So it, it's mined from um, a material called leonardite. So if you look up like humic acid benefits, you'll hear see mention about leonardite. So um, that is, that's in a nutshell where it comes from. The benefits of it are that there really are no negatives to it. Um, again, it, it's it's only positives for feeding your soil, which in turn uh, makes your grass better. And you should be able to find that in some form in the UK. I'd be, I'm surprised that you can't because you guys are all about, um, you know, organics. So I'm shocked that you can't find that um, available um, in the, uh, in the live in the live stream, oh, sorry, in the uh, in the UK. All right. So if you have any other questions, let me know. Hopefully that explanation was good. Um, if you have any follow up questions, drop them down, and I will do my best to help you out. Okay. Timothy has a question here. He has a, now our first top dressing question. He's a little bit um, or, or he's talking about scalping. He's doing PGR. And he's asking. Just finished uh, scalping my lawn in Georgia. It was beyond hot. It was hot today. It was really really hot today. It got a little cool in the afternoon, but it was it was in the nineties today. You said, "Will leveling tomorrow be okay?" Um, is it okay to apply PGR along with other treatments when I finish or should I wait? So as far as leveling tomorrow, yeah, you can absolutely go for it. If you can deal, if you can stand the heat, the grass is going to be just fine. Um, as far as PGR, um, if it's the first time leveling, Timothy, what I would do, is, I would recommend is this, um, especially if you haven't done PGR in your lawn as yet. And we're a little bit, we're, I would say we're literally late in the season. We're getting towards the tail end of the season. Um, that I'd say let's hold off on the PGR. Everything else you can do if you want to do your fertilization, that's fine. If you want to do your, um, you know, any other soil amendments, no problem. Go ahead and go for it. But the biggest, um, but as far as like PGR, that is going to slow down um, how quickly the grass grows through the top dressing mix, and it, it is a it is a mild stressor, a, a very mild stressor to the turf as well too. So. The fact that you're you're going to beach your lawn, you're going to be you're going to be covering it in sand. Um, you know, there's not a, the grass is not going to um, you know punch through as quickly. If you put PGR on it, so I say let's wait on that. Let's give it a couple of weeks and then uh, do PGR. Everything else um, you can everything else you can do no, without issue. No, so great question. Um, good luck tomorrow if you happen to go forward with it. I have a, I have a feeling you probably are because this late in the game, you probably already got sand sitting on your driveway. And you're going for it. So I think you're, you, you are. So uh, good luck. Best of luck to you. Let me know if you have any other questions. And let me know uh, how, it, how it comes out. All right. So Shaz, Shazia Shadri has another follow-up question. It says, uh, Ron, what's your view on fungicide to kill red thread? I've heard that fungicide can uh, kill the valuable, bacteria, the valuable bacteria in the soil, so avoid using it. Uh, yeah. So uh, can, it kill, can fungicide work against red thread? Yes. Is it, can it also be damaging to the microbial activity in the soil temporarily? Yes, it'll do both of those things. So the, I guess the question you have to ask yourself is um, how, like how, um, how bad is the red thread? How, how, um, you know, how widespread is it? I'll tell you in my lawn, I had a little bit of it, a tinge of it here in the late spring when we were getting a ton of rain and the heat was starting to come in. But once the rain backed off a bit or the, and the soil was getting a little bit less moisture, it cleared up on its own. So um, you know, red thread, depending on how bad it is, you may or may not necessarily need a fungicide, but yes, it is, it is going to, um, harm the microbial activity in your soil, but it's a temporary thing. Uh, as far as what fungicide I'd recommend, um, I'm, I'm a big fan of the ones from Syngenta. So like Heritage G or, or the, um, or Headway, either one of those. I don't know if you can get those in the UK, but there should be some equivalent that you can get in the UK that will, um, that will take care of it. So yes, it is a very effective, it is going to temporarily, keyword temporarily cause, um, uh, you know, a slight setback in the microbial activity in your lawn. But other than that, you should be, uh, you should be fine. I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it too much. 
All right, so next up we got uh, JC is in the house. Says, what's up, Ron? What's going on? I appreciate you. And um, up New York, Lon's in the house. What's going on, uh, sir? He says, happy Friday, all. And Ron, after this time, you can call me Emilio. Okay, so I'll call you Emilio from now on. I think I can remember that. That's a little bit easier than up New York, Lon. So Emilio's in the house. And, um, and then uh, Kevin has a follow-up question about top dressing, where he says, uh, and is carbonized PN what you use to top dress your front line? Yes, yes, it is. Um, and I think I used, I mean, there's a video on it on top dressing, um, on top dressing with soil. And I think I used 20 bags, Kevin, thereabouts. I think it was like 20 bags what I use in the front lawn. Um, there's a video, if you look up um, Ron Hen YouTube, Ron Henry, top dressing with soil, you will see that, um, you'll see that it's, uh, the, yeah, the, I go through the entire process. I talk about using carbonized PN and that is what I use. And it's, it's awesome stuff. I mean, if you got a small area, and you can afford to um to to do it. It's gonna be it's gonna look it's gonna really really feed the soil. But now remember, if you use carbonized PN strictly, that you're not top dressing for structure as much as you are for improving the quality of the soil. So something to keep in mind, right? If you put down um you know if you're looking to to level the lawn and have that leveling job um last a bit longer, you're gonna want to put some sand in with that. You're right. You're not gonna want to go strictly with um with carbonized PN. That's that is what I would um I'd recommend. So 70 30 mix. You know that's like my mantra. I always Anytime you hear me talk about top dressing, it's always 70-30 mix. That's that's the way to go for the most part. And um, yeah, that, that's what I'd recommend for you as well. All right. So Connor Souls is in the house. He says, uh, hey, Ron, what's going on? Hope you're doing well. I'm doing all right, man. I'm hoping um, the Wi-Fi hotspot holds out so that we can uh, we can get through the live stream. Um, but yeah, overall, I am I'm doing doing all right. You know, again, worst uh, worst case is first world problems, right? So we will get through it. All right, we got Tomax from um, uh, Orlando, Florida in the house. What's going on? And um, and then up New York uh, says, or sorry, Emilio says, he's been re-watching re all your videos on top dressing. I can't wait for my grass to die and put down an 80-20 sand compost for the renovation. Yeah, man, with you, where you are, um, as far as top dressing goes, man, like for warm season guys and gals, we are um, getting closer to the tail end of our top dressing season. For cool season guys, you're about to get into go time. So like late August, early September, that's when you, that's your time to really get ready for, for top dressing. So uh, so yeah, it sounds like you are are getting all geared up and uh, to to go. So yeah, yeah, man, I'm glad that you're finding the content useful and and largely like the same process that that is used for cool for warm season grass can also apply to shortcut. Um, sorry, that applies for warm season grass can also apply to shortcut cool season grass too. So. If you're strictly going for structure, you can go with 100% sand. There's a lot of people that do that. But I'm a huge fan of doing a 70-30 mix. I think if you're going to go through all the trouble, you might as well also improve the quality of the soil at the same time. No reason to just to just to just level the lawn. Because you're not, you're not a golf course, right? You want Your lawn is more like a fairway. You want to make sure you're improving soil quality uh, at the same time. What's going on, Super Tia? Thanks for hanging out. As well as Daryl Tunstall. What's going on, Daryl? Oh, guys, and I actually had to, uh, I promised um, uh, our one of our, you know, our live stream celebrities, um, Mr. Jay Pompano, who got his Stripe Action shirt for his birthday. He sent me a picture of it, so I told him I would show him on the live stream. Uh, so this is, uh, J is Jay. He got his Stripe Action shirt from the Ron Henry merch store. Wearing it with pride. And the lawn is looking pretty solid, sir. It's looking pretty clean. I mean, I, I mean, here, here's the thing. There must be a slight point deduction, Jay, for it not being warm season grass. But overall, not bad. Overall, not bad. An awesome shirt, man. I really, really appreciate the support. All right, Jay Bo Outdoors is saying, hey, from Alabama. Uh, what's going on, sir? Thanks for coming to hang out in the live stream. And then Lario Pope has a question about weed control. He says, hey, hey Ron, I need your help. I have dove weed taking over my yard. I applied two applications of pre-emergent between February and March. Okay. Um, so there's a couple of options for that. I'm almost positive that Spectracide will handle that. I'm not sure where in the country you are, though, um, Larico. If you can, let me know where in the country you are. If I'm going to answer this question is if you are in um, Georgia, right? So you have warm season grass. If you have warm season grass, what you're gonna to wanna to go with is something um, called Spectracide. Super easy to get your hands on, um, really easy to apply. And uh, I'll show you here what I'm referring to. It's this guy here, Weed Stop uh, Plus. And I'm pretty sure that Dove Weed is one of the weeds that it controls. We can actually check here live. Uh, yeah, it is. There you go. See, so Dove Weed is one of the ones that it takes care of. Um, this guy controls over 470 weeds. And what's cool about this is that it's a combination of several um, post-emergent herbicides, right? So you've got um, 
uh, Kinclorac, Dicamba, um, 2,4-D. So it's got a, a little bit of everything in it. And, it, and that's how they're able to take care of a lot of weeds um, in a product that's, that's you know, relatively nicely priced. I mean, you can pick this up for around uh, $10, $15 at your local Home Depot or, or Lowe's or something like that. So you can, you can find this online also, but locally you can find it pretty cheap as well. So this is what I would try if you have... Um, Warm season grass. That's that's what I would go with. That's um that's the way to go. Now, as far as why your pre-emergent application in February, March didn't or is not didn't keep doveweed away, hard to say. I mean, it could have been the rate that you use, like your application rate. Could have been. I mean, February should have been early enough to prevent germination. Um, but um, but but yeah. I mean, it's it just it, again, it's just it, even if you have pre-emergent will is not like a um a silver bullet in the sense that it will prevent all weeds from from being an issue in your lawn. It's gonna it's gonna seriously reduce it when done properly, when applied properly. But it doesn't mean if you put down pre-emergent, you're never gonna have any any issues with weeds in your lawn at all. So just something to uh, to keep in mind. Great question. If that and if you if that didn't help you out, I'll let me know down below and I'll, I'll revisit it. All right, so um, Alex B has a question. He says, uh, hey, Ron, do you ever use peat moss in your lawn? Seems it divides opinion, but I find it useful as part of a top dressing uh, and overseeding to help keep the seed in place and the birds from eating it. Okay, so I have never um, used peat moss uh, myself, Alex B. I have seen, I have heard about that as far as the benefits of it um, being used to, um, you know, to keep, uh, to, to, to mainly for keeping birds away and also for helping the, the seed that you just put down retain moisture. That's a, a lot of the big reasons why I've heard people um, tend to like that, like to use peat moss. I've just never used it. Um, what I tend to do is I'll seed and I'll just lightly rake the seed um, into the top dressing mix and that I've gotten a pretty good result with that. But I mean, there's, no, there's nothing wrong with doing it. I don't have anything against peat moss. It's just another step that I just haven't, haven't ever done. I, I might even get better results had I done it but it's not something that I, um, I've done myself. But I mean, yeah, I mean, there's, there's tons of people that as, if you look at like the standard way you seed a lawn, most people will say, um, you know, get down a nice light, light layer of topsoil, seed, and then either put down like straw or peat moss as a means to keep moisture and to keep the birds away. I kind of think the whole birds eating all the seed is a little bit overblown, but I mean, there's other benefits of peat moss um, other than that. All right, great question. All right, um, and then and then um, Windcharch in the house says, "Hey y'all, um, your man chatting it up already. Let's give a big round of applause for the master of ceremony, the MC Ron Henry. Cheers, give it up, y'all. I appreciate it, Wind Chariot. And I know we're a little bit early in the live stream, guys. But if you guys wouldn't mind touching the like button ever so gently, you know, normally I wait till like eight o'clock in the first hour or so to take a sip of my lemonade, but it's been a little stressful, guys. Like my internet was cut off literally an hour before the live stream." Having to use some backup, you know, um, you know, rig together kind of stuff. So I'm gonna have a sip of my lemonade while you guys touch the like button ever so gently, if you don't mind. I'd really appreciate it. Love lemonades, great stuff. All right. So the next point we have, next question we have here, or comment is from Troy Ridley. He says, "Hi, Ron." And live stream crew, Troy from Central Texas. What's going on, Troy? I see you in the comments sometimes. It's always fun to uh, to hear from you and see you hanging out. And then Tomax. Uh, Zamot uh, says, I got some of your all natural insect killer. Can't wait to try it out down here. All these ants and mosquitoes. Great segue. Uh, Tomax is one of the things I want to talk about tonight. So what Tomax is talking about, you guys know in the live stream here, past couple of weeks, I've been getting questions about, hey, what can I do to kill white flies? What can I do for ants? What can I do for mosquitoes? You know, what can I do for all these different, a lot of the, the pests that just make it a pain for us to be outside, right? So the issue is a, a lot of those products that you that are really effective, um, you really want to apply them through a mister or a fogger of some sort. And um, you really need to, if you, if you, because of the toxicity of some of them, you really need to wear the proper PPE. You need to be all like gloved up, long sleeve shirts, all this kind of stuff. Um, so that's why I've, I've kind of kind of shied away from recommending anything like that. Because I don't want anyone to do something and then you know, you know, have a bad outcome health-wise from it. So I reached out to the nice folks at Miramichi Green. I said, you know, it'd be really cool if there's some kind of problem, some kind of product that was like, you know, relatively safe to use and super effective. And they're like, yeah, we make that. I'm like, you didn't. They're like, you didn't know. I'm like, no, I didn't know. So they sent me a couple of bottles of uh, this stuff to try out, and um, it's now available in the golf lawn, course lawn stores. So for those of you guys that want pest control that um, takes care of, lifts everything that's on here. You've got mosquitoes, white flies, ants, fleas, no seums or gnats. I think we call them no seums down here, but also called also called gnats, uh, chinch bugs, roaches, ticks, aphids, 
as well as spiders, uh, Japanese beetles at the higher rates of application, it can do all that. Um, this is the product that can do that. So it's the pest control from Miramichi Green. Um, super, super, super excited to be able to offer this to you guys. I'm working on a piece of content to talk all about it. But for those of you guys, because you're on, since you're on the live stream, you guys get like first dibs, you guys get to hear about it um, and see it before um, anybody else. This stuff is super easy to um, to apply as far as what's in it. It's, it's all natural. You technically can't call it um, organic, because I think one of the carriers that's used for it to stick to like the um, to, to, to like outdoor um, furniture and things like that, it has some soaps in it. So you can't technically call it organic if it has soaps in it, but everything in here is um, is organic. You've got several types of oils, um, cedar woods, castor oil, lemongrass oil, lots of different types of oils, and it's very effective against um, several types or lots a, a broad spectrum of lawn pests. The nice thing about this product, as well too is that um, the, 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 the pest that it targets can't form resistance to it. Like, you know, so you have like something like um, bifenthrin, right? Which is a really, really good um, insecticide or, or pesticide, that, but um, certain mosquitoes, are, after a while, mosquitoes can form a tolerance to it to where it doesn't kill them anymore. It's not effective against them anymore. This stuff, not the case. And as far as what you can, you can apply it to um, anything outdoors, your lawn furniture, the, you know, I, I did it the other day. I did Alex's lawn, my lawn, sprayed on shrubs. I mean, pretty much anything outside, you can you can, you can can spray this. Can um, What Remirchi Green recommends is that in addition to like, doing your entire house, you can actually put this on your lawn as well too. So if you're out in the lawn, you, got, you, you don't want to have to deal with ants or again, mosquitoes, things like that. You can apply this. And a great thing about this, guys, is if you apply it using a fogger, which again, I'm gonna cover all that in the video, um, is that literally eight ounces of this will cover 7,500 square feet. So a little bit goes a long way, right? So you got you figure this is a gallon, 128 fluid ounces, so this is gonna take care of most lawns. Uh, this is like a year, so I mean, for most people, it's gonna be, this is plenty for most lawns. Um, it also comes in a two and a half gallon container for those of you guys that have really, really big properties. Um, but yeah, it's, um, I, I've been putting it through its paces. I've been trying it at higher application rates, lower application rates, um, just to see it, how it, if it clogs up or does anything weird, none of that. So far, like kind of like all their other products, like the carbon, the carbon kit products, it, uh, it works absolutely great. And again, it actually smells nice too. As far as, um, some organic products, they don't smell the best. Uh, this has like a smell or a hint of like, um, like lemon lime, almost like if you took like, you know what Pledge smells like? It's almost like that, but not quite as strong. So that's the best way to, to, to describe it. So super excited about this. This is available now and shipping at the golf course lawn store. Um, and it's, uh, I'm really excited for you guys getting this in your hands and trying it out and letting me know how it works. And again, as far as how you mix it up, super easy. It's gonna be one of the easiest products ever to apply. You're gonna get a measuring container. You're gonna put eight ounces. The application rate is between four to eight ounces. So if you wanna go heavy, like the first time, Eight ounces. You can mix that with one gallon of water, and you're gonna, and that will cover up to 7,500 square feet. Um, and as far as like um, you know, tools to apply it, I found a mister here. One, the one that I've tried out. I'm trying out one from one from Petra Tools, um, and it's been working pretty well. So I'll actually put both of those for those of you guys that are interested in the chat right now. You know, I'm trying to make these two salesy, but it's really, really cool product. Really excited that. Um, we're able to carry it. So there, they're both in the chat, both the fogger and the pest control, they are in uh, in, the, in the chat right now. And as far as um, uh, as where they, you can find them on the, on the golf course lawn store, if you go to the main page, front and center, I mean, it's, it's gotta be second to the carbon kit. Let's just keep it real, right? The carbon kit's still gotta be number one. It's gotta be number one. But right after that, you have the pest control and you can see um, pricing on it and it's available in two different sizes. And again, like I said, it's in, in stock shipping, uh, shipping today. So for those of you guys that want something that's or, that, that is, um, I can't say organic, but all natural, non-toxic, literally you can spray this stuff and literally after you're done spraying it, kids, dogs can go right back into the lawn. Um, it's the bee's knees. So hopefully you guys um, take advantage of that. Really excited to be able to offer it to you guys. And uh, thanks so much to Miramichi Green for again, trusting us uh, with their products and their brand and, uh, and allowing us to put it out there. Great stuff. Let me know how it works out, Tomax. Thanks for the, uh, for the uh, you kind of teed up for me. So I appreciate that. All right, so HR, Helmet Ruckus is in the house. He says, hello, Ron, just checking in. Uh, my lawn looks like it's a recovering, so I hope the fungicides are doing the trick. Happy weekend um, to the room. Yeah, man, I mean, fun here's the thing with fungicide, right? It's not like, um, it's not like a lot of, like some of the stronger post-emergent herbicides where you spray it and then within a couple of the days, you're gonna see a result. What I found when I was dealing with um, large patch in my lawn, I put down uh, Headway G and literally about a week and a half, two weeks later is when 
like literally I started to see a difference. Like the ring that was like orange that 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 was um when you could see where the fungus was taking root, like that stopped, like it was no longer orange. It just looked like like dead or stressed grass. And then that allowed the, the lawn to heal and fresh and new grass to grow through and it was all good. So I always like to say that, you know, if with a good application, you water it and everything and everything like that, you should start seeing results within two weeks. Um, and then as far as how long it takes for your lawn to heal, all depends on how, how bad the damage was, the extent of the damage. But literally within a couple of weeks, you should start seeing results. So that's uh, that's really... Glad to hear that, that the fungicides are doing doing their thing. All right, Taylor Ursu, I think you're new tonight, Taylor. So if you are new and you're, looks like you're from Canada, um, uh, welcome. He says, I live up in Canada and getting herbicides is a pain. So a friend gave me some PAR-3 um, mixed with lye. Not sure what the lie is about, but is it safe for the lawn? I don't know. I've never heard of that. Um, I've never heard of PAR-3 and I lie. I only know about lies as far as it being used in soap making. I've never heard of it as a herbicide, so I don't know. I have to. I'll have to do some research on that one. I, I, I'm going to say let's uh, like do some Google searching if you want. But let me I'll make a note here: lie and par three herbicide. I'm, I'll do some digging into that after the live stream. Never heard of that one before. So from me, I'm going to say hold off. Don't do it unless you do some research and it tells you that yeah, you're good to go um, on that. Um, and especially with lye too, depending on the concentrations, you got to be really careful because lye can, um, it's, uh, if it gets on your eyes, it can burn your eyes, it gets on your skin, give you really nasty burns too. So um, if someone gave that to you, hopefully they gave you like a recipe with a, like that's highly diluted that tells you like how to, how to mix it up. Because again, lye is no joke if you, um, if you get that stuff on your, on your skin. So I'm not sure on that one. All right. And uh, I appreciate you, sir. You said love the new content. Thanks so much for, uh, for watching. I really appreciate the support. We got Brian Donahue in the house. What's going on, Brian? And um, I am looking for our, our next question here. So we got a point here from um, Ruben. Ruben giving me a thing of support saying, you got this. I hope so, Ruben. We'll see. Hopefully it all holds out, right? And then uh, Connor Souls says, going the to top dress with Mason Sand on Monday. Very cool. I like it. So should I take the lawn down to 0.4 before I throw the sand down? Should I go lower than 0.4 inches? Usually I keep it at 0.75. You can go lower if you want, um, Connor. Um, here's the thing, even 0.75 is fine for top dressing. Like you don't necessarily have to scalp the lawn or go crazy low. Like when I did my, my top dressing this past, uh, was it May? Late April, early May, I didn't do any scalping. Like uh, like the lawn was already at right at half an inch and I just maintained that height. I just aerated it and top dressed it. So um, if you wanna go a little bit lower, if you wanna take a, little, a taste off a little bit, um, sure. But just remember when you scalp, you're adding like another step and that's actually quite a bit of work, right? Cause you gotta, you can't just scalp the lawn and leave all that, those clippings on the lawn. You're gonna wanna scalp it and take the, take the material away. If it were me, I would probably just, I would likely just top dress it at 0.75 to be honest, because um, you know, that's a good height. It's not, you're not gonna have a ton of trouble working the top dressing mix in at that height. Um, and you're gonna, it's gonna be a lot, as far as you being able to put down a little bit heavier, um, uh, a little bit heavier on the top dressing and not completely um, bury all the grass, 0.75 is gonna be better than 0.4. So if your lawn is already fairly level, like if your lawn were already smooth and you told me you wanna go ahead and go down to 0.4, sure, go for it, right? Cause you're, you're really just, just doing some touch up work. You're just leveling up small, small scalp areas, things like that. But if, if it's your first time around, 0.75 is a good height. I really wouldn't go lower than that because at 0.4, if you're doing any kind of heavy leveling, you're gonna end up burying all the grass, which I really don't recommend because it's gonna, you know, take, just, if it's Bermuda, it's gonna, re it's gonna recover fine but it's just gonna um, take a lot longer for for the turf to recover. And um, another negative to going super heavy is that if you get a heavy rain, the grass isn't there to hold on to the top dressing mix, right? So you've got the grass like here, you've got like a, a barrier on top of it, you get a heavy rain, it'll get washed all over the place. Versus if you this is your grass and the top dressing mix is kind of intertwined in that leveling, in that um that in that turf of the grass, you've got something like uh, like I don't know, like like hands, fingers to hold the top dressing mix in place, even if you get a heavy shower. So that's another reason why I the more I think about it, if it's your first time around, I would just leave it at 0.75. I wouldn't, I would introduce um, a lot more work than that. All right, um, Emilio's saying, oh boy, what are we doing with our tech, huh? He says, uh, looks clear and good. Uh, thanks, sir. Well, hopefully it holds out and uh, hopefully my my uh, hotspot holds out. We'll see. Um, but yeah, thank you for uh, for watching. Uh, what's up, Patrick in Texas? Uh, sup? See, that's, that's, that's a very, that's a very uh, Texas handle. You know, Patrick in Texas, you know, it's like, it's just, you know, you should know I'm in Texas and the name's Patrick. That's all you really need to know. Uh, I, I appreciate you hanging out, sir, in the live stream. It's uh, It's always fun. 
And then, uh, yeah, thank you for that, um, um, Alex B says, we'll stick with you despite the internet woes. I had a similar issue at work when the ISP was working on wires in the street. Yeah, man, they always pick the worst. I mean, there's never a good time for your internet to go out, right? But it's it's never good, literally an hour before the live stream. Like literally I was here, I was sitting here checking, you know, like getting my thoughts together, putting them some notes together and all this kind of stuff. And I hear like the like the ditch witch in the front lawn or like not the, my front lawn, but like the front lawn like right next to me. And then I, I literally, I'm on Google searching something and literally it goes, Google's not working. I'm like, I, I, I'm not gonna tell you guys what I said, but I, let's just say it's things I don't see on the live stream. How about that? I was kind of irritated about it. Um, and then I went outside and I was like, no, we didn't do anything. I'm like, yeah, you totally did. And then the next door neighbor, same thing. His internet went out too. So I, it looks like it'll be, um, you know, maybe this weekend, more than likely Monday before it's fixed. So we shall see. All right, Chris Balducci, best name ever is in the live stream. Thanks for having, coming to hang out, Chris. I appreciate you. And Grace is also in the live stream. Thank you so much, Grace. I always like having you uh, around. You're, you're definitely a great supporter of all the live streams. The other ones that I pop into occasionally, I always see you there. So it's really cool that you uh, take the time out of your day to support um, all the other creators. Really, really appreciate it. All right, Rob, Sch Rob Schott has a question and a comment. He says, hey, Ron, hope you're doing well. Hanging in there, sir, hanging in. A little stressed, but I'm, I'm, I'm getting catching my stride. This is, uh, I finally got my saw at Empire Zoysia down today. What's your advice on water uh, scheduling? Also, should I put down a little uh, lawn soil or sand for some of the gaps and humps? Um, yeah, so as far as watering, when you get the new saw down, um, I would water it a little bit uh, heavier than you are, than you would, than you normally would, right? So I'd say for the first two weeks, uh, dep it depends on how much heat you're getting. Couple, for the first couple of weeks, water it a few times a day. Morning and evening is normally good enough. Um, don't, now here's the thing. When I tell you water it and keep it, keep it, um, don't keep it hydrated. Don't turn it into a swamp. You just don't want to let, you know, the sod dry out too much. You want to give it every opportunity to root in, especially with it being zoysia. It's a little bit slower growing grass. You want to baby it a little bit. Um, you know, if you are, I'm not sure where, in, where you are, but if you're in Georgia, we've been getting some high temps here lately and it's going to stay hot from what I'm seeing here in the, uh, in the forecast. So just keep, um, you know, keep some water on it. As far as putting down a little bit of soil or sand for the gaps and humps, you can do that too. Key thing here, Rob, is you got to go light. Like zoysia is not aggressive like Bermuda is. It doesn't grow nearly as fast. So if you are going to put down a little bit of topsoil, a little bit of sand just to fill in bumps, you'll, like, again, a very light top dressing. Um, you can do that, but you got to go light. You can't, like, like literally when, I, when you look at your lawn, um, it should almost look like you didn't hardly do anything. And at no point can you bury any any of the grass at all. So if you can do it, go light, you can. Um, you know, we're kind of running, we're getting closer to the tail end of the season for top dressing. So if you want to do that, go ahead and go for it. And um, you know, there's this people that literally put down sod and then like the, a couple days later, they top dress. So that can work, just go light, just go light. All right, Thomas Tucker is in the house. He says, what's up, Ron? What's going on, Thomas? He says, will Essential G be going on sale anytime soon? I used it along with humus and sand during my last top dressing, and I'd like to repeat that process. That's a good question. I'll have to reach out. Um, I'll have to reach out to the fine folk at MG at Miramichi and see what we can work out. Maybe, maybe we can. Maybe we can. I mean, I know you know Labor Day is coming up soon. Labor Day weekend is coming up soon. Um, so maybe we can see if something can happen before then. But let me let me talk to them and see what we can work out. Because I know it's an awesome product, and you know it, while it is great at the price that it's at you know, cheaper is always better, right? So yeah, I will, uh, I'll take that one um, as a note to take, to follow up with. And I will, um, I'll let you know. I'll let you guys know. Definitely, if as if it does go on sale, if and when it does go on sale, um, you'll be able to see that in the, um, uh, on my community tab on YouTube and also make an Instagram post about it. So um, yeah, you guys will have plenty of, plenty of ways to know about it. And also if you are, um, you bought anything from the golf course lawn store, I'll probably also send out a, a mail to, to everyone that's on the list to let them know that it's available on sale as well too. Very cool. All right, so Rob Schutz also saying, hey, my California trimmer will be here on the 12th. Can't wait, congratulations, sir. You don't have it yet, but you know what? We are going to clap it up anyway. Congrats on the new mower. Let us know how it goes. Um, I'm sure you're gonna, you know, gonna enjoy uh, laying some stripes with the uh, with a California trimmer. Very, very, very cool. All right, Emilio has a follow-up question about fertilizer and aeration and the sequencing behind things. He says you mentioned putting down fertilizer after aeration, but before and before top dressing. But what about leveling and seeding from zero? Same process or fertilizer on top of the seed? I would still. 
I wouldn't put down fertilizer on top of the seed, because think, you think about it, I'm Emilio, like fertilizer needs to get into the soil. If you think about the whole process of it, right? You put down fertilizer, you water it in, um, you water it in, it gets into the soil. That's what, what's our goal for getting watering it in. Um, and then microbes break it down and make the nutrients available to the grass, in our case, the new, the new sprouting grass seed for uptake. So the so one of the things that you have to do when you put fertilizer in your lawn, that's why we always say with granular, water it in, because that's how you, you begin, you start that process of getting it down into the soil where it can begin um, being put to work. Um, the reason why I say aerate, fertilize, and then top dress is when you top dress, you're only putting down this much. You're not, you're not going crazy heavy, right? You're putting down like a quarter inch, half inch, not that much. Um, and by putting down your fertilizer prior to top dressing, you're fast tracking the process. You're literally eliminating one of the steps as far as getting it down in the soil so microbes can begin breaking it down and making the nutrients available to the grass. So yes, I would still do it the same way. Um, absolutely would. If you, if you weren't top dressing, then yeah, then you put the seed down, um, you know, break it in and put your fertilizer down, water it in and good to go. But if you're, if you're gonna be adding the step of doing some, putting down some soil, uh, I would absolutely put the fertilizer down prior to uh, laying down the seed, and that, that hopefully that that um, that it helps explain why um, why because you're just basically you're like skipping one step or you're fast tracking one step of the process by getting it into the soil because essentially you're putting it down, you're putting soil on top of it, so it's in the soil, right? So uh, so that's that's why that's my reasoning why I recommend doing it that way. All right, Robert Rainey's in the house, Mr. Man with the high with the high finish. He says, uh, hey, Ron, I'm here. I'm in late, but I'm here. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. And uh, Alan C. says, proud moment. Okay, here we go. This is going to be good. He says, proud moment. Three neighbors asked me this week what I was doing to make my yard so great. I easily advise Ron Henry YouTube. I appreciate that, man. It's always cool whenever you, uh, you know, other people, especially people that aren't super lawn care nerds, are taking note of the lawn and... Um, and, uh, and, you know, and they recognize it. It's funny. I was out, I was out, um, doing, I was doing the spot top dressing in the video that I did earlier this week, um, around like spot dressing, how to fill all ruts and bumpy areas. Um, after I got done filming that, I was like just going over everything. And this lady in the neighborhood was walking by with her dogs and she says, your lawn looks great as always. And I'm like, yeah, it looks pretty good. There's a few areas here, a few problem spots here and there. I still got to work on. And she says, like, what's, what problem spots? I says, well, if you look right here, this area is not really bumpy. It's got some ridges. It's not as, as good as it could be. You know, I get a little bit of scalping here. And she kind of looked at me with this blank stare, like, it looks really good to me. So, get your, so the thing you have to keep in mind, I, I say that kind of jokingly, but we are by far our own worst critics. I mean, short of like me coming to your lawn and looking at it, like another lawn care geek coming and looking at it, to most people, what you do with your lawn, even at a very basic level, looks incredible compared to like most lawns in your neighborhood. So I'm glad to hear that you're getting good results, man, and that people are recognizing all your hard work. Super awesome. Super, super awesome. All right, so we got a couple of super chats I got to get to here. First one is from Kevin D. Jones. Thank you so much, Kevin. Super chat received. I appreciate you. Thanks for the support, the love and support. And then we got another super chat here from Travis Winston. I think Travis is also at the Golf Course Lawn Academy, Golf Golf Course Lawn Squad. Super chat received. He said, what's up, Ron and Golf Course Lawn Squad? Hey, Ron, thanks for all the great content. I plan to scalp and top dress in two weeks. I live in the transitional zone, uh, Virginia. Do you think it's too late in the season? Um, No, not really, Travis. What kind of grass do you have? If you don't mind me, um, just, just remind me what kind of grass you have. Because if it's, if it's cool season grass, you might be a touch early two weeks from now. But if you have warm season grass, like the Almighty Bermuda or the um, often loved but not as good as Bermuda Zoysia, uh, you definitely want to do it now. So, you know, you're getting you're getting closer to where, um, you know, we're getting to the point where if you were to top dress too late in the season, it's going to it's just going to take a lot longer for it to recover. So that's why that's why I say. You know, really up to the first week, second week of August is what you could you can get away with in a pinch for a light top dressing, especially given the heat we have. But earlier in the season is better. It's just going to give the lawn more chances uh, to recover. Um, so let me know in the chat which what kind of grass you have, and then I'll be able to advise a little bit, a little bit better. Um, you say yeah, Bermuda Arden 15, yeah, man. Now, like, yeah, let's get it down. Let's get it done now. Yeah, or two or two weeks from now, we'll be just fine. Go ahead and go for it. Yep, absolutely. All right, we got another super chat here from. Um, Us Usamu Asamu Abdu, thank you, sir. Super chat. He says, received. excellent channel. By the way, what do you do for a nine to five job? And do you do uh, any lawn and landscape on the side for customers? I'm a full-time landscaper. Great question. So um, what I do for my day job is I, um, I work in the information security field. So I lead a team um, uh, that that our, our current job is to prevent um, 
uh, major municipalities from being uh, broken into. So we, I, I lead the team that that protects, um, you know, again, I'm not going into a ton of detail, protects a, ma a major municipality um, within the United States. Um, and so my background is in information security, uh, and that's what I do for day. So my day job. So I'm pretty much like a I'm a computer geek is is my uh, is what I do for a living. Um, I don't do landscaping um, on, on the side professionally, mainly because it's just time. I mean, I, I keep getting um, a request from people to say, "Hey, can you come over and come, you know, help advise me on my lawn or come help me help me work on my lawn?" And the big thing is just time, man. Like I already, I literally have like YouTube. Believe it or not, is like another job. Like it's a, it's a it's a ton of work to produce content. Um, and then I have my my regular job, which takes even more of my time. Uh, so you know, at this juncture, I just don't um, I don't I would don't have the time to be able to do it at a, at, a, at the level that I would want to to ensure that the people that I I, I took on as customers would have like an excellent result. Because for me, it's, they're gonna have to get like, an awesome result, or I don't really want to do it, right? Um, so um, so no, hopefully that helps answer your question. Something I've covered before, but uh, but yeah, I appreciate the super chat and for you. Uh, for you chiming in. All right, so we got LG in the house. What's going on, LG? The man, the myth, the legend. Thanks for coming to hang out with us for a little bit this evening, sir, as always. And then Clayton is already putting in his dibs for the leveling tool. So for any of you guys that are um, just recently joined the live stream, first of all, thanks. But tonight we're doing a giveaway. Um, we're doing four things, four things. I didn't like, we're doing four things. You can see I'm stressed, right? Because of my internet. <laughs> four things tonight. The first is a Stripe Action sticker, which you can get these on the Ron Henry merch store. The second is your choice of one of the two, one of the two, either the uh, live stream sticker, which Josh B has given to, has donated thank gracefully, or you have the Luscious Chrome, the psychedelic version. You can have one of those two, your choice. And then we have the Hand weeding tool, I love these guys. Literally, I keep one on my mower. These are great for eliminating weeds in your lawn. This is gonna be the second place, or I can't say second place, but the second, the non-grand prize um, that we're giving away tonight. And then the grand prize, guys. The grand prize, one of two. One of two, Desert Tan, Ron Henry with the leather patch hats. This is really sweet. Again, thank you so much, Josh Abib, for all your love and support and donating this to the channel. So this is gonna be one of the uh, giveaway items tonight. So that's what's gonna happen tonight. So, uh, if, and the way you have to enter to, get to win that, super easy. You have to go to last week's live stream and just enter a comment in the comment section uh, what kind of fertilizer you're using. I haven't pulled um, the contestants as yet, so there's still time, but we're gonna be doing a little bit earlier in the live sh stream tonight due to like my technical stuff going on. I wanna make sure I get that done. So um, if you are interested in having a chance to win, go to the next, last week's um, live stream. It's gonna have a weeding tool and a weed on it. It's gonna call it Summer Weeds as a thumbnail and just enter whatever uh, fertilizer you're using and uh, you'll be entered. That's all it takes. That is literally all it takes. Super easy, man. Can't can't make it any easier than that. All right, so Adam Reed said, I just finished top dressing. I'm feeling the pain. You're not feeling the pain yet. Wait till tomorrow or two days from now. It's like leg day. Leg day is like, it doesn't, it's not bad the day you do legs, you do like squats or deadlifts. It's like two days after. That's when you're gonna really feel the pain from top dressing. You so say you still have some leveling and brushing up to do, but I got it all on the lawn. Good, good times. I hear you, man. But it's a congratulations, sir. You know, we got to clap that up. Um, um, Adam, I know it's a huge job to do top dressing, so we gotta gotta recognize that. All right, Patrick in Texas says that he's been top dressing with equal parts of holy cow, uh, which is compost and manure, and filtered peat and sand. That can work. You know, people can do that and they get a good result with it. So, uh, so yeah, absolutely. I can I could see how you could get a good result with that. Um, uh, Patrick in Texas. And then we have a question about um, a real mower, real mower dealer in the Atlanta area. He says, hey Ron, I keep forgetting the real mower dealer in Southwest Atlanta near Charlie Brown Airport. I'm not sure if they're near Charlie Brown Airport. Are you referring to um, Jerry Pate? Um, I know they are in Southwest uh, Atlanta off of, um, off of 20, right off of I-20. Um, and yeah, they are the tour dealers. If, you got, if you're looking for like a pre-owned Greens Master, um, they can take care of you. If you got a Greens Master that you need parts for a service, I highly recommend that you take it to them. Joey and the guys there do a great job. Um, they've always done right by me and, and my other viewers. So um, so yeah, give them some love if you are looking, especially if you're dealing with a Toro. They can do other mowers too, but Toro is their specialty. So if you're looking for a Toro, uh, by all means, uh, go for it. All right, and then uh, do, let's see what other questions we got. We got a follow-up here from Dwayne um, Hopkins. He says, hey, Ron, loving the live stream. Thank you so much, sir. He says, I know a lot of people on the stream have been complaining about Spurge. I don't want to use a herbicide because of heat, so should I be bagging the clippings? Uh, yeah, I mean, when you mow the Spurge areas, um, you can, so you're not spreading it around. But I mean, really at this, with the temps where they are now, really the only herbicide that I'd say for warm season that you could use safely if you're doing it like especially a broad 
a broad area is like Celsius. Like that's that's one that um, doesn't have a lot of the temperature restrictions that like Spectricide does. Um, so that's something you can use as an option. But you, say, you just said you don't want to use herbicide. So I'm just saying if you decide you want to use a herbicide, that's a good one. Um, next thing is, so yeah, bag your clippings. You can hand weed, but Spurge is, Spurge is, is a monster to weed because it, it, they, they break really easily. This little branches and runners break off really easily. So you can weed it, but it's challenging. It's, it's one of the more challenging weeds to get out and get out successfully. But yeah, um, you know, with, with given the constraints you gave me, you're not doing herbicides and, uh, you don't want to hurt, you don't want any toxins on the lawn, then, uh, then yeah, bag your clippings. Bag your clippings. All right, and the question from Patrick is, how often can I do this? Meaning, the question he had is, um, if you guys remember, Patrick was saying he was top dressing with sand and black cow mix. Um, how often can he top dress? Um, so really, in a season, I think you can get away with it about, about three times. Um, really, once the sand, once you've top dressed the area and the grass grows through and there's still some trouble spots, Go for it again. You absolutely can do it all over again. The big thing is uh, why I say three times is because I actually want you to actually to enjoy your lawn for a little while too, right? Like you can you can just be top dressing the entire time and fixing small areas here and there, but at some point you're going to want to enjoy your lawn, right? You don't want it to be co- you don't want it to always be covered in sand. So uh, so yes, uh, once the grass grows to your existing top dressing job that you did, if you see some small problem areas, feel free to follow it up. I've done that with no issue. Alex has done it. Um, no problems whatsoever at all there. All right, so Alex B is saying that he's also saving up and trying to make room for a motorized spreader. Manually top, top dressing 11,000 square feet with mostly topsoil by myself is rough. Um, which motorized spreader do you have? I don't actually own a motorized spreader, Alex B. The one that I, I've rented is from Earth. Um, it's, I, I rented it from, from Keystone Rental in Duluth, Georgia, and it's called Earth. I think it's called Earth and Turf is what, is what, it's, is what the brand is. And um, I, I mistakenly said on a live stream that you can buy them for $3,000. What, what I meant is you can buy them pre-owned for around $3,000. You can get a used one around three grand. Brand new, they go for closer to seven to $8,000. So um, that one works great. Um, I, I love the results um, we get with it. It saves a lot of time, like you said, um, but I don't actually own one myself. I just rent, I rent one because it's one big reason is um, they're like seven, they're like they're like eight grand brand new. And if I, have, if I have eight grand to spend on a piece of equipment, I'll probably just buy like you know one of the newer Greens Masters because those new twenty twenty one models are sweet. They're nice. Um, and then second, a place to put it. I don't have anywhere to, to put something that big. So that's another reason why um, I just I don't I don't have one of those. Plus, I, I always have sand in my driveway if I own one of those machines. Can you imagine? I'd be top dressing all the time. All right, so Robert Rainey says, um, thoughts on on short watering during the day, during this heat for cooling the lawn? Definitely a strategy, definitely something you can do, Robert. So with, with the heat being as 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 hot as it is here in Georgia, um, you know, you can do the heavy watering once or twice a week, or if you want to, you can split your watering into lighter sessions. Um, the big thing with he- watering heavier is that it's a great way to, to saturate the lawn to get water a little bit deeper, to do that deeper watering. And it also helps prevent fungus issues because most people that, that water frequently tend to do it too much. If you're gonna back down your the length of time that you're watering the lawn and you wanna do it more frequently, so you, know, you wanna do it every other day, um, that can work, that absolutely can work. But I would not run the same length of the cycle that you use for your weekly watering every other day. That would be too much. You know, you coupled to all that water and then all the heat and you're just asking for potential fungus problems. So if you're going to do it, back down the watering cycle um, a little bit. Um, but yeah, that absolutely can work. It's a gr- it's actually a good way to um, to keep the grass greener and from seeing stress. Bermuda is actually pretty good about it in the sense that even Bermuda, as soon as it gets rain, it just pops back really quickly. It greens back up really nicely. Uh, if you, especially if you have a zoysia lawn, I would, I would consider the strategy you're talking about because zoysia is a little, is a little bit more sensitive um, than Bermuda when it comes to heat and as far as recovering um, from heat stress once it is um, once it begins to yellow up a little bit from from heat stress. All right, so Fred Rosales is in the house. He says, hey, Ron, I recently attempted to level my lawn with mason sand, but the supplier did me dirty and it had tons of small rocks. I'm afraid to ruin my real mower. What, um, what, if anything, can I do? Okay, so I hear you. That happens. Um, you know, yeah, as far as getting small pebbles and rocks in it, if you have a leveling rake, Fred, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go through and rake the lawn, like literally go through, um, and I do this regardless, uh, you know, before you start mowing the lawn again, get out there with a the leveling rake. I'm also looking for a video that I'm going to show you, I'm going to send to you that's going to tell you exactly and demonstrate what I'm talking about. But get out there and rake the lawn, like run the, dra- drag the leveling rake over the lawn. That does a couple of things. First is going to help um, work the leveling mix in a little bit better. It's going to help it, like it's going to expose those grass blades a little bit sooner than they otherwise normally would be. 
And then second, um, it's going to pick up small little rocks and pebbles. It's really, really good for that. So there's two reasons why you really should be dragging your lawn with a leveling rake um, once you're done top dressing as part of the uh, the recovery process. So the video I'm talking about is that one. It literally, it's, it's like me saying, what now? I, I offer like three tips around what to do with your lawn. And I talk about watering. I talk about, um, what's the other one? I, the last one is mowing. I'm trying to think what the second one is. I think the second one is actually that. It's, it's watering, it's raking the lawn with, uh, with a leveling rake to get rid of pebbles and little trash in the lawn. And the third is around like um, making a slight adjustment to your height of cut uh, before you start mowing your lawn after top dressing. Super short video, um, super helpful information. So check that out if you've not as yet. I just put it in the chat. So uh, not now, but after the live stream, you can check it out. And I think that will answer your question. So uh, yeah, it's 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 not uncommon what you're dealing with. I mean, I would not say, I mean, if they put like big rocks in, I'd be mad at them, but small rocks, that's kind of par for the course unless you go with something really, like a really high end top dressing mix. Unless you get like, like USGA sand, um, which is gonna be more expensive, or you get like that leveling mix that I use from soil, um, some super sod, like that stuff didn't have any trash in it, but it's also a lot more expensive than just like, you know, standard masonry sand. So you have to kind of weigh, you have to balance like cost versus not having to deal with like some after work, like what you're doing. So hopefully uh, that helps. All right, so we have a question from Mike Quiss about getting zoysia darker. He says, hey Ron, any thoughts on getting zoysia a darker green to match the rye tif uh, turf type tall fescue? I don't, it's still even, guys, it's been a year and saying turf type tall fescue is still a tongue twister for me. Don't know why, don't know if it'll ever be able to get around that. Help me. Uh, getting zoysia to match those in my lawn. It says macros and ironite once a month, micros every two weeks currently. I mean, you're, it sounds like you're doing a lot of the right things, Mike. The big thing you have to keep in mind too, right? Zoysia, at least the zo most zoysias that I've seen, it doesn't, I mean, it tends to get more of um, like an emerald color, right? It's like a, it's like a, like a lime, like a lime green color. It's not like a super dark, punchy green, like um, how Arden 15 can get, um, how Celebration Bermuda can get. It tends to be a little bit lighter. I mean, it's a it's a deep green, but the hue is different. It's almost like, um, oh, it's almost like the text on the screen. Like, I mean, it's not quite that bright, right? But it's not like, whereas, um, whereas like Bermuda can get as dark as like, I don't know, let's get this hat out here. Whereas Bermuda can get like this kind of hue, like this, or even maybe a little bit darker, you're gonna be challenged to get zoysia that dark, right? It's gonna be more like the, the text of the color of the screen, but just very rich, rich colors. So, uh, and then turf type tall fescue um, and rye also get pretty dark in color as well. So what you're dealing with is just um, the differences in grass types, right? Because I mean, when you whenever you spray the mic the macros. And, uh, and the ironite on the lawn, you're not only spraying on the zoysia, you're also spraying it on the rye and the turf type tall fescue. So they're also getting darker too. But I think just naturally between the two grasses, like there are just color differences between zoysia and those grass types. So matching them is gonna be a bit of a challenge, unfortunately. So sorry, I don't have a better answer for you, but um, it's it, that's a tough one. Um, yeah, it's a tough one, because just innately the two grasses just look different. Color-wise, they just look different. Um, but yeah, yeah, I don't have I don't have a better one for you on that because there's not really a way to isolate just the zoysia away from the other grass types, unfortunately. All right, so Robert Rainey has a question about uh, his good good advice, actually great advice, saying stay hydrated in this heat while top dressing. That's true, man, because top dressing is rough work. I mean, you're out there, um, you know, it, it, it's always fun when you start. It's almost like when you go on a road trip, you know? It's always fun when you first get in the car and you're like, hey, we're on the road trip, it's awesome. And then it's like, you know, two hour, two hours in, three hours in, it's like, the, are we there yet? It starts to settle in. Um, that's how top dressing is. It's kind of one of those things, uh, but once you start it, it's uh, it's like every every time when I've, I've gotten into it, like for about five, six hours in, I'm like, man, why do I do this to myself? And, and I, I remember why people pay services to do it for them because it's it's like, it, it's expensive to pay someone to do it, but it's kind of worth it because it's a, it is a ton of work to do properly. Um, but yeah, you know, once you're in there, once you're in it, you're in it. You know, it's like pregnancy. Once you're, I mean, not that I've ever been pregnant, but once you're pregnant, there's only one way out of it, right? Once you start putting that sand down, there's only one way out. You got to get it all done, right? So, uh, so yeah. All right. So, um, Will Dog Hail States in. He says, what's going on from the deep fried South? What's going on, Will? We are deep fried, man. You guys should see the ryegrass. I got to show you guys that maybe tomorrow. I'll take a, I'll do a YouTube story and show you it. Ryegrass is hating life right now. A lot of it's actually died off from all the heat we've gotten here. So it's, uh, the rye is finally not, not doing well. All right, and then Timothy says, from my earlier question, I actually have uh, two big yellow bags of soil three leveling mix. It's going down tomorrow. Yeah, man, that's awesome, awesome stuff. So yeah, you're not, you shouldn't have as much, um, if any, trash in uh, in the soil three mix. It's very, very clean stuff as far as top dressing mix goes. One thing I'll tell you is that um, 
you will see little clumps in there. That is the compost. Don't really worry about it. What I would do is take that compost, the little clumps, and make sure you spread it around the lawn as much as you can, because as soon as you get we get some rain or you water it in heavily, that's gonna begin to break down and get down in the soil. So don't don't look at the fact that you've got like this light, like I don't know, like almost like little hairballs all around the lawn, make you think that, oh no, I've gotta break those out. Do not throw those out. That is like part of what you paid for. Like literally just spread it out evenly, get it evenly distributed as much as you can. And then when water, water, whenever water hits it, it's gonna break down and get down in the soil. So awesome, man, great stuff. Glad, glad that you uh, went ahead with that. All right, so Alan has a question about temperatures and taking care of weeds. He says, lots of weed pressure. New Bermuda sod this March is also 100 degrees. What can I do? Crabgrass and nuts edge feels like every um, one week I hand pull two more grow. So with 100 degree temperatures, the only thing, I mean, I'd even want the temps to fall a little bit more, even, even for recommending Celsius, man. The only thing I would, I would attempt um, with those types of temp, with those types of temperatures is, is Celsius, you know, because it's where's a lot of um, where's a lot of a very effective herbicides that, that are that will work against crabgrass and nut sedge. Um, when you get into the temps of around 100, 100 degrees, eh, you know, they, you're getting you're getting past the um, the recommended temperature range for those. I mean, where Celsius, um, you can spray it at much higher, or at higher, I say much higher, but higher temperatures with um, with less adverse effects. So if you want to go for spraying a herbicide, I'd say Celsius. Um, let me send you uh, that Allen C. This is it here. Um, and make sure you read the label. You know, you want to make sure that you um, you apply it properly, use a good surfactant with it. Um, and as far as the effectiveness against crabgrass, the earlier you can catch the crabgrass, the better. So younger crabgrass is easier to kill than older crabgrass. Um, same thing with, it's true for most weeds, but crabgrass especially. Um, if the temperatures were lower, I'd say go get you some quinclorac. That's gonna be a little bit cheaper um, and it's very effective, but um, with the temps where they are, I don't know that I would really go that route. And Celsius should knock out both of those. Um, so, so yeah, hopefully that helps. I'm sorry you're dealing with weeds, but you know, there is an option with Celsius and hopefully the temps will drop here soon to where you're not dealing with, um, you know, the, 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 the high temps that are pushing crazy amounts of growth in the lawn. All right. So Dwayne Hopkins is in the house. He says, Hey, uh, Hey Ron, uh, two years ago, I, uh, had my lawn overseeded with perennial rye. I didn't overseed last season. I still have rye, uh, especially in areas where my Bermuda is weaker in the shade areas. Yeah, that's pretty, that's, that's, um, that's not uncommon, Dwayne. I mean, perennial rye is not going to die off, um, you know, by itself in most cases, unless you get like super high temps, it's not going to, it's not going to die off like people say. Like a lot of people say, you know, put down perennial rye in the fall and in the springtime, it'll go away and the Bermuda will grow in. Not really the case. You have to, you really have to spray it out if you want to get rid of it. Um, and, uh, yeah, and what you're talking about is a, is a perfect example of that. You, you put it down two years ago and it's still growing. So, you know, the one thing I'd say is that if it's growing in the areas where you have shade, where the Bermuda is not gonna do well, maybe leave it. You know, there's no reason to get rid of a grass that is more optimized for shade or does better in shade, um, you know, only to have like a big bare spot because Bermuda is not gonna do well in the shaded area. So I would just, uh, I would leave it, I would leave it where it is. Um, you know, I would, I don't know that I would necessarily, um, that I would, I would get rid of it. Uh, he says, if you want to kill it, he says, so here's his follow-up question. He says, when, what should I use to kill it um, and when is a good time? Um, I want to say, I mean, Celsius, Celsius will probably kill ryegrass. I want to say, so it's probably labeled for that. I can, I can check here really quick just to confirm that. But I believe Celsius will do it. There's also a, a cheaper option. Um, Jason Krill, the guy that does um, Lawn Care Life, his, his YouTube channel, he talks about a herbicide called Katana. It's a little bit. It's a little bit cheaper than um, than it's a lot cheaper, actually a lot cheaper than Celsius, um, and that is what, something he recommends as far as like spraying out uh, rye grass in the springtime. Yeah. So yeah. So exactly. Um, so Celsius will work. Um, Katana will also work. I, assuming you can buy it in the states. I, I know. You, I think there's some restrictions about where that that particular herbicide can be shipped. But Celsius will work for what you're trying to do. Um, Katana is a little cheaper option. And if you decide you want to go with Celsius, I think I've already put it in the chat already Dwayne, but if not just for you, just because it's you, only because it's you, I will do it again. And uh, there you go, if you decide to go with Celsius. I don't have a link for Katana, but if you decide to go that route, that's an option too for you. Okay, so next up we got um, Jinwon Park, a new viewer. Hey, what's going on? Thanks for being a new viewer and for watching the content. It says, hey Ron, first time watching live, love the content. Thank you so much, sir, really appreciate it. Um, 
or uh, yeah, I, I assume Jin wants a he, maybe not, but I mean, thank you for watching. It says, um, I am currently battling a mild case of Bermuda mites on my backyard. What is your preferred method um, of taking care of, of this issue? Um, that's a good question. I don't know if, um, I don't know, I, I, you know, I want to say the pesticide should, um, like the, um, the, the pest control, the Miramichi Green pest control should work for that. But let me, um, let me, let me double check that, um, Jin Wan, and I'll get an answer for you. I want to say that the pest control that I was talking about here, this one, um, will, will work for that, will work for mites. Cause again, the, the idea behind how Miramichi Green says to use it is to spray it over the entire lawn as well as your house, garage areas, all the outdoor areas, furniture, all that kind of stuff. Um, I believe it also works against that uh, for that as well too, but I'd want to confirm that um, first. So if you don't mind, I know you're a new viewer and it's like creepy, right? I'm asking you for your email address, right? But if you don't mind, send me an email here, ron at golfcourselawn.com. I will find an answer for you and then I will I'll email you back. I'll email you with an answer um, to your questions. I want to make sure you get taken care of, um, but I don't want to recommend something that, that I, that's not necessarily going to be effective. So give me, a, give me a chance to do some research on that and I will get you uh, an answer to your question. Again, my email is right here, ron at golfcourselawn.com. Um, send there and I will uh, I will take care of you. And then you have a follow-up question. You said, I've applied granular Delta Guard and sprayed the first dose, one of three apps of Bifen XTS at 0.3. I think, you know, I think pest control should do it, man. Because anything that Bifen 3 will kill, um, this will kill. Um, he says, uh, 0.32 ounces um, per thousand square feet from Austin, Texas. And you're at Tiffway 419 at a 0.65 inch height of cut. Yeah, so... Um, the fact that you said that it's that you're using bifenthrin on your lawn to spray them, I mean that that should do it. If it doesn't, if it doesn't, consider giving the pest control a shot. Well, I can tell you where you can get that. That is going to be here on the golf course lawn store. So if you go to um, golfcourselawn.store, and then right here is the Miramichi Green Pest Control. The nice thing about this product, Gen One, is that it's completely organic. You can see everything that it takes care of: mosquitoes, ants, noceums, roaches, ticks, aphids, white flies, fleas, chinch bugs. In addition, not listed here on the label, but it also will handle spiders, Japanese, and Japanese beetles. Um, so pretty much anything that bifenthrin will kill, this will also kill. And the nice thing is that this is not toxic. So you spray it, you have kids or, or fur babies, you those will have to go back in the lawn, they can go right back out outside right after you finish applying this. Um, it's because it's just non-toxic, right? You're not, you're not gonna, you're not, you're, there's no, um, there's not chance of it really harming um, any, any of, you know, yourself or, um, or any of, of your loved ones. Something to consider. So that's another option for you as well, if that doesn't work. Because if you only did it, you did one of the three apps, it doesn't sound like you've done everything as far as um, as far as what you can do to get to get rid of it. I mean, here's the thing: if you are still going to go through with your Delta Guard, um, you know, your doses, the three doses, and bifenthrin, you can still do that. You can still add. You can still do the the um, the pest control on top of that. Again, it's completely non toxic. It's 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 uh, it's an all natural um, means for killing. Um, mites and it, and its its mode of action is different to um, the more chemical based um, insecticide. So if you're looking for like a one two punch or another like another way to stack to layer on top of what you're already doing, uh, check out the uh, the pest control, which again you can get at the golf course lawn uh, dot store. So hopefully that helps out. Thank you so much for being a viewer. I really appreciate you. Always nice to have new viewers in uh, the live stream. All right, Richard Jordan. Uh, it says good afternoon, enjoying the show. Thanks so much, Richard. I really appreciate it. Thanks for coming to hang out in. Um, the live stream. That's pretty awesome. And then uh, let's see what other questions we got. We got one from Will Dog State. He says, hey, Ron, since you overseed with RN15 and you didn't use pre-emergent in the spring, any problems with spurge again this summer? Did you use a pre-emergent later for summer weeds? Great question. So yeah, I did have some spurge, man. I did have a little bit of spurge, not nearly as bad as last year. Because remember, a lot of the spurge outbreak that I dealt with last year came from the top dressing mix that I brought in. Um, yeah, I just had some spurge in it and I had, a, had an issue with that. Um, I have had some spurge here and there throughout the lawn. I've just been manually pulling it um, to get rid of it. Same thing with crabgrass. Because I didn't do any pre-emergent, I've had some crabgrass here and there in the lawn just been manually pulling it. I have my, I have one of these literally that I keep on the side of my mower. Literally, it's got like a little string here. I have it on the side of my mower and literally I'll be mowing. I'm like, rup, rup, break, time to take care of that guy. And I'll go there and I'll weed it and hang on to it to the end of the pass and get rid of it. Um, and to answer your question, no, I have not put down any herbicides on my lawn this year. So no, there's not been any pre-emergent later on in the season. I've not put any post-emergent, nothing. The only, I say the only thing that's been sprayed on my lawn 
um, spot sprayed is Alex did spray in the swale area between um, his lawn and mine. We had a little bit of um, nuts edge in there and he did spot spray some of that with the ortho herbicide. But as far as like a, a mass um, application of herbicide to my lawn, no. And as far as anything specifically to target spurge, also no. Uh, so yeah, no, I haven't been dealing with that. Just been mowing through it, man. Just keeping the lawn nice and short. Um, the spurge can deal with that. The, the crab grass just hates life when it's being mowed as short as I'm cutting the grass. So hopefully uh, that helps. Hopefully that helps. But this fall, some pre-emergent is going down. Believe, it or, believe you me, I'm going to return back to my normal schedule and get some pre-emergent down on the lawn. So Siraj is up next. He has a question about reducing the height of cut. He says, hey, Ron. Hey, everyone. When reducing height of cut, um, he's currently really mowing at 1.25 inches down to one inch. How long does it take the Bermuda to adjust to where it stays green after each mow? Mowing every three, three days, I see a lot of brown. Great question. So really, if you're mowing every three days, that sounds like twice a week. Um, that should be enough. Now, here's the thing, Siraj. This time of year, Bermuda is growing crazy fast, crazy fast, right? Um, one inch you should be able to, I mean, you should be able to make that like, you know, twice a week work with that. But I would almost say if you can, again, this is a big ass, but if you can sneak in one more mow, right? Even if it's, even if they're not evenly spaced. So let's say right now you're mowing on say Sunday and Thursday or Sunday and Wednesday, right? That's when you're mowing. If you can do like a mow like today, like Friday or even like Saturday, even you can do one like say Saturday and do another mow on Sunday, just, just sneak in another mow See if that helps with um, with the lawn staying green. Because the big thing is, um, brown, the lawn being brown after mowing is an indicator that you're 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 cut, you're probably violating that one third rule, right? You're taking off more than 0.33 inches of grass. Um, and again, given how fast the grass, um, especially Bermuda, grows this time of year, you know, adding another mow if you can will help. Another thing you can do is use PGR. Like if you're not, you didn't say you didn't mention using plant growth regulator, but if you are using plant growth regulator, that will help the lawn also may stay green between mowings because it's not going to be growing nearly as quickly. Um, and if you need help with that, I've got a video on that. Actually, it's, got, it's right here. I've got a video on that that I'll send to you on using PGR. It's actually, I mean, a lot of people are, are, are intimidated by it, but it's actually not that not that hard to do. Um, and, you, and it just does a lot as far as um, being able to... Uh, to keep, to, you know, to, 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 to reduce top growth, which right now we have tons of heat, um, is gonna reduce the amount of scalping you get in the lawn. You, you're just not gonna get the, it's not gonna turn brown as often. So I, I live, I love PGR, love, love, love PGR in my lawn. And uh, M Green is here now, he's saying, oh, I'm drinking spiked lemonade. Well guys, no, well, I'll take a sip of my lemonade. We're about an hour and change in. If you guys wouldn't mind, we've got, you know, 110 of you here or so in the live stream. If you guys wouldn't mind touching that like button, ever so gently. It's free for you guys to do. It's an easy way to support the channel, sends good vibes to the algorithm, and uh, cause more people to come hang out with us here on the show. So I'd really appreciate that while I take a sip of my lemonade out of the official uh, live stream cup. Mm -hmm. All right. So next question we have up is from Eric Garcia. Eric says, hey, Ron, happy Friday. Happy Friday, uh, Eric. He says, I can't get rid of the seed heads. Should I scalp? I'm currently at 1.25 inches. Okay, so Eric, if you're still getting seed heads now, that's that's odd because for me, and even for the lawns around here that are not mowed, well, I shouldn't say that. The lawn, lawns that are like super tall still have seed heads. But if you're mowing like a couple times a week, you really shouldn't be seeing a ton of issues with seed heads now, assuming assuming that you get the lawn's getting enough water and assuming the lawn also has enough nutrient, right? So... Um, if you, um, I wouldn't necessarily, you could try scalping, but I, I don't know if that's really going to fix anything. Um, what I might try doing is let's try, um, raising your water intake, your water inputs in the lawn just a little bit. Let's maybe, maybe add like one more day of watering, see if that helps. Also, if you've not as yet done a soil test, um, it's something I would consider doing too. The one that I recommend is the one from my soil. Um, again, these guys are super easy to use, gets your results within a week. And because here's why, right? If if you're mowing regularly, which it sounds like you are, you're mowing probably a couple times a week at least. Um, and if you're watering enough and you're still seeing seed heads, um, you might have some nutrient problem, some nutrient deficiency that's that again is causing the turf to see more stress and causing you to still, to still get seed heads. I haven't had them in my lawn for 
you know, well over a month, a couple of months now almost. Um, and also lawns around here, even the lawns around here, they're only cut like once a week by like lawn care services. None of them really have seed heads either. So um, I would, at this point, I'd, I'd say, let's make sure that you're putting enough water on it. And also let's get that soil test done. Let's get just, just out of a bunch of caution. Let's do that so we can rule out any kind of major um, nutrient deficiency that could be causing the problem. That's the next thing that, um, that, that I would try. Scalping, again, if you wanna do it, you can. But I don't think it's necessarily going to fix the problem because as soon as the grass grows back, if if we don't correct whatever is causing the turf to be stressed, um, you're just gonna get seed heads again, right? So just something to consider um, on that front. All right, um, great question. Alex B, thank you so much, sir. I appreciate that. He says, let's get some likes for Ron battling internet demons and intense heat this week. Yes, still doing a live for us. Man, I'll tell you, I was hot. I was irritated. Like of all times this week to go and dig up my lawn, and like knock out the internet, like why they couldn't do it tomorrow or even like earlier in the week so there's time to fix it. Literally an hour before the live stream is when this happens. It could not have been worse time. Well, that's not true. It could happen right now. That would be worse. That's the only thing that would be worse than them doing it an hour before the show, them doing it right now. That's what would be worse. So silver lining, right? Things can always be worse. No matter how bad they may seem to be, uh, can always get worse. But yeah, I appreciate it, Alex. Yeah, likes would def likes definitely go a long way. I really, really appreciate it. And then Mazama Blue says, what's going on, Ron? Nice uh, job working around the issue. Thank you for bringing up Miramichi Green Pest Control to the store. Thumbs up, everyone. Yeah, I mean, and this it's really cool, man, because a lot of people really want to keep, you know, insects, mosquitoes, you know, nasty bugs out of their lawns, but they don't want their, their for just their, rightfully so, their, um, their health conscious, right? They just don't want to take the chance of like, introducing toxins to their pets or to their kids. Um, so this is a great option for Miramichi Green. They've made available, allowing allowing us to make it available to you guys in the store. So take advantage of it. It's really, really good stuff. And a little bit goes a long way. I, I've been testing it and really like it. And also, I, again, I put an option for how what I would use for, for applying it in the live stream as well. You can use a backpack sprayer, but you only get like 1,500 to 3,000 square feet of coverage out of a gallon of mix, uh, out, of, out of a, I should say this, out of like a water on eight ounces of the product mix. See, that'll only cover 3,000 square feet. Um, but if you have like a, a mister, like the one I'm going to list here in the chat for anyone that's just new to getting in the live stream, like this guy, now um, now you're getting your coverage up to um, 7,500 square feet. So literally a gallon of this stuff will do most lawns and then outsize your house, shrubs, gardens, all that all that stuff. So that's the beautiful thing about it. So it's, a, you know, stuff you can literally spray everywhere on your lawn furniture, all this kind of stuff, because it's, it's a very fine, non-toxic, actually smells good too. Good stuff. All right, so Chaz Bishop's in the house. What's going on, Chaz? Thanks for coming to hang out. I appreciate you, as always. And uh, Winchair is chiming in on the peat moss question. He says, I used peat moss over my over on my overseed this year, and it worked well as far as moisture retention and as an indicator of when it needed watering. That's a good point, um, Winchair. I didn't consider that. Yeah, because peat moss, when it, when it dries out, it tends to change color. So yeah, that's a good point uh, as far as like being like a visual indicator as when, hey, I need to put more water on the lawn. So uh, it's a good point. Um, so Brian Woods is a great question. Says, yeah, any question, any um, um, comments or experience around using ammonium sulfate as a nitrogen source? Yeah, so typically, so yes, as a nitrogen source, yes, there are fertilizers that have ammonium sulfate in them. The time was when I really recommend people using that is when they, whenever you have like um, a an alkaline soil and you're trying to lower um, pH, like an elemental sulfate or ammonium sulfate, um, you're trying to like to lower the pH of the... Um, of the soil, that's why I recommend um, ammonium sulfate. I don't use it on my lawn because I because here on my lawn and most of the lawns in Georgia, our soil tends to be a bit more on the acidic side, so we tend to have to add lime to our lawns regularly. Not so much um, like citric acid or ammonium sulfate or elemental sulfate or means to kind of lower pH. So um, yeah, so yeah, personal experience none. But as far as people that have alkaline soil or high pH soil using that to, as their nitrogen source, yeah, that's absolutely a good strategy because um, you're feeding your lawn and you're also helping to slowly work pH down um, in the process as well. So it absolutely can can work just fine, Brian. Great question. <laughs> JC's like, yeah, keep up the good work. The show must go on. You, you to tell you, man, it was uh, it was not easy, man. I was um, looking around for for wireless, and I said, okay, I'm gonna have to use the Wi-Fi hotspot, and we'll, we'll again, hopefully it works. Seems it seems to be holding out so f well so far. So let's let's hope it keeps going. All right, um, Kelby Ruiz is in the house. It says um, the backyard is having a hard time um, uh, greening darker. I guess getting darker green is what he's saying. So spots that get a ton of water are dark green, but my lawn is bumpy. Already spoon feeding and adding Milo about four weeks ago, trying not to use liquid iron. Okay, so 
Here's the thing I'd say this, Kelby. If you're having parts of your lawn that are responding well to having more moisture, right? So you, um, you're you saying that the areas that are getting more water are darker, um, and maybe areas that are getting less water aren't as dark. What that's telling me is that if we can figure out a way to keep a little bit more moisture in the soil, um, you know, we can perhaps even things out a bit. So an option for you is one, you can just water a whole lot more. That's an option. Um, or if you've not tried a moisture manager that I'm a really big fan of, and I've started using this year and love the results I'm getting with it, call Hydratane. Um, that is something uh, you can consider. Now, currently, it's only available um, in a um, in one gallon, one gallon containers. I'll show you here. Go to the Golf Course Lawn Store. So right here, this is what I'm talking about, Hydratane. What this does is it it behaves almost like a moisture magnet. My internet's slow because of you know, Wi-Fi hotspot, but it acts as a moisture man, a man, a magnet and helps to draw water or moisture into the root zone. So if you're looking for a way of doing that, um, you know, without having to add more watering, you know, this is, this is, is, um, labeled to cut or reduce watering by 50%. Um, and it, I, I absolutely do, do believe that. Like I've been using it in my lawn. I haven't had to put a ton more water on it and it still looks great. So the trick with Hydrotain, um, is if you are going to go with the liquid, right? Assuming you're going to go with that route, Here's what you're gonna to need to do. You're gonna to need to water your lawn, like make sure the soil, the lawn is wet prior to putting down the hydrotain. You're gonna put the hydrotain down, and then immediately, when I say immediately, immediately, I don't mean like an hour later, I mean like literally as soon as you're done putting the hydrotain down, you're gonna water the lawn again very heavily because you need to get it down into the soil for it to begin working. So um, that's the only, um, the only, the only thing I just kind of got you with it is that you have to be very particular about how you apply it. Water before, hydrotain, water afterwards, and that should help um, with um, that def definitely will help with what you're dealing with as far as um, those areas that are not getting quite enough water um, should help them, you know, even out and do um, do a little bit better. So hopefully that helps. Um, and it's good. You've already done a lot of the homework, right? You've already identified where the root causes. It's a watering issue. So now we can use something like Hydrotain um, as a means to um, to, to augment or to, to, to supplement um, adding moisture to the root zone without having to always put water on the lawn. And again, you can get that at the Golf Course Lawn Store. Only the liquid's currently in stock and it's shipping now. So uh, definitely take advantage of that. I appreciate the question. All right. Um, um, Will Dog says, a bifenthrin worked for white flies. I used my spray cart to apply it for armyworm preventative a week ago as well too. Great, great stuff, um, Will Dog. Yeah, so that's another thing that's not on the label for this, but I did confirm with, um, <clears throat> with Miramichi Green that it will absolutely work for. So um, the, the pest control, the non-toxic pest control um, will work for white flies. So that's actually on the label, but it will also work for army worms. It will control army worms if you apply it at the heavier rate. So the application rate for the pest control is anywhere between, um, I think it's four up to, um, up to eight ounces. So if you're dealing with um, army worms, you wanna go at that heavier eight ounce per one gallon rate. Um, and that should that should knock them out. That should smoke them out with no problem as well. So if you start finding that the bifenthrin is not working as much, that you're starting to get some resistance to it, like your mosquitoes are not dying off like they used to, um, consider going with this because they cannot form because of the way this works. The insects can't can't form a resistance to it, so it's always going to work. You can use this in, in concert with any other um, insecticides that you're using as well for even you know even greater efficacy. So something to consider. All right, two Trilla is in the house. He has a question about or a point about Caravan G. He says, hey, Ron, thanks for the link last week for the Caravan G. My question is, we just put down our final fertilizer. Is it okay to put down the Caravan G now or should we wait? And if so, how long? Uh, no need to wait. You can put it down right now. Um, you can put it down tomorrow if you want. Nope, no issue at all. Once you put it down, you're going to want to water it in. So if you've not, um, you know, if you just did your fertilizer, and you've not watered the fertilizer in as yet, and you didn't say, but um, if you've not watered in as yet, put down the Caravan G and then water them both in. If you have, put down the Caravan G and then um, water it in to activate it. You don't strictly have to, it's not like if you don't water it in, it's not gonna work. Just whenever it rains, it, you know, it, needs, it needs to get down into the soil to begin, to begin doing its thing. So if it's gonna rain, great, that's, you got it watered in for free. Um, but if you want to like get it, get it down and get it activated and working as soon as possible, um, you know, you're going to want to put some water on it after applying it. So great uh, question. All right. Green M says, what is the price on that item there? The price on the, um, on, okay. So if you're asking me about two things, if you're talk, talking about the hydrotain, the hydrotain, you can see the price. It's 74 
$99 on the Golf Course Lawn Store. And then um, for the Pest Control, it comes in two sizes, one gallon at $109. And then for if you have a, if you want like a ton of it, um, 2.5 gallons, that is going to set you back um, $229. But let's see, from a coverage standpoint, if we take 128, let me do the math for you real quick. We take 128 and divide that by eight. And then so it's 16, then we multiply that by 7,500. So one gallon, let's see here. So 16, make sure I, I get this right. So 16 times uh, 7,500. And what you get from that is um, 120,000 square feet. So one um, bottle of this will cover up to 120,000 square feet. So it's it sounds expensive, but it's actually not that much when you think about the kind of coverage um, you get out of it. And considering the fact that it's also um, a green product as far as it being, you know, safe for you, safe for your pets, safe for, you know, you can literally re-enter right afterwards. Um, so yeah, literally most people will buy one of those and it's, they're going to be good for an entire season. Even, even if they're applying it, um, every three weeks, every three to four weeks, as is recommended, um, you know, one gallon is good for an entire season for most people. Even on my lawn, I think one gallon would be plenty for an entire season. So hopefully that helps, um, with your question, uh, Greena. And again, it's in stock and shipping right now today on the golf course lawn store. So see Alex and Winchair are going back and forth about um, top dressing questions. And now we have a question from Lance F. He says, hey, Ron, it's Friday. It is Friday. He says, hey, buddy. <laughs> he says, yeah, buddy, this question. I have what looks like blue patches scattered throughout my Kentucky bluegrass. Um, can you send me a picture of it? I'm not sure what to, what to make of that one. Um, I will do my best to help you out, but if you can, um, Lance, Send me an email here, ron at golfcourselawn.com. Shoot me an email with a picture of um, the blue patch. T send me at least two pictures. One like close up so I can see like what it looks like close. And then a little bit further back where I can see like the color of the lawn. Um, and also the blue patches you're talking about to see like the size of them and how the color compares. And then I'll be able to um, get an answer for you. So um, hopefully that helps. But just saying blue patches, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what the problem could be. I mean, it could be you went super heavy with fertilizer in one spot. It could be, you know, mild pet urine that's causing that one area to turn darker. Uh, it could be a lot of different things. So um, send me a picture and I'll be able to uh, to get you an answer. And we got a, a uh, super chat from the man, the myth, the legend, um, the friend and uh, friend and, and um, constant supporter of the live stream, Mr. Josh Abib. Super chat. He says, happy Friday, bud. Hope you had an awesome week. We appreciate you. I'm having a great week. Friday, about an hour and a half ago, two hours ago, was not great, Josh. My internet um, got cut out, so I'm, I'm on my backup right now. So hopefully it holds out for us, at least for as long as the live stream goes, right? Hopefully. Let's let's hope. But, but all things considered, it's great times. We're talking about grass, and it uh, should be a good time. Should be a great time. All right. So Scott R. has a question, or talking about, like, top dressing, Guys, remember, because our theme set is top dressing. He says about top dressing and then like application rate of top dressing mix. He says, uh, what's up, Ron? I've heard one ton of sand per um, thousand square feet. Yeah, I think one cubic yard, which is about a ton. Yeah, they're about a cubic yard per thousand square feet. But I called a company and they wanted to drop 25 tons on 8K. Sounds excessive. Thoughts? Yeah, that sounds like a lot. Um, Yeah, that does sound like a lot uh, to me, um, Scott. It does. I'm gonna ask them. Here's the thing, because wait, okay. So when I say when I say a cubic yard, I'm talking about like from a volume perspective, um, like one yard, one cubic yard. We're talking about volume is is about what's right for 1,000 square feet. Now, 25 tons over 8k could be right, depending on what they're using. If they're using just a straight sand, like sand is really heavy. Like sand is a lot heavier than top dressing mix. Like yeah, sand and soil blend is like way lighter than just straight sand. So if we're just going straight by weight, I'd have to know what kind of material they're talking about um, because it might be close to right. You know, if it's just straight sand, sand by weight is, is, is much heavier than the top dressing mix. I would, but here's what I would do. I would call them up and ask them, hey, how much how much cubic yards are we talking about here? So I know you're talking in tons. Like, let's, let's make this a volume question. How many cubic yards are you guys planning on putting down uh, over my um, 8,000 square feet? Because, you know, your, your goal should be around eight yards for 8,000 square feet. Now, if that eight yards ends up weighing 25 tons, so be it. Um, but I, I would ask them it more on the on terms of volume than weight, because depending on what they're using, the weight could be different. If it's, I mean, the sand's got a lot of water in it, it's going to weigh a lot more, right? So um, ask them, ask them um, like from a cubic yard perspective, how much material they want to use. And then that should, um, that should get us a little bit closer to figure out how much stuff they're going to be bringing. 
Hopefully that helps. Great question. Great question. All right. Um, Alex B says, a natural, seemingly very benign pest control is definitely for me. I will be trying that out, especially since I have a few dogs and numerous young nieces and nephews that often come over. Yeah, it's perfect for what you're doing, Alex, because because literally the, the thing about this, when I, I, I got on, uh, you know, talking to Miramichi about it and says, you know, so when you guys say I can re that people can re-enter after a a spraying it, they talk about like a couple of hours later or they say, nope, literally, literally you can, you put this stuff in a fogger or a mister, spray it, apply it to your lawn. And literally after it's like done, it's like it's settled down you can re-enter. As far as like the PPE you should wear when you're using it, um, all I recommend, I mean, you can you can wear glasses, um, mainly because like it's got some soaps in it. And if you have, you're spraying like up high or a window up high and the wind blew some of it back in your eyes, it might irritate your eyes. Again, it's not gonna cause damage, but it could irritate your eyes. Um, and then just also out of an abundance of caution, if you wanna wear a mask while you're applying it, you can do that as well too. Just so you're not inhaling like soap. Um, the particulates, because if you're using a fogger, it gets very, very fine. Um, and again, even though the stuff is not toxic, you just don't want to, you don't want to inhale it if you don't, if you necessarily have to, especially if you're spraying up high, if you're doing it along the ground and just around plants, um, the, the mask is probably not strictly necessary, but if I were spraying up above my head, I would consider wearing a mask or some kind of, some kind of, um, breathing, um, fil some kind of filtering uh, as well. Again, not because this product is toxic, just because you want to keep it out of your eyes and keep it out of your lungs. If, uh, just, just out of an abundance of caution. So, but yeah, for what you're dealing with, Alex, sounds like it's a great fit. You have to let, let me, let me know how it works. Uh, once you get some and you try it out. All right. 13 King of Battle says, hit the like button. I like it. See, it's very, man, straight to the point, just tells everyone what they need to do. And if you guys have not hit the like button as yet, I'd appreciate it. It's just a free way for you guys to support the channel. You know, it's, it's 123 of us in here so far. Um, and it'd be, I'd really appreciate it. I can take a sip of my lemonade and it costs you nothing. And it shows that you want to support the channel. Thank you so much. Mm, I love lemonade. I don't know what is with lemonade. It's just so tasty. All right, so Calvin Winston is up here. He says, hey, Ron. Um, and what's up, Lawn Squad? He said, my second top dress of the year was just interrupted by thunderstorms, but I am happy for the rain. My boys and I will start again tomorrow. Hashtag Marietta, um, you know, drinks up to all. Cheers to all. Uh, yeah, what you're going to find, Calvin, is if you got rain, like all the top dressing you did today, like all the rain is going to is going to settle it. It's going to it's going to settle it down quite a bit. So you, it, you might actually identify some areas that you can maybe put a little bit more material, right? Because that's, that's the thing with top dressing. You put it down first, water it in or it hits, get some rain on it. And then um, that's going to help identify low spots or little areas that need just a little bit more sand. It sounds like at least in the areas that you were able to get done, you're going to be able to see tomorrow like what areas you can go in and do some touch up work already as it is. So that's, there's always a good, good point to getting rain. So very, very cool. And it's nice that you have help um, with it. I can tell you top dressing is way better when you have someone to help you out. It's, it's, it's rough by yourself, man. All right, Connor Soul says, thanks for the advice. I'll just keep it at 0.75. It's 100% uh, new Kentucky bluegrass, by the way. Yeah, I, I would do that, Connor. I would I would uh, keep it a little bit taller. 0.75 is a great height for top dressing. Like what you don't want to do is top dress a lawn that's like two inches long. Like that, you're going to be hating life doing that because the leveling rate is going to get caught up in the grass. It's just going to be a pain. You're not going to be really able to see where all the low spots are. So you want to cut it down low enough that you can actually see like, you know, low areas, high areas in the lawn, but not so low that, if you were to get a heavy rain, especially if you have any kind of a slope, that you got a heavy rain, like the sand is just going to get washed out and moved all over the place. So you, you do need some grass, um, or I should say some grass is helpful to helping the mix stay in place. So I think it sounds really good. Um, 0.75 um, works great. Let's stick with that one. All right. So Lamont Smith has a question about, um, or Sti, sorry, Lamont, Lamont Sti, uh, Stit has a question about um, soil testing. He says, Ron, once you have a soil test done, when will the next soil test need to be performed? What are the intervals? So you get different answers on this. I think at a minimum for me, I would do them twice a year. I would do one at least once in the spring, the start of the season, and then another one in the fall at the end of the season. Here's why. In the spring, when you do it before the growing season starts, it kind of it lets you know like what our nutrient deficiencies are like. Um, you know, if you need to, if if you need, it helps you kind of work out your fertilizer program for the upcoming season. Again, I'm answering this as if you're dealing, you have warm season grass, right? So you you do your soil test in the spring, and the one that I recommend is the one from my soil. So if you're in the market for a soil test, it's super easy to use and results that anybody can read and interpret and um, you know make sense of. Highly recommend this one. They're again available at the Golf Horse Lawn Store. Um, so you get your results back. It's going to give you the answers to the test as far as what you need to put on your lawn in the springtime. The reason why I also recommend doing one in the fall is because it allows you to see if what you did throughout the season, like how that worked, like how, how effective was it? 
like if you if say say your um your nitrogen was super like all your macros were really low right you started fertilizing with like a triple 12 throughout the season and like when you get to like near the fall i mean the lawn may have looked great but it was like super it was like super low the entire time like in other words the levels never really recovered that's good information to know for next year saying okay well next season when i when i have to start when i start this for my application rate i'll do a i'll do a no-soil test in the spring but if the numbers look similar i know i could probably go and be a little bit heavier um, as far as that particular set of nutrient to try and to kind of raise um, the levels a bit. So I like in the spring to know what to do and then the fall to see, to test the effectiveness of it. I personally soil test every three months. I did it starting last year and I've just been sticking with it. I don't really need to at this point, but I do it because I like the data. I like to see how the soil, how the, how the lawn changes throughout the season. Um, so that's what I do, but that's not strictly necessary. I'd say if you have warm season grass, spring and fall, and even cool season grass, the same thing will work too for you, spring and fall. Those are, those are, those are great times to get a soil test done because it gives you the answers to the test and lets you know the effectiveness of what you've been putting down um, in the lawn. So hopefully, hopefully that helps answer your question. Great one. That's a really, really good question. There's a question here about, um, uh, is, 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 sorry, I'm not sure if you didn't already answer this earlier, but how do you adjust your watering when the weather is extremely hot? My normal schedule is, um, I don't know what, I'm not sure what TTS is at 5 a.m. He says, um, is at 5 a.m. He says, would you, would you, sup would you supplement? Um, around this time of year? Yeah. Yeah. Um, what, what you could do is like normally my watering schedule is Monday, Thursday, um, that and a fairly heavy watering um, on those days. What I've been doing is, um, what I've been doing is adding um, another day, but backing down on how much water I put on the lawn. So I've been reduced. So the, the total amount of water going on the lawn every week is about the same. It's just being spread out more. Um, and the grass seems to be liking that. So yeah, if you if you are having an issue where you're starting to see what looks like stress, heat related stress to the lawn, um, or localized dry spot, then you absolutely can um, you absolutely can consider um, you know adding another day of watering as as well. All right, um, let's see what other questions we have here. Hopefully that helps. Um, a wind chariot, and it says, um, let's see what other questions. Uh, what other questions we've got going on here? So Dwayne has a point about. Um, um, a back portion of the lawn. He says, uh, towards the back portion of my lawn, I have Bermuda with a live edge against a small bed of pebble rocks. My Bermuda keeps growing over into the pebble rocks. I have used um, Roundup in the past. Okay, so I, I guess the question, um, Dwayne, is how to keep the Bermuda out of your, out of your beds. Um, you're going to need some kind of a physical barrier. Um, actually, one second here. Um, let me do this. I got to um, answer answer a question. Um, uh, um, okay. So uh, as far as the, the, the way the way to keep it out of your out of your bed is the physical barrier. You can spray Roundup, like that's going to work, but it's just you're really just temporarily knocking it back. Because remember, Bermuda, um, it's very aggressive and it grows both above ground, both um, stolons, like the, the, the runners you see above the ground, and also has um, uh, rhizomes as well. So the, so runners that run under the ground. So what you're going to want to do, Dwayne, if you're trying to keep them out as much as possible, if you can get some kind like of a metal plate or some kind of barrier that you can put eight inches or so into the soil, um, into the, like, uh, between the lawn and this bed, that should do the trick as far as, um, or should, should seriously reduce the amount of Bermuda that, that encroaches into, uh, into your beds. The roundup will work, but you're going to be playing whack-a-mole. It's just, it's going to be a constant, um, cat and mouse game where it's going to, um, it's going to consistently keep coming back. It's not like roundup is just going to knock the Bermuda back temporarily, but it's going to grow back again. So a physical barrier really, um, is the only, is really the only, uh, a way to go with that. Okay. So let's see what other uh, what other questions um, we have here. Um, so um, Shamari McGee has a question um, from Noonan, Georgia. It says, I just moved into a new home in Noonan, Georgia. A lot of red clay. Do I need to teal it, then throw? I'm not sure what the question is. Um, Shamari, if you can um, add a little more context, um, I'll be able to answer you, but I'm not sure what you should do. I mean, as far here's the thing. As far as red clay, I can just ask you, tell you what I would do with a red clay lawn. So you just moved in. Um, the, the house, it sounds like an existing lawn has lots of red clay. If you're trying to improve it, 
Um, red clay tends to not drain very well as far as like if you get a heavy rain, it just kind of sits on top of the lawn. So if you've not done an aeration this year as yet, uh, Shamari, that's something you might want to consider doing. You may do it yourself or you can have a service do it for you. That will help improve. Um, that's going to do a lot for your lawn. It's going to break up compaction. It's going to improve drainage. Um, um, and then if you, uh, as far as things you can do to help improve the quality of your, your lawn as well, uh, you can start um, getting on like a, on a, on a granular carbon program. So something that I'd recommend for, for, for all lawns, um, but even clay, especially clay soil lawns, is a product called Essential G. So I'll show you here. If you go to the Golf Course Lawn Store, this product is something that you can apply to your lawn pretty much year round as long as it's not frozen. And in Noonan, let's face it, in Noonan, Georgia, you're never gonna get, the, the ground's never gonna freeze. Um, so go ahead and apply something like that to your, um, to your soil. And, um, and and to, to your lawn regularly, that's gonna help improve the quality of it along with a good aeration. Um, and then you're good to go. I mean, outside of that, the next thing I would recommend is get a soil test done if you've not done one as yet. That's gonna let you know what the soil is lacking, if anything, and then you can build your fertilization program around um, the soil test data. So without having your entire question, I'm just giving you like some general guidance of what I would do for someone that moves in a brand new lawn that happens to have um, that good old red Georgia clay. Uh, yes. And then, uh, and Scott's saying, yeah, that's, thanks Alex B. Um, that's what I thought this was a professional lawn service making a recommendation for 25 tons. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they're quoting you by, by uh, weight Scott. So they may not be that far off. You know, if they're doing hundred percent sand, again, sand is really heavy. So they, I would ask them from a volume perspective of how much they're, um, you know, what they're trying to put into the lawn. All right, um, so let's see uh, what other questions um, uh, we got here. So, we, so Dwayne says, yeah, but it affects, he's tried it, but it affects the edges, which I don't like. I have, a, I've used a weed whacker, but it makes a mess of the rock. So yeah, kind of like I was telling you, uh, Dwayne, a physical barrier is gonna be uh, your best bet, is your best bet. Cars, motorcycles, and exotics, a common, a regular in the live stream, it says it's hot here in Northwest Florida on the 30A, but you keep me motivated for three days a week of real mowing. That's awesome, man. I'm glad to hear that you're still mowing despite uh, the crazy temps in the state of Florida. i um, sure your grass loves you for it. I mean, just make sure you wear a sun shirt or wear some, you know, just cover up and make sure that, um, you know, you're doing what you need to do to keep the sun off you. But yeah, I mean, especially now with all the heat, now is when you really don't want to be missing your mowing or you're going to get that scalp action. So the stripe action, you're going to be having scalp action. We don't want that. So, uh, so I'm glad that you're, you're keeping up with your mowing uh, either way. Thanks so much. All right, uh, two shots of vodka. Has, he's having problems with, with crabgrass. He says, hey, Ron, I'm getting attacked by crabgrass badly. Now, how exactly is the crabgrass attacking you? Is it jumping out of the soil? Like when you're out there, it's jump, trying to do a chokehold on you? Is this how it's attacking you, two shots? Um, I'm just messing with you, man. He says, but I'm doing, I'm doing as much as hand pulling as I can. Any recommendations for a weed killer that won't hurt the Bermuda grass too badly? Sod less than one year old as well. Yeah, so um, this time of year, you, you can use some, you can use quinclorac. Like quinclorac is the is like as far as what do you use to kill crabgrass? Quinclorac, right? Um, but if you're using, if you want something that's a very very good herbicide that you can spray in higher temperatures, um, then something like Celsius is what I would um, is what I would go with. I'm going to find a link here for you um, for that because Celsius has um, doesn't have a lot of the temperature restrictions that a lot of um, that a lot of herbicides have. So I'll send that to you here in the chat. Uh, two shots um, are here, and uh, there you go. So that that's what I would I would give us give a shot, and it'd be fine. Your saw like a, a year old. That's going to be fine to to um, to put Celsius on it without an issue. So hopefully that helps. Sorry you're dealing with crabgrass, um, but it can get better. Papa Mo's low with a new avatar. What's going on, man? I like it. It's clean. I like that, man. I like that look. It looks cool. Nice job. He says, what's up, everyone? Sorry I'm late. You're late, but you're here. So it's always uh, always good. Always good. Uh, Mike Havy is talking about Bermuda and leveling after having a tree remove. That's our next question. He says, I had a tree remove. There we go. I had a tree remove last year, and the Bermuda grew in great this year, but it's very uneven. I'm not able to do a full leveling this year, but I want to do just that spot. Can I use play sand? You can do just that spot. I would not use play sand. I would I would still go out and get a couple buckets of like masonry sand um, at, at a minimum to level the spot. So literally, if you want to see the process, like I've got I've got you covered, Mike. Literally, the video that I did earlier this week covers that in it, it answers the answers to that exact question. Um, so I'll send that to you here. If you've not watched it yet, be sure to check it out. Uh, so literally, it's a spot in my lawn where a tree died, um, had it removed. 
Um, and then um, in that video, I show like, hey, there's still some rut, a little rut area that's still left over after the trees um, was gone. The grass was kind of growing in, but there's a little bit of a rut there. Here's how you fix it. And that video literally will show you how I recommend doing it. Um, get If you can, get yourself some masonry sand. If it's a, if it's a tree, it's not going to be that much of it. I mean, if you get, you know, uh, depending on how big a tree, if it's, if it's a really big tree, you're probably five, six buckets, five, six, five gallon buckets of, of, uh, of play sand is probably going to do a decent job, depending on how deep the rut is. But um, I, I'm sorry, not play sand, of masonry sand. Um, but that is what I would go with. I would not use play sand because it's, it's just too fine. It's just too fine. Um, and it doesn't match in any way the existing soil. So if you can get some masonry sand and even better, some masonry sand that you mix with some organic material like topsoil or compost, that's like the um, the secret sauce. That that's that's what I would recommend to use as like a, a filling material for that area where you had the tree removed. I would not do 100% play sand for a really small, tiny spot. Yeah, if you want to do it in a pinch, fine. But this sounds like a bigger area, so I would actually use the proper mix, um, you know, for that to get the best uh, the best possible result. And again, that video I just linked to you um, will um, will do that. Okay, so Green M says, "Hey Ron, how it goes? It goes, man. Not bad." Is as you mentioned uh, doing a 70-30 um, on topsoil, is that a recommendation for only warm season grass or both cool and warm? It is a recommendation for both, for both warm and cool season grass. Um, you can again, you can do 100% top uh, top 100% uh, sand if your only goal is to just to add structure. If all you care about is leveling the lawn, you can do that. But the point is by doing with a by going with a 70-30 mix is that you get like 85 or you get like most 85% like most of the leveling benefits. And you're also adding organic material to the lawn. So that's why I'm a fan of doing a 70-30 mix. It also helps prevent issues where if they're, um, say you have like a clay soil, um, you know, you hear some people saying, you know, if you use sand, you put sand on clay soil, it can get hard, become concrete, or it can cause issues. Um, when you, by mixing a little bit of topsoil in, you reduce the likelihood of that becoming a thing. So yes, for cool season and warm season grass, I would do a mix. I would do a blend. Is what I would go with. So hopefully, um, hopefully that helps. That's something that applies to both warm um, and cool season grass. All right, uh, Richard um, Pisar Pisarski says has a question. It says, "How do you kill, destroy, wipe out, slaughter uh, wild uh, velvet, wild violet?" Um, I don't know if a spectroscope will do that one. Um, I think so. It's, I'm not sure if it says wild violet or if there's. Um, Let's see, it says maple violet. Yeah, this one will do it too. So how do you kill, wipe out, destroy, kill, um, do, do everything to it? Um, so if you have warm season grass, Richard, you're gonna like this. Uh, for cool season grass, I have to do some research. Probably, I'm not sure what I, we, I can recommend for cool season grass, but for warm season, we can go with spectricide. So I'll switch over here. You, the nice thing is you can get this tomorrow at your local big box store, so Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart, whatever, any one of those. You can find this stuff. Um, this kills over 470 weeds. And if we look at weeds controlled, if I go and I show you, um, let's see, we search for this wild violet. I think it's actually gonna be there. You can see that wild violet is one of the ones that made the list. So um, this guy is a, is a great option. The only uh, thing about this, Richard, is that you don't wanna spray this if temperatures on your lawn, or, or the temperature on your lawn, if temperatures where you are, are over 90 degrees. So that's the only thing you're gonna wanna, um, you're gonna wanna keep in, keep in um, consider. Um, you know, if temps are 90 degrees or higher, uh, you're going to want to wait on using this. In that case, you might want to use something like Celsius instead. A little bit more expensive, but it doesn't have the temperature restrictions of spectricide. Um, so if you can wait a little while and, until temps, you know, get a couple days where the temps are going to be in the 80s, then you can go with the spectricide. If it's going to be super hot for a long period of time, that's when you're probably going to be looking at something like Celsius, which is a little bit more expensive, but again, does not have the temperature um, restrictions that spectricide does. If you find that you um, that you do have those temp restrictions and you want to, um, you want them to apply anyway, um, the Celsius, I'll put a link for that for you there as well. But the spectricide, you should be able to find that locally at your um, at your big box store. All right, we got a super chat from Mr. LG. Thank you so much, sir. Really do appreciate it. Super chat received. He says, cheers, Ron. I'd like to sponsor the next lemonade break. Uh, and thanks for another Friday night, uh, live stream. I, uh, I really appreciate it. So yeah, on that note, I will take a sip of my lemonade. Thank you so much, LG. Um, and while I'm taking a sip of lemonade, if you guys would like to touch the like button ever so gently, it's free for you guys to do. Great way to support the channel. It sends a great vibe to the algorithms. Thank you guys so much. While I take a sip of my lemonade. Mm. Good stuff. All right. So I'm finding... 
where I left off. Um, okay, yes. So the next question um, we have here is from Heartfelt Fashion. Uh, it says, hey, Ron, uh, we love your content and love watching your live stream each week. My wife life laughed at me last week when because I was mad that I missed your live stream and didn't get a chance to ask my question. Ha, well, you're here now. You can ask your question now. I mean, you know, or, or you can throw, if you throw out your question in the chat afterward or in the uh, comment section afterwards, normally I'm pretty good about answering those as well too. But if you know, you're here now, so now's your chance. And you know, you, I mean, here's the thing. I'm sure when she's watching her show and she doesn't get to see it, she gets irritated. She, you know, you can't, just because it's grass, she doesn't, you know, she shouldn't make fun of it. She shouldn't make uh, a light of a man and his, and his love for grass. It's a serious thing. There's, there's, there's far worse things you could be doing than watching a live stream about grass. Granted, it's not, I mean, as far as like the nerd factor, it's kind of up there a little bit, but hey, you know, I like it. I like it. I appreciate, I appreciate you watching, man. Appreciate having you as a viewer. All right. Uh, Daniel's Lawn Care is in the house. What's going on from down under? He says, hey, Ron, uh, good Saturday morning here in Australia. Thanks for coming to hang out. Uh, Daniel, thank you so much. I always appreciate you uh, chiming in on the comment section. And uh, I do watch your videos, man. So keep going. Keep going with the content. I really, uh, I really, really do uh, appreciate it. All right, Skinny Geek uh, uh, 10 is in the house and is saying that um, if you scalp Bermuda down to the brown st stalks and it grows back, is the green coming from those same stalks or does it pop up from the ground? I wasn't sure what was happening there on a high to cut reset. It's coming from the same stalks, uh, Skinny Geek. Yeah, it's coming from the same from the same stuff that you cut down. So in other words, if you scalp the grass, if you cut down, cut the grass short, it's not like all the stuff that you cut short stays short and only the new stuff grows through. It's that you're, you've, you've cut it below where you tend to maintain it, and then the new growth that comes up is um, tends to be green. So yeah, that's hopefully hopefully I'm help, that helps answer your question. All right, Don Julio, great question, man. A great great uh, great handle. Says I'm gonna have to rewatch this whole live chat. Well, I'm glad uh, glad that it was enjoyable that you're gonna want to do that, man. Really really appreciate it. That's uh, that's always it's pretty awesome. I appreciate the support. All right, Keith Mullen says, how can I tell if my tall fescue mix spreads uh, and fills in thin areas? So far, really hard to tell. It's not happening. So fescue doesn't, um, so you said that a tall fescue mix. I don't know what's, what else is in that tall fescue mix. Um, fescue is not like a creeping grass like um, like Bermuda or like for and grass, like Kentucky bluegrass. It doesn't creep like, like those do. So it, it can spread, but not, not nearly as aggressively as like I said, like Bermuda or like Kentucky bluegrass. Um, so if you got like an area that's really bare, like a big bare spot, you might, you're gonna look at either plugging it possibly or, or maybe um, putting down a seed. It sounds like you're already putting down seed, uh, Keith. So if, you, if you're if you putting down seed, um, make sure you're getting enough water on it so that it germinates nicely and, and then you should be good to go. It should fill in, it should fill in. Um, it may take a couple of applications of seed, but the big thing, most seeding projects fail from not enough water for long enough periods of time. So. Um, the nice thing with fescue is that it grows in a little bit faster than, um, than like say Bermuda or um, Kentucky bluegrass, but you still got to keep water on it. So if you're finding some areas that are a little bit thin, um, give it a little bit more time, but maybe just, you know, reseed those areas and just make sure you're keeping enough moisture on it uh, until you get good germination. Great, great question. All right. So heartfelt fashion who did not get to answer his, que his question last week or make his comment next week is now making it. He's from Charlotte NC. He says, my grass looks great. But between the sidewalk and the street, okay, I'm thinking here, sidewalk and street, okay, yep, I have grass that will not grow. When they made our lawn um, to build our house, they used sand and rock. It's stopping my roots. Okay, so are you saying that, so the, like, the vanity strip section, so you got like, um, you got like, so if I'm gonna do it like this way, you have like main lawn, sidewalk, like strip of grass between the sidewalk and the street, and then street, and it's a strip of grass, like the vanity strip, like your vanity strip, the grass is not growing. Um, so you're telling me that it's sand and that it's sand and rock all throughout. Uh, that's weird. That almost sounds like there's like there's potentially trash in it. Now, is it heartfelt fashion? Is it not growing everywhere? Like the entire vanity strip is bare, or is it only a few localized spots where it's not growing well? Because I mean, I, I'd be I'd be shocked if the entire thing um, isn't doing well. I mean, that that would be surprising. I, I mean, if it, I have seen such issues where you know if you have like a, um, some trash or lawn debris or rocks that you're talking about there that, that got buried whenever they did the lawn. Um, like those areas will cause localized problems with the grass being thin and not, not doing well, but I've not seen that across an entire strip. Could happen, but I mean, not saying it's, I'm not, I've just never seen it. So what we can do is if you have a screwdriver, like a Phillips screwdriver or a flathead screwdriver, 
take it, walk out there, and see if you can push it down into the soil. Like if it's stopping like an inch or two below, that means there's some kind of debris down there, whether it be boards, concrete, rocks, whatever you're talking about, that, you, that you're probably gonna need to remove and then you know put some topsoil in there to fill it um, for the grass to do well. I mean, you need really, I like to say eight inches, but really you know four to six inches you can probably get away with. Four to six inches of decent, of decent soil, the grass will do okay, but more is better. Eight inches or more is, is, really, is really better. Um, the best thing, you, all I can tell you is there's a physical barrier in the soil, you're gonna have to remove it. That's gonna be the best way to, um, to get rid of that, unfortunately. So if, if I understand correctly, um, hopefully that helps answer your, your question. So hopefully that was, uh, that was useful. And thank you for, be, for being a viewer. See, you, you stuck around, and you're persistent, you got your question and your comment in, so it's pretty awesome, right? All right, um, Todd from the Sand Hills says, arriving late, got my Central G down the lawn and used a Scott's reel mower on the front yard along with sending in my soil test. Love the content. Man, you just, you went full tilt, man. You got the reel mower, you got the Essential G, uh, you're out mowing, you got your soil test done. Man, you are, you are not messing around. I like it. You're gonna, and you know what? You're gonna get great results from it. Like the more deep, like the thing is, the more you focus on the small things, the better, the better result. Like if you major on the small things or, or focus on getting the small things right in your lawn, it makes it easier for the lawns just to do well without without a ton of work. If you do that upfront work of really working on um, on on taking care of those small issues. All right. So Mark Mike Warmbold has a question about pre-emergent. He says, "What is the best pre-emergent for zoysia?" Um, as far as best, there's a tons of different options. I can't say necessarily which one is um which what's I mean best best. I mean I'd say I'll give you a couple of common ones. Probably the most common pre-emergent um, for warm season grass and cool season grass, and mainly because it's very effective. And um, to date, that I've the research that I've seen, there's not like a lot of issues with weeds developing resistance to it. It's called prodiamine. Um, or if you go, if you look for the brand name of it, it's called what we call the uh, barricade. That's another name for it. So in the spring and the fall, you can use prodiamine. Um, we have it in stock here on the golf course lawn store. You can actually get a small container like this of it. Um, that's like this is like 20 bucks and it'll cover 5,000 square feet if you got a warm season lawn. Um, so this is like the very, a very, very cost effective way if you just want a small amount, you don't have to buy like a huge jug of this stuff and have it sitting around for years. Um, so prodiamine is a great option. That's like an economy, I, I hate to say economy option, but it is a, is a very cost effective option that works very well. You can also use um, Dithiopere or um, also known as Dimension. That's another um, pre-emergent that works well. It also has a little bit of post-emergent properties as far as like being able to kill young crabgrass. And if you're looking, not, if you want to get, and, that, and those are the ones that are, I'd say, reasonably priced. Like you're not going to break the bank too much buying those. Now, if you want to get into like some of the more more Cadillac pre-emergents, now you're talking about like um, the one that comes to mind is like one called Spectacle Flow. Really, really good pre-emergent has like they say up to ten months of uh, effectiveness. But it's super expensive. It's like you know, it's it's well north of like three hundred dollars for a small amount of this stuff. So it's very expensive. Works really well. Controls does a really good job controlling um, controlling weeds. Uh, but it's also just quite expensive. So for me, if you're just you know, if you're trying to do your pre-emergent yourself, go with something like Prodiamine or Dithiopere. Those two will work well. If you got you got a, a bit more budget, you can try out um, some. Spectacle Flow. If you want something that I'm um, something I'm going to be trying out this year myself this fall, um, Mike is a, is a is a pre-emergent called Coastal. It's not strictly a pre-emergent. It's got prodiamine in it as a pre-emergent, and it also has two other active ingredients. It's like I think it's simazine and um, it starts with an I. I think it's a mazaquin. So it's got two post-emergents, and then prodiamine is a pre-emergent. And the idea behind this, the thinking behind this one is that it's going to kill any poanua that is beginning to germinate in the late fall. Um, and then you have the prodiamine to carry you as a pre-emergent into the spring. And then with the testing that's been done um, by this professor of, uh, of ag, I forget which professor it is, but I think his first name is Bert. I forget his last name, but it's Bert. Um, uh, it works really well as some of the really high dollar for um, herbicides, right? As far as like, as far as like a comparing like um, um, coastal like that blend against like um, Spectacle Flow, they got equal results for a much more economical price. So that's what I'm going to be trying out this year on my lawn. So gives you a couple couple, a couple of different options. Hopefully that helps. Um, but yeah, the big thing is just get a pre-emergent down. You definitely want to do that. Get a pre-emergent down on your lawn uh, before um, before uh, you know you have issues um, in the springtime. It'll, it'll save you a lot of headache with, with, with the more expensive post-emergence. All right, so JK has a question. He says, uh, to piggyback on, on, the, on what uh, Skinny Geek asked, I'm mowing at half inch and have areas of my turf that are nothing but brown runners and stalks. Any idea what might, what might be causing this? I mow every other day too. 
Um, so those areas may not have enough, may not be getting enough water. There may be some trash. If they've always been brown, um, then I would start looking to see if there's any kind of garbage or localized dry spot issues going on, JK. If they were green before and they were, they're now going turning brown, then maybe you're having a watering issue. The thing you have to realize too is that at half an inch, um, half an inch every other day sounds like a lot of mowing, but really it needs to be half an inch every other day with PGR because like, like half an inch is, I mean, literally you're taking off like a 16th of an inch of grass to keep it green between mowings. So, you know, it, the, with the temps where they are now, Bermuda can easily grow that in a couple of days, easily. It'll grow, it'll grow more than that in a couple of days. So even though you're cutting it, you know, every other day, you're still taking off probably a little bit more than you should be. So if you're gonna maintain that every other day mowing cycle, get some PGR down, that will, that will likely help the issue as well, assuming we're not dealing with some kind of trash or, you know, some kind of debris in the lawn that's, that's causing a problem. So I'm, I'm answering this question assuming that the lawn's getting enough water, um, and there's no debris, the next thing I would say I, I would try is, you know, let's just go with some PGR. Um, maybe also add some hydrotain to help with, um, with the moisture retention. But PGR is like magical stuff, especially when you start mowing your lawn short. Like, like I, may, I could not maintain my lawn at half an inch um, without using plant growth regulator. And if you need help with applying it, I've got you covered. I've got a video here on the topic. Um, it tells you how to mix it, how to apply it, all that fun jazz, um, and it will get you all squared away. So at JK, um, JK, boom, there we go. That video there, we'll talk all about PGR and a link to other videos as well too. So hopefully that helps you helps answer your questions. Sorry you're dealing with the, the, the spots, but um, it's something that we can uh, we can you know we can get past. All right, so um, Denuel99 says, hello, new, new viewer, great content, thank you so much. Is I have chicory weed and clover that creeps under my fence from my neighboring lawn. What can I use to get rid of it in my lawn? I think Spectricide will take care of that. Assuming you have warm season grass, I think it will it will knock that out. I'm not sure, I have to take a look at the label real quick here and see, but assuming you're dealing with a warm season grass, you said clover, um, uh, um, yeah, clover as well as chickweed, I think both, or chicory weed, I think both of those it's labeled for. I'm checking, uh, checking here really quick to see if that is on, um, on the list. Yeah, so for, for, um, yeah, so this is the product I'm talking about here, um, Denuel 99. Again, it's assuming you, you, you have a warm season grass. Um, this guy will work for, um, for the clover you're talking about as well as the chick the chicory weed I'm not seeing that but um but tr but this is a, a very cost effective way to um to take care of of clover in your lawn again assuming you have warm season grass there are more expensive options like we could go with something like celsius but again that's going to be like this this stuff I'm I'm showing you is like $15 a bottle celsius is like $140 a bottle so you know, there's a big difference uh, for a container. I mean, now, Celsius is a much better herbicide, but it's also a lot more expensive. It, and it doesn't have the temperature restrictions that Spectricide does. So it just depends on what you're dealing with. All right, left tools in the house. What's going on, man? He says, good evening, Ron and all. About to grab some lemonade. Just finished up a soothing mow. Isn't it the best? A nice mow for, to end the day. It's pretty, pretty cool. Always, always, uh, always fun to do that. All right, so guys, before we get too much further on, I want to do the giveaway now because I don't know how much longer my, my, um, my, hotspot will hold out. So just in case it doesn't cut off, and I don't get to get this, get the giveaway done. Let's do that now. And I'll continue answering your questions. So if you have questions, keep dropping them in the chat. I'm going to, as soon as we're done with the giveaway, I will, I will get back to you guys and go back to answering questions, but I want to get the giveaway done because I don't want, um, you know, you guys to like send me hate mail saying, Hey man, we showed up and we didn't get the stuff, man. What's up? You know, that's, that's how you guys would sound like if you guys were mad at me. All right, so the way we're doing this, again, as you guys know, the, all you had to do to enter to be in the giveaway was to, to comment in the live stream, in last week's live stream, with the fertilizer you're using. So um, I've given you guys ample time, so now we're gonna switch over and we're gonna go to the comment picker tool. So let me show you guys that, so we're seeing it live. This is the URL for last week's live stream. I can uh, show you that, just show you guys there's no funny business going on here. Um, so you can see here, Race for a of, revolution of, of, of course wheels. you would get a commercial right now, right? Um, but it's this one. Um, let me see. Stop weeds without chemicals. I think this is the live stream. Actually, am I, am I right? Let me make sure, make sure I'm, I'm not, I'm not telling you guys wrong here. Make sure I got the right, um, the right one. Nope. Yep. So it's, it's actually this guy. So it's a good thing I checked it. So it is, um, 
this guy. So good thing I, I checked. Uh, this is uh, the live stream from last week on Summer Lawn Weeks. You see I'm playing it now, so I'll stop that. So if you guys have not yet commented down here, you got like two seconds to do it because I'm about to go pull um, the viewers or pull the people that are in there. So I'm pasting that in, you guys saw that. That is the uh, URL for last week's live stream. And now we are going to let me get uh, left tool off the screen here for a second. And now we're gonna fetch and we'll see what comes back. So we have got 57 comments, 57 comments guys. So 57 people are up and entered to win. Okay, so the first thing we are giving away tonight is the Stripe Action Sticker, the first. One of the OGs guys, the Ron Henry Stripe Action Sticker works great guys on spreaders, also on mowers. It's nice vinyl, love this. So the first winner of that, let's go with this one first. We're gonna see, we're gonna pick a winner. And the winner of the Stripe Action Sticker, and here you have to be present to win. So once I, I start announcing these, I'm gonna check and see if you're in there. I'm gonna, you have to be, you have to say, yeah, I'm here. So I know, I, I know you're here. So the winner for the Stripe Action Sticker is LG, look at that, see? You say you, say you never win and you want something. You were the first one, see? You got the sticker. So LG, you are the winner. He's gonna be cussing me out being like, I didn't want the sticker, I want the hat. <laughs> That's gonna be the next. I, I can already see. I haven't even seen the comment section, but I know that's gonna that's gonna happen next. So I'm gonna put LG in here as the winner. LG, I think I already have your address, so you don't need to send it to me. And I know you're here. Um, so that one is taken care of. So the winner of the strap action sticker is LG. All right. Next up is your choice of two of the um, Ron Henry stickers. One of one of the two Ron Henry stickers, um, both um, supplied to us by graciously by Josh Abib. You have. This guy, which is the, actually I'll turn this off for a second so you guys can actually see. You've got the standard white um, Ron Henry's um, live stream sticker, and then you've got the psychedelic um, bling version of the sticker. Also works great on mowers and um, spreaders. So we'll go back to here and we'll close that out. The winner of that is Lamont Smith. Lamont, are you present? Lamont, please come to the DJ booth. If you don't mind, come up. Let me know if you're in the chat. I'm gonna scroll down here and see if you are here. Lamont, if you are here, I'm gonna have you here in here as a placeholder for now. Lamont Smith as the winner of one of these. You have to let me know which one you want and then I'll put my email address up here in a second to know, um, send me your mailing address so I know where to send it. So those two are spoken for. And no, LG, you don't really sound like that, but I just, I gotta play it up, man. I gotta give you a hard time. You know, here's the thing. You know what, for as hard times as you give everybody, you're really sensitive, you know, you're kind of a sensitive guy. You, re you really are. So, you know, I'm just, I'm just giving you a hard time, man. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm just messing with you. Do not take what I'm saying seriously. Please don't. All right, next up is, we haven't seen if Lamont is here as yet. I haven't seen him, so we may have to redo that one, but we'll keep going. Okay, so next up, guys, boys and girls, we are gonna be giving away the hand weeding tool. Now, I know a lot of you guys say, you know, why is Ron giving me essentially something that's gonna equate to more work? But every serious lawn care person needs one of these. If you don't have one, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hook you up, all right? So, let us see who the winner of that one is. All right, so go back here. Um, we'll pick a winner. So we're still down to 55, because once you win, you're automatically removed from the pool. So, the winner is... Super TA329. Super TA, are you in the chat? Super TA, please come to the DJ booth uh, to claim your prize. Let me know if you're here. I think I saw you hitting her earlier. So if you can, um, you know, just this time and say, yeah, I'm here. And let me list you in here as well. So Super TA, you got the weeding tool. Super TA329. All right. At any rate, I don't know how to get a hold of you because I know, I mean, I know you've got your Instagram and everything else. All right. Finally, for the grand prize. The Desert Tan, limited edition, one of two in existence, Ron Henry hat. Let's go back here, go back to the chat. The winner of the hat is Princess Cut Lawn Care. Now I really hope George is in this live stream because he's gonna be mad if he doesn't win it. <laughs> Princess like Cut Lawn Care, George, are you present? Are you present, George? Please come to the DJ booth. So I'll put you, I'll put you in here and let me see, Princess. Uh, I'll, I'll put you down here, Princess Cut Lawn Care. Um, I haven't seen him tonight. Normally he would have chimed in if he, if he was here. So we might be redoing that one because you got to be present to win. You got to be present to win. Is Lamont here? I haven't seen Lamont. So I've seen LG and I've seen Super TA. 
Um, but I have not seen George's yet. So we're gonna give it a little bit of time and we'll see if he'll pop back in. That's gonna give me some time to go back through and get to some more um, questions. So let's go back up here and um, let's see uh, uh, what we got going on here. Uh, Clayton is saying, hey, Ron, I just picked up the pest control and what um, I was just speaking to Mosquito Joe about fogging the lawn and woods. Very timely introduction, looking forward to the video. Yeah, man, I'm working on it right now. I wanna make it nice and good and as awesome as I possibly can. So my goal is early next week. We'll see if that happens. I need to have internet to be able to upload it, obviously, but I'm gonna be filming it this weekend. But yeah, what he's referring to, guys, I don't know what Clayton is talking about, is a product we just recently released on the live stream. <laughs> um, is the, is the uh, Miramichi Green Pest Control. Uh, this is um, a, a non-toxic organic uh, pest control that uh, Miramichi Green made available to us and now is available on the golf course lawn store. So I'll show you guys that where you can pick it up in case you are interested. It is available right here, right next to uh, the golf course lawn carbon kit. You saw I lost all my hats and everything, everything fell over. So I have to fix it, clean that up when I get done. Show's gotta go on. All right. So our next question, let me scroll down here and see if if, um, if the guys have popped in. I haven't seen, I haven't seen um, uh, Lamont as yet, and I haven't seen Princess. We might be redoing that hat, guys. It might happen. You got to be present to him win. That's one of the rules. You got to be here to win. Okay, um, coming back up on uh, as far as our as far as our questions go. Let's see what we. Uh, what we got here is that uh, one good thing about Ron's uh, live streams is you missed the first two hours, you still got a good one to two hours left. Uh, yeah, you might, assuming my uh, my internet my internet holds out. Pick up my uh, my Acu products. See if that stays up there. Um, I have to rebuild my hats when I get done, but oh well. Um, but yeah, yeah, we'll keep going as long as the internet holds out and uh, and whatnot. But I want to make sure you guys got. Got uh, got your your goodies. So guys, um, as far as people, the winners. If you if you have not as yet, please send me an email here, Ron at golfcourselon.com. So LG, I already have your address. I don't need yours. Um, Lamont, if you're here, you need to send me your email address um, to get your sticker. Super TA, um, same thing. Send me your email. I think I have yours as well. But if not, send me an email. I'm at Ron at golfcourselon.com. And then Princess Cut Lawn Care, George, got to be here, man. You're gonna be really mad um, if you don't win this. But um, got to be present to win. All right, um, let's see um, other other uh, other questions we got here, and then um, Will Dog uh, says, um, hey, "Hi Ron, what's the efficiency time of sulfentrazone as a pre-emergent? I get spurge pressure every midsummer, and think about doing a full lawn treatment instead of spot treatment for spurs and nuts edge. I'm not sure on that one, man. I'd have to check the label on you to, to be able to get an answer for you on that one. Not sure." Not sure on that one, Will Dog. Um, if you want, um, I'll take that one as under a, as a question for next week. The label is going to be the best result, but I can um, I'll take a look because that's a someone else may have that um, that uh, that question. I'll say so. So venture zone effectiveness uh, period uh, period. All right, I will take that one under consideration and uh, and get an answer for you um, sometime uh, and hopefully next week. Okay, I'm looking for other questions. Let's scroll down here again and see if anybody has popped in. Um, okay, the Princess Cut Lawn Care. So George, if you are here, um, you're, um, you won the hat. Um, of course, of course, you don't want it, but I mean, but you you were the winner of the uh, of the limited edition Ron Henry hat. And if you can send me an email here with your mailing address, I don't think I have your address, unfortunately. So Ron at GolfForceLawn.com, send me an email here, and I will get that to you. I don't see um, so I got everyone. So everyone else has spoken for except for Lamont Smith. Other than Lamont Smith, so we might be redoing Lamont here in a section second, guys. We'll give it. We we'll give them like another two minutes, and then we'll come down again, and we'll uh, we'll do another. Another drawing for the uh, for the sticker. All right, uh, so we have G Free um, uh, here. He's chiming in. He says, "Hey, I use Spectricide Weed and Grab and Crabgrass Killer on some areas of the lawn and spurs, and it got rid of it. I was surprised. Yeah, man, it's good stuff, dude. I mean, seriously. I mean, I know people knock it because it's like cheap and it's like Home Depot stuff, but really, uh, if you look at what's in it, yes, the 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 amount of the active ingredients are lower than if you mix it yourself." But it's a good concoction that works well and you know well applied properly. 
um, it can be very, very effective. Like just like what you're saying, G Free. So yeah, I'm not I'm not surprised that you got uh, a good result, a good result with it. So um, so yeah, so no uh, no issues. Um, let's see, let's see what else we got here. Um, oh yeah, so oh, okay, so uh, Walter says, oh, the Ron you missed a link for Celsius is for certainty are the same. Uh, no, they're not. Um, actually, let me get you another one. I've got, I think that's, I think that's, uh, I sent you the wrong, obviously the wrong link. So let me get you one for Celsius. Sorry about that. Um, make sure that this one is correct. Uh, da, da, da. Um, yeah, well, here's the thing. If you, it, all you can do is if you click, if you clicked on that certainty link, just search for Celsius on do my own and I also get credit for it either way. So that will work fine too. Just, um, just, just do that. So I, I don't, I'm surprised. I thought, I thought I had, I'm pretty almost positive I had a Celsius link, but I guess the one that I have, I, um, I put it in, in correctly. Um, but yeah, just, just use that link, go to do my own, just search for Celsius, uh, um, Search for cell. Actually, you know what? You know, I, I know what it is. Yeah, because Celsius is only on Amazon. That's what. That's what the problem is. All right. So yeah, let me let me correct that for you right now. I'll give that. I'll give you a correct link. Give me like two seconds. Two seconds to um to uh to to get that for you. Thanks for letting me know, Walter. I will fix it after the show is over. And so for anyone that was looking for Celsius, that and I sent you links earlier use uh, this one. This one will work. <laughs> uh, so at Walter uh, there, and then uh, Celsius uh, herbicide. Um, here you go. That that will work uh, for, for you guys. All right. So sorry about that, but thanks for letting me know. And I fix it, and I'm also fixing it in my notes, so it won't be a problem in the future. So thank you so much. All right. So next question we have here is um, from Luis uh, Rodriguez. A great question. He says, is, um, is urea nitrogen quick release? Yes. Yes, I mean, here's the thing. There's different types of urea, but straight urea is, um, is, is quick release. Yeah, so there's different types. So if you're talking about um, urea that has a 4600 formulation, Luis, that is going to be quick release. That's going to be the stuff you're going to want to, when you put it down, you're going to want to water it in immediately after application to prevent burning your lawn. Um, but as far, but there are other types of urea. Like for example, there is um, the methylene urea that Lebanon Turf uses in their Mesa. Um, their Mesa, their, their, their brand of nitrogen, their brand of, sl of slow release nitrogen called, meth called methylene urea. Like that is a slower release um, nitrogen. So, just because it has urea in the name doesn't make it necessarily quick release. But if you're talking about just straight urea, and again, you'll know it because the formulation will be like a 4600. That is quick release nitrogen. And that's the kind of stuff you have to be very careful when you apply it. You put it down and you need to water it in like right after application. But not every not every nitrogen with urea in the name is quick release. Does that make sense? So, uh, so hopefully uh, that helps. All right, guys, I don't see Lamont, unless I, unless I missed him. Did I see anyone else see Lamont chime in? I don't see him. All right, so we're going to redo. Lamont was the winner for the um, either one of the, uh, the, van, the, the live stream sticker. So either this guy or this guy. So let's redo the drawing for that. So let's go back to our comment picker and... We'll switch over to here. So Princess Cut, so this is you, uh, George. You won the hat. Congratulations. Send me an uh, email or text or whatever with your address, and I'll get it out to you. And now we're redoing it for the Stripe Action Sticker, each one of these guys. You get a choice of one of the two, and the winner for that is Dwizzle. Is Dwizzle in the house? Dwizzle, please come to the DJ booth. Please bring all final purchases to the DJ booth. Come on up here. And if you can, let me know, and you let me know which one of these you want, because I think I saw you in here, and we will get one mailed out to you. So our winner for the live stream only sticker is Dwizzle. And I'll leave Lamont's name here in case he toms in later. I'll just send him one anyway. But Dwizzle, if you're here, I think you are, uh, let me know. And send me your uh, email, an email with your mailing address here to ron at golfcourselawn.com, and I will get the sticker out on its way to you. Thank you so much. All right, so let's go back up here. The hardest, that's the hardest part, guys. Whenever I scroll down and like see what the latest, the last chat comments are, I have to go back up and find where I was because I don't want to leave anything out. 
All right, so Andy Whitley says, I got my Milo's lemonade. I'm ready for our weekly Bermuda grass uh, lemonade season. So guys, if you guys enjoyed the, enjoying the live stream so far, if it's your first time here, hopefully I've done enough to earn your trust and to at least earn a like. Um, so while I take a sip of my lemonade, as Andy has uh, reminded me, if you guys wouldn't mind touching that like button ever so gently, it's free for you guys to do. Easy way to support the channel, uh, sends good vibes to the algorithm and, get, and brings more people into the craziness that is the Ron Henry Friday night week, weekly lawn care Q&A. Well, I'll take a sip of my lemonade. So I'd appreciate it if you guys would do that. Uh, the best. All right. So the real Canuck says, Ron, I hate concrete. Just saying, new bed knife coming. You know what? I've been there. I've been there. If you want a laugh, if you want, I mean, not unless really a laugh, but if you want, if you want to see that I also have felt your pain, I've been where you are. Earlier this season, I um I did about nine hundred dollars worth of damage to my mower um, by hitting it with concrete. So I mowed. I'm gonna send you two links here so you, for your for your viewing pleasure. Um, uh, the real Canuck. Uh, the first one is where I broke my mower. So at uh, the real Canuck, this is me breaking mower. And then the follow-up video where you could actually see the recovery, how I bounced back from it, um, you know, how I, how I recovered from it after the nice folks at Jerry Pate fixed me up with a repair. Um, you can see the repair here. So if you're interested in seeing both of those, uh, what concrete can do to a real mower, you already know, but for anyone else that's interested in having a good laugh at my expense, uh, feel free to check out both those videos since it talks about what I did and how I got around and fixed it. So. Hopefully you guys um, enjoyed that. All right, um, let's see uh, what else we got here. Todd um, Wariznik is in the house. He says, hey Ron, at work here, go Bills and NY Lawn. Uh, my question is, should I, if I'm overseeding, top dress twice? Um, once with sand, then throw down seed and cover with compost and peat. Thoughts, thanks. Uh, no, no I, no, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't. Um, I wouldn't do that. If you're if you're going to overseed, um, I don't know that I wouldn't go 100% sand. I just really wouldn't. I mean, if you, you if you if you want to, you can. But I mean, I would um, I would try and get some organic material in there in the in the, with the mix, um, and then put your seed down on top of it. So do your top dressing job. Put the seed down, then just rake it in, and then if you want to put some peat moss down on top of that. Um, then, uh, then go for it. I mean, if you really want to, if you have the time, I guess you can top dress with sand and then do a light layer of topsoil and then put the, put the seed down. I mean, you, you can do it. It's not going to hurt anything, but it's just a whole lot of work, you know? Um, so I would, I would just like kind of stack my top dressing job to where I also put like some, I do like a 70, 30 mix. I do a blend. So you're setting up, you know, you're getting the leveling, but you're also creating, putting some organic material in there to where when you put your seed down, you're going to get, um, you know, good germination. All right, question about mowers. James Hall says, is a California trimmer a good real mower? Uh, it is if you can get one in, um, for a decent price in your area, and most importantly, if you can get it fixed when it breaks. So if you can find someone in your area, before you before you buy a California trimmer, make sure there's someone in your area that can, that can work on them, you can get parts for them. Um, if that's the case and you like that particular mower, you know, you've, you've tried it out, you just like the way it works and you want to go with that one, then go ahead, by all means. Um, I personally... I'm not a fan of them because I don't, I don't like the way the drive system works. Again, I'm not trying to throw shade, throw shade at California trimmers. I mean, there's people that use them, get awesome results with their lawns. So I'm not saying you can't get a good result with it. I am just not a fan of the way the drive system works on the mower. Um, if I had a choice between a California trimmer and another mower that's in that same price range, I would lean more towards like a true cut. That is what I would use um, instead of a California trimmer. Um, you know, given that they're around, like similar as far as pricing goes. So I like the dry system of a true cut a lot more. But I mean, is it a good mower? Yeah, you can get a great result with it. Um, as you can with pretty much any real mower, if it's, if they're sharp and set up properly. The thing you want to keep in mind, James, the only consideration I would make is whenever something breaks um, is when you'd want to go through and uh, and make sure that you've, um, you know, you've considered that because you don't want to have to Probably mail ordering parts or have to ship them more out of state or just, you know, just have it being a pain to get it worked on. That's just not going to be any fun. All right. Dwizzle, the winner of the sticker, uh, along with Lamont, if assuming Lamont's here, he says, I aerated and top dressed last weekend. Would you please give your definition of top dressing versus leveling? Other than adding organic material to the lawn, are there benefits to top dressing? Okay. Um, that's a good question. So, in the way I define it, all right, and some people may disagree with me, the way I define it is, all top dressing, or sorry, all leveling involves top dressing, 
not all top dressing is leveling. Does it make sense? So if you go through and you just top dress your lawn with like, um, like say just you just use topsoil or compost, right? You are top dressing your lawn. You're putting like you're putting a layer of soil over the lawn. But as far as it being the best medium for leveling, not really, not really so, right? I mean, the thing is, and you can also you can also go very super light. Like I mean, leveling also implies that you're putting down enough material that you're going to be filling in light, um, like lightly uneven spots in the lawn. If you go down, you just put down a light you know, a light layer of carbonized peanut or light layer of some of topsoil, you might put it down and it's really light to where you can, you can barely even see what you did. That's technically top dressing, but it's not leveling because you didn't put down enough material to, you know, smooth out uneven spots of the lawn. So the way I would say that one, one, one encompasses the other, but not the other way around. So pretty much all leveling, um, or most our leveling jobs in, in encompass or require some kind of top dressing, but not all top dressing work that you do necessarily results in a level lawn. So hopefully that helps. Um, and you said, are there other other organic are there other benefits um, to um, to top dressing other than organic um, um, adding organic matter? Yes, uh, drainage for one. Like for me, like my back lawn used to flood every time it rained. Like literally every time it rained, I used to have like a pool back there. Um, and the, after the first time the lawn was top dressed, it was heavily aerated and then top dressed, the ability of the of the lawn, of the soil to pull moisture away from the surface um, went up a ton um, after top dressing. So, you know, if you have drainage issues, again, and again, assuming the water has somewhere to go, if you got like a big bowl in your lawn, top dressing isn't going to fix that. But if your lawn has the ability to drain, but the water just tends to stay on the lawn longer than you would like, top dressing is something that will help with that. So, um, so yeah, there's lots of benefits to it. Um, as organic material, helps with drainage, looks cool. So three reasons to uh, to do it once you're once you're done. So hopefully that helps Dwizzle. And uh, be sure if you don't if you don't mind, send me an email with your um, your mailing address so I can get um, your choice of sticker. You have to choose one or the other. You don't get both of them. You get to choose either this one or this one as your sticker as your prize um, for the the giveaway tonight. So just make sure you shoot me an email with your email address and I will get that out to you. Ron at golfcourselawn. Dot com. All right. Stan G's in the house says, hey, Ron, sorry I'm late, but I'm here, but I appreciate you, sir. You're here. So that's all that really counts, right? Can't, can, uh, can't hurt. All right. So Dwayne Hopkins has a great question. This is a really good one. I like this. He says, hey, hey um, Ron, are liquid fertilizers safe in really hot temps or should you avoid preventing uh, to prevent burn in? Is it a waste uh, to water in versus leaving on grass blades? So I think the, the best way to answer that question, Dwayne, is... It depends, right? So there are some liquid fertilizers that are designed to be watered in after application. There are some that you, that you spray them on the lawn and they're designed to be watered in. You're not supposed to leave them on the grass blades because they can, as you, you pointed out, can cause burning um, and they're just, designed to be, they're just designed to be watered in. They're not designed for foliar uptake, right? Or well, they're not optimized for foliar uptake, I should say. That's probably a better way of saying it. Um, but then you have something like um, Turfplex, there's nothing else to knock off. I already knocked everything off, so I can take it off and down, up and down now. You have something like Turfplex, which is designed to be um, sprayed. It is it is foliar absorbed, and you don't need to water it in. Like I've never watered this in on my lawn, um, and it doesn't. I've not had any issues with burning burning or anything like that. Now here's the thing. I apply this at low rates, so they list three rates on the bottle. They list list a. Um, a uh, six ounce per thousand rate, a seven and a half ounce per thousand rate, and then a really super high rate of like 15 ounces per thousand. I've never um, applied it at the super heavy rate, 15 ounces per thousand rate. That might result in some in some burning or some damage at at um at uh, at that high concentration. I've never actually tested it because honestly, at six ounces per thousand, you get a really good result. So I don't really see any need to one. Um, you know, throw that much nitrogen at the lawn, but then also two, like effectively waste the product, right? Because if you get a really good result with six ounces per thousand, just keep doing that. There's no reason to go um, crazy heavy as far as your application rates if like a lower rate is producing the desired result. But as far as it, as far as it, the ability of it to burn, like a good example, if you if you were to spray urea, straight urea, and you don't water it in like right away, that absolutely is going to burn your lawn. Even, you know, even when it's not hot, um, it can burn your lawn. So it, the the best answer to your question is it depends. It depends on what kind of fertilizer you're dealing with. Turfplex is one that, when applied at low rates, doesn't burn. Um, straight urea will burn uh, if you don't water it in right away. And there's other ones like that are in between, like say Turfplex and straight urea, that um, that depending on the label, they'll say whether you need to water it in or not. So um, the best answer for you, unfortunately, is you have to read the label and and see what they what they recommend. 
All right, um, Eli Q says, um, does Multipurpose Plus work like Hydratane? Am I better off just using this product since it contains sea kelp? Um, it does not, I mean, it does have some of the benefits, but it does not strictly contain Hydratane from what I from what I understand. I don't believe, in other words, it is, and if it does, it, it's not in the concentrations that you would get from using like the Hydratane product in of itself. So um, if you don't want to go through using Hydratane, does the Multipurpose Plus have some benefits? Yes, absolutely. Is it a good, is it a good product? Uh, yes. Um, but I mean, is it, is it, um, is it a substitute strictly for hydrotain? Uh, no, because you also remember hydrotain is going to work for like three months, for like 90 days. Uh, the multipurpose plus is not going to last that long. So what you're talking about, I think I've got it. I think we carry that on the, um, on the golf course lawn store. Yep. Which car we're talking about is, uh, this guy right here. Um, yeah. So multipurpose plus 402 with biostimulants. So yeah, so this has like their C extra in it, I believe. Um, sea kelp and some cytogrow. So yes, it's made by the makers of uh, of it. And um, but yeah, as far as it being a substitute for hydrotane, not so much. But um, but it's an excellent product. If you're looking for something that's a that's like a, a, a micronutrient, um, has um, again, like you said, some sea kelp in it. So it's going to be it's going to be beneficial to both um, feeding the lawn, the, the the turf, and the soil. It's a great product. It's a great option. Um, but if it were me, I would probably do hydrotane and turfplex. Um, than that. But if you only do one, that's a good, that's a good option. That's a good, a good substitute um, as well too. So hopefully that helps us, uh, uh, Eli Q. All right. Skinny Geek says, uh, has Caravan cheese skyrocketed in price? I think in one of your videos, it mentioned it being $70, but my local site one has it for 131. Yeah. Um, that's, that seems, that's a little pricey. That seems a little pricey to me, man. That sounds a little bit rich for, um, for Caravan G. I mean, because site one, the site one has been kind of bad about that here lately on some of like, especially like the, the Carbon Pro G as well. They've been jacking up the prices on that too. Uh, at least my local one hasn't been too bad about it, but some other ones have been doing it. Um, but yeah, I'm looking here online. Yeah, even on Amazon, um, it's uh, 137. So maybe maybe the price has gone up since when I, I was using it a couple years ago. I mean, I've been talking about it a lot um, in the last, last couple of years. So maybe it's one of those things where they're raising the price, you know, to keep up with demand. But uh, but yeah, it looks like Amazon has it for that same price around $130 something dollars. So maybe uh, they're inflating the price a bit, man. Sorry, sorry about that, um, um, Skinny Geek 10. But it's um, it's a thing. I don't know. Do what? What you prefer, Skinny Geek 1010 or Skinny Geek 10? Because like what you have on on the tail end is like 10 in binary. So I'm just I'm I'm just using 10. It's easier than saying 1010. I'll just keep calling you that until you tell me not to. All right. Um, let's see, Mike Harmold, I get this question every week. He says, um, any good tips for getting rid of moles? I have one ear they are just destroying. Um, I may just have to turn it into a mulch bed. So a couple of things. You can you can start um, working to eliminate their food source. If you've got grubs in your lawn, work on eliminating grubs. That's one, that's like one thing you can do. But then also there is a mole poison, a mole bait. I think it's called Talprid. Um the Talpri that works that works well against moles too. Um, so I can find you a link for it here. Mole poison, um, yeah, mole poison worms or Tomcat. That's well, yeah. So I think Talpri is um, makes one too. But this is one that's very, very, very well received. Um, you can get it on Amazon. I'll send you a link here as well because I've, I've given this to people in the past and they've written back to me and said, yeah, we got really good results with it. So um, let me send that to you here, Mike at Mike um, Harbold Harbold. So that, so you can, a multi-pronged approach is really the best way. Get rid of grubs or reduce the amount, the grub population in your lawn, because that's going to, that's like one of the food sources, like, like moles don't only eat grubs, but it's one of the things they do eat. So getting, so getting rid of that will help, but then also using, um, a poison, a, a bait, like I just linked to you there in the chat, um, that will, um, that will take care of it. So give that a, give that a shot and, uh, hopefully that helps. Sorry you're dealing with that, man. Don't give up yet. Don't turn into a mulch bed yet. Keep, keep fighting for a little bit longer uh, before you give up, before you give up the fight. <laughs> and Alex B says, yeah, no reason not to get over a hundred. Likes for Ron, free and quick, easy to do. Ron acts for it ever so gently, but it holds up to a good smash. Thanks so much, Alex. I really appreciate that. All right, let's see um, what else we got going on here as far as questions. All right. Yeah, Scott, yeah, as far as good points on weight versus volume. Thanks, Ron. Yeah. Yeah, man, because it, it is a fair point because they might be right. This 25 tons might be right by weight, depending on what they're what they're putting down. But when I say volume, like a cubic yard per thousand square feet is about the right number. Is about the right number. Um, but um, but yeah. Let's see what else we um see what else we uh 
we have here as far as questions, as far as questions go. Um, yeah, so yeah, Alex B said, yeah, because yeah, um, regionally site one stores can increase uh, prices over time. Um, but yeah, but yeah, exactly. I mean, and it's the thing too, it's, it's their right to raise prices, right? If the demand goes up, they can raise, um, they can raise prices in their lawn. So nothing really to, uh, you know, that's just, that's just part of, that's just, this is the par for the course, unfortunately, especially as, um, as, 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 especially as the demand goes up. All right. Um, Travis, um, Smith, uh, Smith, uh, Travis Smith, has a question about aerating when you have drip installed. Any suggestions for aerating when you have a drip system, um, installed? Um, I guess as far as a drip system, I mean, are you talking about like, I guess some, it's the type of irrigation that you have in the lawn. Um, if you have a way, if at any rate, you have to figure out some way to mark it or to, um, to, uh, to mark the areas where it is. I, I have to send me a picture of what you're talking about, Travis. Um, because a lot of, when I'm thinking about drip systems, I think about something that's actually above, above ground, not something that's really underground. Um, but, uh, send me an email here if you don't mind, run at golfcourselawn.com with like a picture of it. And then I can see if I can give you an answer. I mean, the long short of it is you got to avoid, um, you're going to, you're going to want to avoid damaging, um, you're going to want to avoid damaging the system. So if you can't aerate the lawn without damaging the, pl the plumbing or whatever feeds the system, then just, just don't do it. But if you, if you can mark where all the pipes, all the feeder pipes are, all those kinds of things are, then do that and you're, and you're good to go. Hopefully that helps. Uh, but yeah, send me a picture of it and I can see if we can come up with, um, with other options, um, as well. All right. Um, yeah. And then uh, two shots of vodka talks about crabgrass killing is uh, is taking taking your lunch money. It's time to fight back. Well, I gave you some options there. Two shots of vodka. Hopefully um, those will work well. And I'm trying to see what other uh, questions uh, we got here. Great. So Winchard has a question about pre-emergent. Uh, I think I already answered this one, but I'll, I'll talk about it again anyway. Um, he says, hey, Ron, what pre-emergent will we use this fall? Um, I'm going to try out one called Coastal. So it's it is prodiamine. Prodiamine is a pre-emergent, and there's two other ingredients in it that are um, post-emergent herbicides to try and knock out any POA that's germinated. So I'm gonna give that a shot this fall on my lawn. Um, that's an option if you've if not if you've not gone over your prodiamine allocation uh, allotment for the year. If not, you can go with something like Dimension. You know, like um, that that's an option. Or if you really got you got you know have extra coin to spend. Uh, Spectacle Flow is a is an excellent excellent pre-emergent, but it's just it's it's pricey. That's the um, that's the big that's the big thing with it. All right, and then Alex B. Yeah, it's a good point, Alex. You're talking about as far as spectricide. Yeah, even for coolsies and grasses, most spectricide her liquid herbicides are safe, even though they offer a few varieties. And that's a good point. Like the one I always talk about is the orange label. So what I'm referring to is this guy here. Um, this is primarily this is um, you know primarily for your warm season grass, but if you scroll up and you go back to their um, weed lawn weed killers, they have a bunch of different options for different grass types. They got some for like centipede, they got for St. Augustine, they got some for cool season grass. So I always talk about the orange label because this is what I mean. I'm in Georgia and I mainly talk about warm season grass, but they do. There are options for cool season grass as well from Spectricide. And then um, if none of those are a fit, you can always just use something like Tenacity and Speed Zone. Like those two, that combination. I think George did a video on that. Um, on a combination that works really well against most cool season weeds, like Tenacity mixed with some Speed Zone will work well. So if you need like a, uh, like a very potent combo, check out his video on that topic. All right, Michael Chung is in the house. He has a question about leveling his lawn in Houston, Texas. He says, I'm in Houston, Texas, and I want to level my Bermuda lawn. Forecast has sunny days with temperatures up to the mid 90s with limited rain. Would it be safe to level the lawn considering the heat? Uh, yeah, yeah, no problem, no worries whatsoever. Um, it's just gonna grow through really quickly. So um, so yeah, I mean, if you have irrigation, that's gonna be helpful because the grass will, you'll be able to put some water on it and help it bounce back a bit sooner. But um, but yeah, as long as you have a way to water the lawn, get some irrigation on the lawn, Michael, um, it's gonna grow through really, really quickly with the heat as, you know, with, with, with that type of temperature. Um, I leveled my lawn earlier this season. I did it like in late April, early May, mainly because I wanted to have some content out for you guys that are, good, that are gonna be doing it this season to look at. So if you're looking for a video on top dressing, like I've done one here, that um, you that like goes into excruciating detail on top dressing, like talks about aerating and um, I mean, you, you're probably not gonna be overseeding, we talking about aerating, the carbon of soil amendments, the fertilization, like everything that you need to do as by the way, I like to top dress. Um, check out this video and I'll just link it in the chat here for you at Michael Chung, um, watch that. 
And uh, that should take care of you, man. That should uh, that should uh, be everything that you'll need to uh, to get a good result. And yes, uh, given this time of year, you absolutely can get it done. I'd get it done sooner than later because, you know, we're into mid to late July now. So, um, you know, you want to give yourself enough time for the lawn to uh, to bounce back. Um, Angela's in the house. She says, hey, Ron, just checking in. This is, I, uh, looks like I missed quite a bit of your live stream. I've been watching the Olympics. This topic I need info on. I will have to watch from the beginning. I'm not sure which time. Oh, okay. Yeah. As far as live, as far as live, um, lawn leveling. Yeah. There's tons of questions on that in this live stream, Angela. If you have a uh, question in particular, drop it in the chat and I'll answer it. But I mean, there's been lots of questions. Uh, I think most questions around that most people would have around leveling have been answered in this live stream. So feel free to rewatch the entire thing and you should be able to find what you need um, in there. Um, but yeah, appreciate it. I mean, good reason to, to miss too is watching the Olympics is always cool, right? Uh, it's only once every four years. So I get why you'd want to be watching that. And yeah, Heartfelt Fashion says, yes, yeah, the vanity strip, the entire lawn grows green uh, and high, except the vanity strip, which is about 500 square feet. So yeah, do what I was check I was talking about Heartfelt Fashion. Um, let's get a screwdriver, do the screwdriver test, make sure that that area doesn't have some kind of rocks or some other trash underneath there. Um, and make sure that that is, that's cleaned up. Um, and then, and, you know, get, dig those out. And if you can do that, the, the vanity strip should do well to also, if you're watering, make sure the vanity strip's getting some water too. Cause that's the only, that's the other thing I was thinking about as I was answering other questions. I was still thinking about what you were saying. Like if the vanity strip's not getting any water and the rest of the lawn is getting water, that could cause it to not do well as well too. So, um, so just keep, you know, keep that as another, as another option as, uh, well, too. All right, Dalvin Larry's checking in. He says, "Hey, Ron, just check, just checking in to to drop a like on the uh, the on the like button, to touch the like button on my flight back from Hawaii. Airplane Wi-Fi grass hasn't been touched in a week. Oh boy, I, I can see the email because I know because Dalvin, whenever you email me, it's always I was always very passionate. Your man, I can tell, is very passionate about your grass. Um, and in a week, it's going to be tall. When you mow it, it's going to turn brown. It's okay. It's going to bounce back. So I'm just I'm just kind of heading off what I, I think is probably coming." But just want to let you know that uh, that's it. yeah, it's going to be longer when you get back, unless you raise your head a cut. So uh, just know it's going to be a little. It's going to take a little while to, to get it back in top form. But you're 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 pretty dedicated. You'll get it back in. Uh, you'll get it back going um, as soon as uh, as soon as you get back in town. All right. Let me see what other questions we got here. Uh, we've got um, uh, Doug M. He says. He says, in, if, in your review of it, let us know if that Miramichi Pest Control mixes well with other FERT um, PGR. I can tell you that it does mix. So here's the thing. So it's, it's a great question. So, and I did ask Miramichi Green about this. You can mix it with like any of these things. So release zero neutral kelp and biospectrum. I, I specifically asked them that. I said, yeah, it, you can mix it with that. Here's the challenge, right? The application rate for the pest control, like eight ounces of the pest control, so eight ounces goes into one gallon, and that one gallon of pest control and water mix will cover up to 7,500 square feet if you use like a mister, like the one I linked in the chat earlier, um, or, 30, or up to 3,000 square feet, 1,500 to 3,000 square feet if you put it through a backpack sprayer. If you're spraying things like PGR or liquid fertilizer like Turfplex, like the application rates that I always recommend, that I recommend, assume you're putting down one gallon over a thousand square feet. So you got one product that can, that one gallon goes, covers 7,500 7, square feet, and you got another set of products where one gallon covers 1,000 square feet. So even if you could mix them, I wouldn't necessarily, because um, one, you know, you, you really get your best mileage out of the pest control if you use it with a, you put it through a mister, through a fogging system. Uh, missing system of some sort, because then, you know, spraying the side of your house, spraying the lawn furniture, spraying the patio, spraying around windowsills, all this kind of stuff. It's really super easy to do using um, a mister. Um, whereas for fertilizer, that's not necessarily the best um, medium for, for, for doing that. So yes, even if you, you, even if you, though you can mix them, I wouldn't because the application rates are so dissimilar that you're going to be end up you're going to end up either you end up wasting this product is what you're going to end up doing you're going to be end up putting it down heavier than you really need to and as far as what I recommend for applying the uh, pest control um, this is the um, the mister the one that I'm trying out the fogger that I'm trying out and it's been working pretty well for me so give give that a go if you guys are in the market for um, you know a tool to use that's going to work really well with the pest control. All right, got a super sticker from Ben Raham. I've missed that. Thank you so much, um, Ben. I really appreciate you. He says, Hippo's character head pops out of the water surrounded by his Hippo squad. I appreciate the support, man. Thank you for supporting 
uh, the channel. All right, I'm scrolling down and seeing what other uh, last questions we uh, what ask for questions we got here. Actually, we got a few more. So Keys Kennard has a questions about a John Deere. He says, I have a brand newest John Deere uh, 2653B delivered this week. Been real mowing a small portion of the lawn all last season, um, but uh, rotary at two inches for the other uh, 20,000 square feet. Is it too late in the season to scalp to half an inch? No, not really. Mm -mm. No, you, you could scalp to half an inch if you want for the area of the lawn that you plan to maintain. Um, keys, here's the thing I would say. If you scalp the lawn, know that um, scalping is pretty hard on, on real mowers. So, you know, if you just got it and it, you haven't sharpened it as yet, I would do the scalping first and then take it and, you know, take it out and get it freshened up and then start using it for your, um, for your mowing, if that makes sense. So, um, so yeah, just, yeah, I, I would do that. I, that. That's the only thing I'd say. It's not too late in the season to do it, but it is going to be pretty hard on your system, on your, on your mower, especially if you're going from two inches to half an inch. That's uh, that's quite a change. So, um, so hopefully that helps. Congrats on the mower. I got to clap it up for you. Even, yeah, new John Deere. We got to do that. Congratulations on the mower, and hopefully that uh, that helps answer your question. All right, so um, yeah, poor Lamont. Hopefully he's here, because I know Lamont has been in the live stream before, but I don't see him here now um, to tell him to come up to show up and uh, and, uh, and and claim his, his prize. All right, so um, SMK is chiming in on Dismiss. He says, Dismiss as a pre-emergent has a short half-life. It is sometimes used as pre-emergent to prevent nuts edge at a high rate. Image plus dimension is better at preventing uh, as a better spring pre-emergent with longer life, up to six months of summer weed prevention. So there you go. Thank you so much, SMK. Appreciate the extra um, the extra context uh, to as far as like um you know as far as um, uh, half lives of pre emergent So thank you, uh, thank you so much. I really, really do appreciate it. Yeah, Alex, I did see Dwizzle earlier. I think he is in the live stream, and hopefully he um he writes you know he writes in. If if not, I'll get it to him, man. It's not. It's not that um, not that big a deal. No problems at all there. All right. Um, it's, we have here Rahul Berman has a question about um, uh, leveling. He says, "Hey Ron, it's running 100 uh, degrees Fahrenheit in Dallas. Is it still okay to do a leveling um, project? Spot leveling only? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's in the 90s here in Georgia. It's really hot, um, and I still you know, I did I did a leveling. I did some spot leveling on my lawn. So yeah, it's not a it's not a problem at all. I mean, if you have some irrigation, that's gonna be that would be good. It's gonna you know you wanna put some water on the lawn so it helps bounce back a bit sooner." But if you're leveling, see, so you're in Dallas, so it's probably warm season grass like Bermuda. But if you're leveling Bermuda, Bermuda is growing really aggressively right now. So if you if you level it, especially if you're doing it the way I recommend, which is to go relatively light, it's going to bounce back really quickly. So yeah, there's no um no no worries, no problems uh, there at all. Great, great question, and good luck on the top dressing if you decide to go ahead um go ahead with it. And uh, Green M, um, no, you did not win the hat or anything this week. Not this week, unfortunately, but we'll do other giveaways again. So they're still going to give you uh, another op more opportunities. All right, David Polanco. Hey, what's going on, David? Thanks for coming to hang out. I just know it's a little bit late, but I'm glad that you, you, you uh, took some time to hang out in the live stream. We would uh, highly appreciate it. All right. And then Robert Mahoros has a question about, um, about mowing and a mower like not running true when he's making a pass. He says, hey, y'all. What would cause my Flex 18 to drift slightly left or right when on flat turf? I'm mowing at 0.75 inches um, and dethatch sanded my Xeon this year. Um, slight left and right. Um, check, I mean, I mean, I, I, a couple of things. Make sure that um, it passes the paper test. Like if one side of if one side of the reel or bed knife is cutting, is like sharper, it's cutting, cutting paper and the other side is not. Um, that can cause the mower to pull slightly to one side or another. What else could do it? Um, that, those, that's probably the most common thing. I mean, there's other things, but that's, that's, pro that's the one I would really, I would really go with. You say the turf is flat and you're saying it's starting to, to fishtail a little bit, especially if you've got like a grooved roller on the front of that flex, it shouldn't, it really shouldn't be doing that. I mean, a little bit, a little bit, I mean, yeah, but it shouldn't be like a, a ton of movement. Um, Robert, I, I mean, I, I, you know what? It's kind of like this, this question is not as good without video. I'd have to see how much, how slight we're talking here. Cause my mower does move. You might, my, my, uh, my uh, 16 inch, um, 1600, it does move slightly a little bit. I mean, as I'm making a pass, if I'm not like, but that's largely 
from my pressure. Like if I'm, if, I'm, if I'm pushing slightly harder with one hand than the other, that will cause the mower to kind of dance around a bit. But if you're making sure that the pressure you're putting on the mower when you're mowing your pass is even, you're sure you're like you're positive of that. Um, just check to make sure the cutting unit's set up properly and that you're you know that um, it's cutting paper across the the um, the entire um, length of the reel and bed knife. And if that's the case, it's, it's probably it's probably your technique. Probably, I mean, I would check to make sure the pressure when you're putting on the mower when you're making a pass is even because it, with an 18 inch two, it doesn't take that much for it to move just a little bit. So, uh, so hopefully uh, that helps. And congrats, man! Congrats on dethatching and sanding your Xeon Zoysia this year. And uh, yeah, I I, uh, I wholeheartedly support the 0.75 inch mowing height. That is, I always, like I always say, jokingly say that three quarters of an inch is the right height of cut to choose to not have real mowing mess up your life. So if you're at three quarters of an inch, that is like the sweet spot. It looks awesome to where like, like even like lawn care geeks are gonna appreciate you. People in your neighborhood are gonna be like, your lawn looks incredible and it's not gonna be crazy bad to um to have to, um to uh, you know, to have to, to spend a bunch of time with it. So hopefully, uh, hopefully that helps. Great question. All right, so yeah, Raider Nation is saying it's very hot here in North Carolina. Please send rain. Grass is starting to have heat stress. I, I can only do what I can, man. Um, if you if you haven't put some hydrotain down as yet, Raider Nation, consider doing that. Hydrotain can can and does help with um with uh, the grass um, doing better with higher temperatures. But um, yeah, nothing beats Mother Nature with some good rainwater. But if you've not done hydrotain as yet, something you can do to not have to run irrigation like all the time. So uh, so there you go. All right. Um, let's see, Zach Hall's chiming in, he says, let's go 12 uh, zero, zero. says, don't water in, I get a burn every time. So I would go lower than what the bottle says um, per thousand, more isn't always better. Yeah, so I, I have to look at the formulation of that. I've not seen the formulation of the, of the let's go 12 zero, zero, like what type of nitrogen is in it. Um, but I can tell you like the Turfplex, I run that literally at the lowest rate, especially with foliar apps, guys. Like if you are doing your foliar apps, especially the way that I recommend you do it, like you're doing the Turfplex and you're also mixing it with release zero, which is in the carbon kit, like this guy is like a supercharger. It's like a catalyst for nutrient uptake. So whereas, you know, you may have wanted to use a slightly heavier rate if you're not mixing it with like something like release zero, when you're using it, when you're mixing it along with this, which is the way I recommend that you apply it, you absolutely do not need to go heavy. Like, like six ounces per thousand works really well. I've even done testing down to four ounces per thousand and I've gotten good results with that too. So to, to, Zach, to echo Zach's point, um, more is not better especially when it comes to liquid fertilizer. Like liquid fertilizers will bite you if you go too heavy with them. So uh, so yeah, always always go low and work up. You can always add more. It's kind of hard to take it away once you put it down. So there's always that. Uh, Yard Envy, no, you did not win this time, but perhaps next time I'll, I'll be doing more of them in the future. So uh, so yeah, no worries. And then Taylor Ursu says, the menu on my site is not working on mobile. Just a heads up. Thanks for letting me know, Taylor. I'll have to take a look at that, figure out what's going on with the uh, with the site. It, was, it has been working in the past. So I'm not sure what's going on. I'll take a look at that, but thank you for letting me know. I appreciate that. I appreciate it. All right. Um, we have another point here from uh, Patrick in Texas. <laughs> Patrick always has the best question. He says, what is carbonized PN? Why do I need it? Where do I get it? Okay, what is carbonized PN? So carbonized PN, a great way of, of, um, of, of describing it, the best way is with pictures. So carbonized PN is essentially, it's very much like essential G. So if you go here, so carbonized PN is essentially essential G. It's a combination of biochar and compost. Um, it's biochar and compost, um, but in, um, in a non-prill form. So if you think about products from um, Miramichi Green, you've got carbonized PN, which is like, you can almost think of it like essential G in non-prill form, like in a, like, like in a topsoil, like a dirt form, like it's designed to be put out using a broadcast spreader, a top dressing machine, machine. or you have alternative essential, uh, essential G, which um, has the same ingredients. I mean, the concentrations are slightly different, but essential G has the compost, has actually more compost, has the biochar, um, and it also has some silica, some humic acid in it. So it's got a bit of everything. Like essential G is really the new, the new hotness as far as formulations from Miramichi Green. And this one will go down in a broadcast spreader. Whereas carbonized PN is you need a top dressing machine to be able to put it down or like a shovel and, and you're going to be casting it throughout your lawn. So as far as something to, to use on your lawn on a bigger scale, essential G is what I would recommend. That is what I use to top dress my lawn when I did it in late April, early May. Great product, spreads really easily, 
great results. Um, so yeah, but I mean, if, if you're looking for something, a good example, if you want something to put in a, um, a pot, like say you're gonna grow some flowers or you want something to put in a vegetable garden, you really could even use Essential G for that too. Essential G will work in both cases, but if you want something to like grow, like some like really, really super rich dirt to grow something in, to grow like, um, you know, whatever you want to grow something in, then uh, that's where carbonized PN is a great option. But um, in most cases, and for most people, I'm gonna recommend uh, essential G because it just goes a lot further, right? Your money goes a lot further. It's easier to spread. Um, and there's a lot of reasons to use it. And the formulation is newer, has a lot, has, has more ingredients in it that um, I think you'll, you'll see a lot of great benefits from. So nothing wrong with carbonized PN, um, but essential G is what I would recommend. And you can get it on the golf course lawn store. All right, um, let's see here. Um, Frank V says, when spraying herbicides with temp restrictions, is this stating for the time of applications or the temp for that day? Need to do post-emergent treatment, temps in the 70s in the morning, 90 in the afternoon. Um, yeah, so it's really, for me, it's, I, I would say during, during the time when you're spraying it and during the time when it's gonna be taken up by the grass. So if you were spraying, it's say 70 in the morning and throughout the entire day, like good example, spectracide says 45 degrees to 90 degrees. So if it got to 90 degrees, like that's the peak and it's only that like that temperature for an hour in the day, um, I would probably go, I would probably still go ahead and spray the spectracide. But if you're talking about that, you know, you're gonna be spraying it when it's like in the 80s and it's gonna get into the high 90s or 100s, that is when I would not do it. So really for, I, I, I would say look for a window of a couple of days where the temps are going to be um, at or below the upper limit of what the label says. That's the, that's the safest way to spray it. I mean, here's the thing that's gonna happen, right? If you spray, um, like say spectracide or spray or herbicide um, outside of the temperature ranges, uh, it, on Bermuda, it's unlikely to kill the grass. It's not gonna, it's very unlikely it's gonna kill the Bermuda, but what it will do is it's gonna cause yellowing. So whereas the way the herbicide is tested, you're going to see it's designed to cause like mild injury to the des desirable grass. If you spray it outside of those ranges, you're gonna, you are taking the chance of, of damaging your lawn, right? I mean, it's gonna be temporary, but you are gonna take a chance of damaging it. So for me, Frank, what I would do is I would look for a window of a couple of days where the peak temps or um, the time periods where the temps are at the upper limit of what the what the label says are as short as possible. So if you got a day where it's gonna be like 90, 91 degrees for an hour or so and then drop down below that, probably gonna be fine. But if you got a day where you know you wake up in the morning, it's 85 degrees and it's gonna get it's gonna be 90 for like six or seven hours out of the day, I would not spray a herbicide then that has a temperature restriction of 90 degrees. Does that make sense? So during during the time of spraying it, and also during the time when it's being uptake um, taken up by the grass, and the um you know when the grass is being exposed to it, and the and the weed is being exposed to it, that is when you want to be inside um, that that temperature range, the the ranges that they have on the label by the manufacturer. All right, good question. That's a good one. I haven't I haven't gotten that one before. All right, um, GC says, um, what lawn level tool do you use, and do you have a link for it? So the one the one that I actually use is from R and R Products. And um, I don't have a link for that one. Um, you can't get that one on, you can't buy it online. You actually, have, well, you, you, can, you can buy it at R&R Products. You can call them up and order it. Um, but the um, but the, another one that is that is really, really, really good, I mean, it's very high quality, um, is the standard, I think the standard golf one. Um, let me show you here. This is the one that I always recommend to people. Like if you look at all my, all my, um, all my videos, this is the one that I recommend um, for people to people to pick up. Um, the lawn, the Rockland industry, yeah, here it is, the standard standard golf level lawn. This one is good value for money. There's some other ones out there that are a little bit more expensive. Like when I first got mine, um, I didn't know about the standard, this one, I didn't know about this one. And had I do it all over again, I'd probably would have gone with this one because like, you'll save some money. The rake that I use is like a hundred and, um, $160, $170, depending on which on which one you go with. This one's a little bit, um, a little bit more economical. So let me see, at GC, yep. And then um, leveling rake. So uh, there you go. That's uh, that's the leveling rake that I I recommend. Um, and if you look at any of my videos, that's the one that you'll you'll see listed in there. All right, Alex B says uh, maybe it's just me, but most of the weed types that I have um, I have have not had the best results with tenacity by itself. Mixing it with another herbicide like Speed Zone definitely work much better. Yeah, I mean, so I, I hear that. I hear some people some people have to try Tenacity and they sing its praises and other people um, try it and they don't have good results with it. I think that's why part of like that video that George put out with um, 
uh, with Tenacity and Speed Zone mixed together, um, that's probably the best of both worlds if you have a Cool Season lawn. Um, I, I don't have any personal experience with Tenacity because I don't have Cool Season grass, right? I, you know, so I can't, I can't really speak to it. Like all I can say is that it's, it's, it's a fairly polarizing herbicide. People that, people that use it either love it or people use it and they just, they're like, eh, not as good as I thought it would be. So, um, but to your point, mixed with some Speed Zone, that tends to, uh, to do really well. So, uh, thanks for, for, uh, for chiming in. All right, so Michael Brace says, Hi, Ron. Greetings from South Miami. I have Bermuda um, SS2000. The weeds are killing me. I want to try Speed Zone. What can I combine with it for maximum results? Well, here's the thing. You can, you can do like a com combination of Speed Zone and Dismiss, um, but that is going to discolor your lawn. It is, I mean, even Speed Zone, it's going to discolor your lawn. It's going to, it's going to turn it temporarily yellow if you do that. Um, if you want something that's, that's a great product, it's going to kill weeds on Bermuda, um, and it's not going to discolor your lawn, um, or it's going to, or it's going to be nicer, I should say. I can't say it's not going to discolor, but it's going to be a lot nicer to your lawn than a speed zone dismiss combo. Then look into something like Celsius. I'm not sure if you already have um, speed zone, but like Celsius is a good option. And I actually got a proper link for it now. Um, that will work really well against a broad spectrum of weeds, grassy weeds and broadleaf weeds, and doesn't have um, a lot of the temperature restrictions that um, some of those ones that you just mentioned have. Um, it's not going to it's not going to damage your lawn in the process. So let me send you a link for that one, Michael. Um, that is what I would use on warm season grass, especially with you being in Miami um, and you know it's as hot as it gets there. That's that's what I would um, that's what I would go with. No worries at all. All right. So Angela has a question about top dressing. She says, "My question is, do I mix sand with organic topsoil because I have an uneven lawn? I put weed killer down last week. Um, I need to wait a few weeks before I level." Just need to know, do I need sand? So, um, so here's the thing, Angela. If your goal is to level, you want to have some sand mixed in with a top dressing mix. So the way to think about it is um, um, organic material like topsoil is a great way to feed the soil, but sand helps for structure. So this is, it does a much better job of leveling out uneven areas in the lawn. So topsoil for feeding the soil, sand for structure. So yes, you, you are going to want to use a mixture of sand um, and topsoil if you can get your hands on that. If, if you're ordering the sand, what I would almost recommend doing if you if you can is get it, get a, see if you can find a place that we can de will deliver it to you already mixed. Because I mean, here's the thing, top dressing in itself is already a lot of work. It's even more work to get like a big pile of sand and a big um, pile of topsoil and have to combine them yourself and mix them. Um, unless you're dealing with a small area, I would almost look into finding a local supplier that can um, that can deliver a leveling mix, which in most cases what they will do is they'll offer like a 70-30 mix, so 70% uh, sand and 30% topsoil. That's a good um, happy spot, a good compromise between feeding the soil and also leveling your lawn and getting a good result. So. Uh, that is what I would go with. Great question. Um, hopefully uh, that helps. Uh, Kevin Dow has a question. Is it okay to throw down 2100 right now? Um, I don't know. Does your lawn need um, need that kind of nitrogen right now? If you if your if your soil test results, um, which you would know by um, you know, using something like that, like the My Soil Test Kit, tells you that your 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 lawn is nitrogen deficient, and um, you know 2100 is a good fit for what your lawn needs. So all you need is nitrogen, but you don't need any of the other macros. Um, then yeah, it could be it could be a good option, but without seeing your soil test results, I, I can't say for sure, um, Kevin. Um, so sorry, okay, I can't give you I can't give you a a, a an actually like very precise answer because without soil test results, I can't say for sure whether it's going to be the best one. Now, can you put it down? Is it probably going to be okay? Yeah, you're probably going to apply it as long as you go at a low rate. You, is it probably going to be fine? Probably, but is it the best? Is it what your your lawn actually needs? Impossible to say without soil test results. So. Um, hopefully that helps. If you've not got a soil test done as yet, the one I would recommend, the one I use and recommend everybody because one, you get the results easy, they're easy to use, um, and the results are super easy to interpret is the one from my soil, this one here. Um, that's what I'd recommend. You, you get it, you send your results out, in a week you're gonna have your results back and you are, uh, and you're good to go. So hopefully uh, that, that helps. All right, um, Jason Greenlee is talking about a problem he's having with his lawn after changing the height of cut and some, some browning issues. He said, I recently went from cutting my lawn from two inches to 1.5 inches. My lawn, my grass is browning up. Should I continue to cut at one and a half inches to, con to encourage my lawn to thicken up before leveling? Uh, yeah, yeah, Jason. So here's the thing, a couple, couple things you have, to, you have to think about, right? Is um, 
if you, depending on how long it's been since you did that, that height of cut change, going from two inches to one and a half inch. So like, say you did it like this week. Yeah, your lawn's gonna turn brown. And it's and that's the completely normal because you took, you I mean, you, it's a pretty drastic height of cut change that you made in your lawn. Um, but if you keep mowing it at that height, so if you can get out there and you can mow the lawn twice a week, so you can get there a couple of times a week and mow it, um, what you'll find is it's gonna green up. It'll begin, it'll stay, it'll, you'll increase the likelihood that it'll stay green between mowings. The, the thing with, um, mowing shorter and the lawn staying green between mowings, it all comes down to mowing frequency. Like literally, the shorter you go, like the little rhyme, a little jingle for you, the, the shorter you go, the more you have to mow. So, um, you know, one and a half inches doesn't, isn't terribly demanding. You can probably get by with twice a week with that. Um, but if you're mowing less, fre more, um, less frequently than that, so if you're mowing like only once a week, that's probably not gonna be enough to keep the lawn green between mowings at one and a half inches. And, and again, the more you mow it, yes, to answer your question, it's gonna encourage the lawn to thicken up. So, uh, good stuff. Great, great question. And yeah, man, and thanks. Yeah, great question, man. I really, I really, really appreciate that. All right, so um, let me see here. We have a question here from Marcus S. who lives in Northwest um, Arkansas. He says, I, um, I live in um, Northwest Arkansas and have Bermuda. I bought the Sun Joe battery powered reel mower for $250 and I'm cutting at 0.6 inches. I like it. We got to drop you. We got to cut it up for that, man. All right. He says, is there a comparable reel mower I can buy that cuts lower? I want a putting green cut. Okay, so here's the thing, Marcus. Be careful what you wish for because going from going from like 0.6 inches to putting green height, so like 0 0.10, 0 0.2, so like 0 0.10, 0 0.2 inches, like that's like, like putting green range, um, which is really, really low. Uh, now you're talking about greens mower, because it's not just, there's nothing, there's nothing you're gonna buy on Amazon um, that will be able to do that and produce a good result. You're talking about getting, and, and you said you have a Sunjo battery powered, so you, your options really are um, like a Toro, like one of the Greens Masters, one of the um, electric Greens Master mowers, or um, a John Deere. Like both of those companies make um, electric ver versions of their um, their Greens mowers, but you're talking you're talking uh, from 0.6 inches down to Greens height is an entirely new magnet, a whole different magnitude of machine and level of commitment. Like, cause remember, like mowing at 0.6 inches, you're probably mowing two to three times per week thereabouts for it to keep it looking nice. When you get down to greens height, you're mowing every day. Like if you want it to look nice, you're gonna be mowing out there like literally every single day. So, um, you know, it just I'd say, um, just really think about what you're, what you're getting yourself into. And also, you know, you are gonna have to level the lawn. I'm sure your lawn is probably already smooth now because you're at 0.6 inches, but you're gonna, but like frequent top dressing is gonna be a thing for you um, if you're gonna try and have, turn your lawn into a putting green. So. I mean, I can, I can tell you that, you know, 0 0.5, 0 half an inch looks really, really good. I mean, it's a really good looking height of cut. Um, and, you know, you can get by with like, uh, you know, with, with a, you're still gonna, you really still are gonna need a greens more to get a good result, a good cut, even at that height. But, um, you know, 0 0.5 half an inch is already a pretty big commitment of a putting green height on an entire lawn is a huge level of commitment. So um, to answer your question, uh, a Toro or John Deere, um, both either of those guys make um, electric versions, but they are they're going to be a lot more expensive. If you're if you're open to a gas powered unit, you can also get like a gas powered John Deere or um, Toro Greensmaster, um, and you get those pre owned for you know not not too bad, like two grand, um, twenty five hundred dollars for one, and that's in decent shape. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's gonna be a whole lot more money and just a whole lot, again, it's a, it's a different level of, 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 of magnitude, um, to, uh, you know, as far as like mowing what you get yourself into, but great question. Let me know if that helps and if you need uh, anything else. All right. SMK says at Ron Henry, you got the, got carbon pro G out of stock everywhere. I got three bags in April by July. That stuff was gone. Yeah, man. It's, uh, People are, are buying it, but again, an option uh, uh, alternative is uh, Essential G. There you go, man. If you don't want Carbon Pro G, you know, Site One is the, they're they're out of stock on it. You want like again, also the new hotness, right? So this is like um, Carbon Pro G 2.0. Essential G is an excellent option, and it is in stock. It is in stock and shipping now today at the Golf Course Lawn Store. So if you're looking for something that's you know a good option outside of that, you can absolutely uh, you can absolutely go with that. 
All right, so let's see what other um, questions here we got here, and I'm, and I'm glad that you got the uh, the products um, that 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 stuff from um, from LG SMK, and I hope you got my email right before the live stream. Um, that replacement bottle is on its way to you, so yeah, it's uh, I got the, the tracking information. It should be to you early next week. Um, again, apologies for that, but um, we got you taken care of. So uh, yeah, hopefully uh, he's going to get to you in good order, and you enjoy using it. So let me know if you run into anything else. All right. Um, and let's see what else we got going on here. And BA Ames says, yeah, I made the exact R&R one in 30 minutes for $25. It's super easy. So yeah, that's a good point too, right? If you're pretty handy, right? If you're handy with like, um, with like, um, what do you call it? Like angle iron. I've seen people make leveling rakes with ang out of angle iron and like hinges and stuff. Like if you're pretty handy and you want to make your own leveling rig, you can totally do that too. Um, I am just too lazy to do that. So I just, I just, I just bought one. Like some, th some things I will, I will like tweak on and work on and like, and like, uh, like, Get, get crafty with, but like some things I'm like, it, this works really well. It's well built. It looks cool. It's not have to worry about it. And I just, I'll just buy it. So um, it just depends on how much, how much you, how much your time worth to you. And if you are handy enough and they have the skill set to be able to make one. So those are all the considerations. Okay. Um, let's see what other questions we got. We got Justin here uh, chiming in. He says, Hey Ron, thank you for all, um, your content. My tiff tub looks great with the hashtag stripe action. I'm glad to hear it. So it's awesome. I laid it down in front of, uh, in the front in June and last week, um, for the backyard. Would you recommend pre-emergent, uh, in the late fall or wait till spring? When did you put it down? You said, um, in June. So June, uh, June, July, uh, you said late June. Um, yeah. So June, July, August, uh, September. Um, yeah, if it's rooted in and growing in nicely, you can, if it's Bermuda, yeah, I, I would do it. I, I would do pre-emergent this fall. Let's wait until like late September. Let's give it as much time as possible. Or Justin, if you can, um, if you can try out that coastal, like the one I'm talking about, that coastal pre-emergent that has some post-emergent in it, that one you can wait till like late, you, know, you can wait till like October, maybe even early November because any, um, uh, cool season weeds like poa, like poa that germinates, the, the post-emergent herbicide is going to kill it. So if you want to be extra safe, try something like coastal, But because with that one, you can wait till, again, late October, early November. You're still going to get the pre-emergence. You're going to have the, um, you know, you're going to prevent a lot of cool season weeds um, throughout the winter months and also into the early spring. Um, and you're just also, you know, reducing the chances of any kind of root clubbing on your new lawn. You should, it shouldn't be a pre an issue after five or six months, especially with Bermuda. If, if it were like zoysia or any of the cool season grasses, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I would say no, but Bermuda, it's it's probably gonna be just fine. I would, but you know, extra caution, get coastal, wait a little bit later on in the year and then go uh, go for for that. Um, Michael Bray says, would Celsius work as a pre-emergent as well? No, uh-uh, no, it's, it's, it's really a post-emergent herbicide, uh, Michael. Um, for, for your pre-emergence, you're going to want to go with prodiamine um, um, or like dimension if you want something that's a little bit uh, more as far as like the reasonably priced options. And prodiamine we have available on um, on the golf course lawn store. I can um, I can show you that. So you got it in a couple different forms. You got it in like the small container, which I had one right here. This guy right here. This is super small. This will cover I think memory serves me up to six thousand five or six thousand square feet on a Bermuda lawn, a warm season grass lawn. Um, and then you've also got a granular prodiamine if you want, prefer something to put down in a drop in a spreader. And then if you've got a bigger lawn, you've got this guy, which is like the five pound jug, 80 ounces of prodiamine. And this will cover, I think it's 90,000 square feet whenever I did the math on it. So this one goes a lot further. And actually price per application, this is a better value, but, you, but it's like 90,000 square feet. So unless you got a really big lawn, you might be hanging on to this for a while, which is why a lot of people um, tend to like this one, even though it is, um, even though it's, it's technically not, um, it's, it's the cost per application is a little bit higher. So hopefully, uh, hopefully that helps. So yeah, this is the one I'm talking about. And you can get both of these on the, uh, on the golf course lawn store right here. So you can pick those up right there whenever you uh, decide to go forward with that. Definitely get pre-emergent down. It's one of the best things you can do for keeping for keeping your lawn weed free. Like like if you think pre-emergent is expensive, post-emergence are really expensive. Like it's way easier to kill stuff before it germinates. If you want to kill stuff and not kill the stuff that you care about after the stuff you don't want has already germinated, bring your wallet. So that's a like a com you know complicated way of saying use pre-emergent in the spring and the fall, and then your need for post-emergence is going to be seriously reduced um, throughout the growing season. So just something to. Uh, to keep in mind. 
All right, so Al so Manchester Shoals says, I have an outlet that I got from a family member who hires a landscaper now. Just curious on how much a brand new Green Master 1000. One of my neighbors up the street just bought one. He got a he bought a brand new one. You sure it's brand new? Um, so I've heard different pricing, but brand new, you're looking around 10 grand, uh, 10 to 12000 dollars depending on options. So they're they're not they're not cheap. If, so if you're sure it's brand new, he bought a really, really nice unit. Like I think the Lawn Tools has one of the newer ones that they got from Toro. Um, those are sweet, man. I'd love, I'd love to get my hands on one of those. Um, one day, one day. The channel's got to grow a little bit more before I can, I can justify one of those. But uh, one day. But yeah, if it's brand, if it is in fact brand new, that they're in the ten thousand dollar range. They're in the low five figure range. They're not. They are not cheap uh, units. Great question about fungicide. D Dom says, "Hey Ron, do you plan on putting a fungicide down this fall?" Yes, I am, and I am. I am not dealing with spring dead spot again this or i'm gonna do my best to not have to deal with spring dead spot uh next year so i am gonna be putting down um fungicide i'm gonna be putting down headway g i'm gonna be doing two applications one um in september and then probably another one 28 days later in october uh so that is what i'm gonna be using um as my fungicide of choice and i'll show you i'll give you a link for that in case you're interested a little bit early in the season like i wouldn't i wouldn't put it down now unless you're dealing with a fungus issue but as far as like preventing spring fungus problems um then headway g let me see at ddom that uh, headway g is an excellent 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 option really good really good fungicide not cheap but it is it is the good stuff um, and then also another thing you can do, DDOM, to minimize your chance of having fungus issues or dealing with fungus problems in the spring is to limit your nitrogen intake or input into the lawn in the fall months. So as the fall comes, kind of like you always hear this, right? But as the fall, um, you know, the grass starts to go dormant. If you have warm season grass, let it go dormant. Don't keep pushing tons of N in it because that can also produce conditions that are going to cause fungus problems in this in the springtime. All right. Skinny Geek 10 says, Ron, that carbon kit is working really he says not just really well really well really well i really appreciate all your hard work on the channel and the lawn and the lawn academy i'm glad man it's it's dude the the carbon kit is like is like the hotness man like i i can't tell you how happy i am that miramichi green um you know allowed allowed me to um to the, the improvements they gave me the catalog and says you know pick the stuff that you think that you want to make available to your viewers um they just better buy it so, and you guys have been buying it, so that's good, right? And for those of you guys that don't know what Skinny Geek 10 is talking about, the carbon kit consists of three ingredients, three components. So there is, um, the first is release zero. This is a, um, it's 10% micronized carbon. And the way Mary Green describes it as a, as a catalyst, what this does is it's going to enhance the performance, it's gonna enhance the foliar uptake of anything you mix with it. In addition to this, the 10% um, carbon is gonna also feed the soil too. So this has got tons of benefits to it. This mixed with any kind of, with your fertilizers, your pesticides, fungicides, um, if you're spraying them, this is awesome stuff. It mixes well with all those things. The second component of the carbon kit that you know Skinny Geek is talking about is NutriKelp. This has 2% micronized carbon, so 10% in this, 2% in this, but what this has is 24% uh, kelp extract. So this is very, as far as like a, as far as like a, like a, a, a vitamin pack for your soil. This is that's what you can think of nutrient uh, of, of um, nutri kelp as. It has a trace amounts of nitrogen. As you can see, the formulation is like a, it's a um, one one four, so a tiny amount of nitrogen, small amount of phosphorus, small amount of potassium, and four percent potassium. So great product. These two, between these two products, you're putting 12% micronized carbon into your lawn, um, as well as 24% um, kelp. So it's, as far as like, you know, a great, a great biostimulant package, um, these two are awesome. And then the final part of the Miramichi Green, um, or of the Gulf Horse Lawn Carbon Kit is Biospectrum. What this is, is, a, is microbial food and microbes, healthy microbes and bacteria that helps, helps um, jump started, enhance that engine that helps uh, uh, make uh, improve nutrient availability to to your plants. You think about it, right? When you put down fertilizer in your lawn, um, like it has to be broken down by, um, or at least granular fertilizer anyway. It needs to be broken down by microbes, by by healthy bacteria, by microbes to to make to convert the nitrogen into a form that can be taken up, or the co the common term you hear is, be, is made available for uptake by the grass, right? And what um, Biospectrum does is it helps enhance that. It puts the that the bacteria that helps that process. It it adds that to the soil. Your soil already has it, but um, it it also helps. Um, 
again, feed them and helps add more. Especially if you're doing, if you're the kind of person that is putting fungicides out on your lawn, you definitely want to use, um, add biospectrum to your program because you're, in addition, you know, the fungicides are hurting the, um, the amount of microbial activity you're having, you're, you have in the soil and a way to supplement that and kind of help jump, jumpstart rebuilding um, the, the, the healthy balance of microbes in your lawn is to use something like, um, like Biospectrum. So all three of them are in the carbon kit. They are all put together and you can buy them all, um, all in one package that saves you uh, quite a bit of money right here on the golf course lawn store. It comes in two sizes, one for five, for three applications on a 5,000 square foot lawn. You apply it once per month and then one for a 10,000 square foot lawn. So I got you covered in both, in both cases. So um, yeah, it's a great product. I haven't had any, I haven't had anyone that's tried it that hasn't had, um, great things to say about it. So if you're interested in trying something new for your lawn, um, like what I, what I consider to be like the ultimate biostimulant package, um, for your lawn, it's, um, it's really, really good stuff. So anyone that's tried it has had only good things to say. Really appreciate it, Skinny Geek. Thank you for, uh, for letting me know. And I'm also happy that you're enjoying the Academy. Um, thanks, uh, thanks for being, uh, uh, for all the support. So let me know if I can help with anything else. All right, so Dice Man says, I got my Magical Plus product to start the process of lowering my pH. When is the best time to apply it? Bermuda in North Texas. Now, like the best time to apply it was um, yesterday. Like the day you get it, go ahead and put it down. There's not really a timing thing on that. Go ahead and put it down on, uh, on, on your lawn and then just water it in. Yeah, there's no, um, the only time I'd say not to apply it, and this applies to pretty much all granular products, is if you were like, if you say you'd order this in the middle of winter, and where you are in Texas, like if the ground was frozen, I wouldn't put it down then, but then I wouldn't put down any granular product when the ground is frozen. But like right now where it's not, that's not the case, um, absolutely put it down, water it in and let it start doing its thing. So yeah. All right, um, so Jason Greenlee says, do you recommend leveling during this drought without an irrigation system? My work allows me to water um, in the morning and evening. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine, man. I mean, J Jason, as far as, uh, as far as, um, watering goes, or as far as watering and top dressing, really what I recommend really is, is only, um, like doing, I don't want to say even heavy watering, but like, do, like doing some supplemental watering for the first few days after top dressing. It's really strictly not even necessary for you to really do a lot of extra watering as part of your top dressing program. I mean, it can be, it can help, but I will send you this video here that I did that literally talks about, um, I already linked it in the chat earlier, but it literally is, is the answer specifically to the question you're asking about what to do after top dressing. Um, and uh, and that will that will help you out. But yes, as far as the answer to your question, can you top dress without an irrigation system and to where you know you're only gonna be able to water in the morning and the afternoon when you get off work? No problem at all. Go ahead and go for it, man. There's no um yeah, you don't need to have an irrigation system to top dress. It's not not necessary. A lot of times when you hear me talk about irrigation systems and top dressing, it's more in the context of if you don't have an irrigation system yet and you're thinking about putting one in it's probably a good idea to get it installed prior to top dressing because you don't want to get the lawn all nicely smooth and you do all this work of top dressing it and it's looking nice and then you go out and trench it and rip it all up and make a mess out of it. So, so in that con that's really the only constraints or context that I would I would say where irrigation um, or having or not having an irrigation would um, system would influence whether or not you top dress it. It's not it's not strictly necessary at all. Um, just make sure you go light and uh, yeah, you know it, if you can water in the evening in the morning for first few days after top dressing, good to go. Good to go, man. You're gonna get a good result. All right, catching up with the chub says, what are your thoughts on a summer scalp? I let my lawn get a little too high and I want to reset the height of cut. I, I don't personally do it mainly because I have 12,000 square feet and I don't want to haul away that many clippings. But yeah, if you let your grass get too high and you want to bring it back down to its normal height of cut, go for it. It's not gonna hurt anything. Not gonna hurt anything at all. As long as, you have, as, long as you're fine with like removing all the clippings, then yeah, uh, not gonna hurt anything to do that um, whatsoever. Uh, let's see um, uh, what else we uh, we got here. Yeah, and BA Ames is chiming in. He says, yeah, the Lawn Tools got it for free, and they said they run about twelve thousand dollars. Yeah, so between ten to twelve grand, depending on um, options. Like if you get the lights on it, if you get if you get, I think there's other options. If you get like a groomer, that probably adds more. I'm trying to think of whether there's also like a um, there's a um, I think there's a like a reduction drive you can add to them, like a like a, a height, there's like a high a high cut kit or a, a clip rate kit that you can change, like those that will change it. So I mean, depending on the options, at any rate, it's expensive. It's like between ten thousand to twelve thousand dollars. If that's in your budget, then the options probably don't matter to you because you got the money to buy it anyway. So they're they're expensive, brand new, but it's also, I mean, it's like the, as long as you as long as you take care of it, it's like the last mower you'll literally ever buy, you know, because it's it's a it's a commercial grade mower. It's designed not commercial grade. It is a commercial mower that's designed to run, you know, hours and hours every day 
um, you know, for years on end. So they're just they're really, really well built units, which is why they cost so much. Okay, and then a uh, Dwizzle look chiming on a question here. He says, My Bermuda gets super thick in the summer. Scalping or top dressing seems like the only thing that gets it back to a manageable state. Is this something I should plan on doing every summer? Um, you, I mean, top dressing every summer, you can. I mean, if you need it, you can. It's a lot of work. Um, but as far as the, as far as um, it getting thick, yeah, I mean, Bermuda tends to thicken up the more you mow it. Uh, that's that's just that's kind of um, that's kind of par for the course, and it's it's kind of what we want in Dwizzle, right? You know, you want your lawn to be thick and nice and thick and dense, uh, because that's going to um, you know, one, it looks nice. It's nicer to walk on. It's natural weed control because it crowds out. Um, you know, it shades the soil. So as far as like the it holding on to moisture better, that's going to be a thing when this when you're when you're allowing the um, the turf to grow in a little bit denser. So it's ideally what you're after. Um, but yeah, to your point, you can scalp and you can top dress it. You can dethatch it if you want to thin it out a bit. But I mean, you know, a thick a thick Bermuda lawn um, has tons of benefits to doing that. So. Um, uh, but yeah, but yeah, top dressing every year. You can do it if you have the time, but it just depends on um, on you know on if you, on on you, man. It depends on whether you, whether you want to do that or not. All right, I think I'm looking at other questions. Um, Daniel B. He says here, can I put down Magic Cal to lower pH and Caravan G at the same time? Uh, yeah, I would not put them down the spreader at this. I mean, when you say at the same time, like on the at the same day, yes, I would not put them in the, in the spreader at the same time, obviously, because they have different application rates. Um, but yeah, you could put down. Let me. How would I do that? I would do the the Magic Cal first, and then I would do the Caravan G, and then I would water them both in. So I would do Magic Cal then Caravan G, and then water it all in. That is how I would do it. All right, um, and then Chewy Chews says, he says, Ron, I'm gonna apply elemental sulfur, sulfur in the lawn to adjust my pH. Should I aerate first? Uh, the two really aren't linked. If you wanna aerate, um, if you're, you, had a, you had a plan to aerate, then yeah, then absolutely do that, sure. I mean, it's gonna help, it's going to help fast track getting some of it into the soil, which is what we want. So yeah, I mean, the after aeration is the perfect time to top dress, to fertilize, to do a carbon soil amendment. I mean, there's, there's, I mean, aeration is literally the time. If you want to, if there's something you want to add to your lawn that needs to get into the soil after aerating, is the time uh, is the time to do it. Uh, let's see. Um, SMK has a question. He says, Ron, are you going to mix fungicide with your fall pre-emergent spring dead spot preventing needs to be watered in deep so the turf could take it up via the roots? Um, so no, I'm not gonna. I'm, I'm going to use uh, the. I'm going to use granular. Um, SMK because I'm going to be using um, headway a couple I'm going to do a couple applications of headway um, one in September probably another one in October um, like once temps start um, soil temps are getting below 70 as when I'm as when I'm planning to start doing my, my applications because the pre-immersion I'm planning to use I'm not going to apply I'm thinking until October-ish right so I want but I, and I want to get the fungicide down a little sooner than that so to your point I if I were going to go liquid I could mix them and save myself some time um, but yeah, because of the, the, the timing of when they're going to go down, I'm going to be going granular for the, um, fungicide and liquid for the pre-emergent. So, uh, hope, uh, that helps. Um, let's see. And Dean Hell says, I'm, ha I'm trouble, I'm finding trouble finding a Bermuda source in Southeast Virginia. Do you have a recommended source? Not really. Um, I don't, I don't know on that one, man. I'm not, I'm not sure on on um, Bermuda in Southeast Virginia. I mean, I would say like Bermuda grass or Bermuda sod, your city and see what pops up in the Google. That's probably gonna be the best, your best bet. I'm not I'm not sure on that one, unfortunately. All right, um, Eric Newton, I think has our last question of the evening. He says, Ron, what's up? What's up, uh, Eric? He says, uh, I did a summer scalp and top dressed my Bermuda about three weeks ago. Some spots are taking forever to fill in um, should I remove a little top dressing? Um, well, th well, three weeks. Okay. No. Okay. If it's, if it's your, if it's only been three weeks. Um, no, I wouldn't. I mean, again, remember the first time I top dressed my lawn, the very first time it was like, it's like five weeks before the entire lawn grew in. So the first top dress, it tends to take a little longer, especially if you went heavier, which it sounds like you went a little heavy. Um, it's gonna take a little bit longer, but yeah, three weeks. I mean, in my case where you, where you see me top dress my lawn now and like literally within a couple of weeks, the grass has grown in and you can't even tell it was top dressed. That's because one, I'm going super light. So I'm not, I don't have any really crazy heavy spots. Um, so that's why it grows in faster. But the first time I did it, it was a lot longer. It took a lot longer for the grass to grow through. And three weeks honestly is not, you know, that's not too long. That's not, I mean, that's not, um, that's not a reasonable amount of time. 
Um, if you tell me you get to like like two months, like you know six eight weeks, and it's still not growing through, it's not spreading in, then we might want we might look at um, removing some of it. But I mean, I, I would give it some more time. Give it let's let's do this, Eric. Give it another two weeks. Um, and if within the next two weeks you're not seeing like a measurable improvement where the grass is beginning to spread into it or the grass is growing through it, then you can consider um, moving, removing some, but I think you're gonna be just fine. Just give it a little bit more time, I think it's gonna grow in. Three weeks isn't quite enough time, uh, especially if it's the first time you top dress and if you went a little bit heavier in those areas where the grass is not growing in um, as yet. Um, but good, good question. All right, um, Brian Woods has a follow-up question on the ammonium sulfate as a, as a, as a source of nitrogen. He says, follow-up question, I says, uh, Ron, uh, my pH is high, NPK is low. How would you incorporate a triple 20 with ammonium sulfate? Um, or would you not? Thanks, I probably wouldn't. I probably, well, I mean, it, it depends on what you're doing, man. I mean, if, if you want, here's the thing. You, ammonium sulfate is a great way to add to lower pH while also adding nitrogen. Another um, option for lowering pH um, is to use something like citric acid, right? Like if you look at um, the My Soil channel, like there, the Soil Lab channel, I don't know if I got that one up here. I may have it. I think I, I think I do. If I have the video, I can I can send to you. But Soil Lab has done some testing. Oh yeah, here we go. This is it right here. And um, this this is the, this is the first video in this series. But watch this video. And they're gonna show you some options for um, altering soil pH, both um, for low, in case you don't have this problem, for acidic soil and for alkaline soil. But um, watch this. And um, another option you might wanna look into is um, citric acid, because that's another way of lowering pH. Um, to my knowledge, citric acid doesn't have any measurable amounts of nitrogen in it. And that would allow you to then use your 20, your triple 20 to take care of the other macros. So if you're just trying to, you wanna just lower your pH while also being able to give, put a balanced fertilizer down that, that um, better suits what the soil needs from a macro standpoint, go with citric acid and then your triple 20. And then just like forego the ammonium sulfate. But then, but check out that video. I just put a video there in the chat. I linked you to, to you um, from Soil Lab. Um, the guys at my soil are the ones that run the lab, so it's really, really cool research that they're doing. And I think they've already done one update. So this video that I sent you is the, is the first one. Um, what will probably show up afterwards is their first update, and they'll show you the results of them using um, like elemental uh, ammonium sulfate or ammonium, I think they did elemental sulfate, um, and they did citric acid. So, so one of those two is what you might want to try instead of ammonium sulfate uh, to lower your pH. Very, very, very good. Very good stuff. All right. Yeah, and SMK, I will let you know, man. He says, Ron, let me know how the coastal works. I mix my own version of coastal every year, but replace image with monument. Cool, man. Yeah, I'll let you know, man. I'll definitely, I'll definitely keep you posted. You guys will all know how it, uh, how it works. Well, guys, I think that's it. I think that's all the questions we have for this evening. The hot spot held out, so yay for technology. Um, unfortunately, this, this, this live stream was not in 4K, it was in HD, but I think you guys will forgive me for that. Um, we got through it. Um, congratulations to all the winners. I will look through my email once I get off this live stream. Again, as far as the winners, LG, you're the winner of the Stripe Action sticker. Um, Dwizzle or Lamont, and or Lamont, um, you guys won um, this, the live stream um, sticker, one, one or two, one of these, so pick your, make your choice. Um, the hand weeding tool went to Super TA, so Super TA sent me an email with your mailing address and I will get this out to you. And then the one of two limited edition um, Ron Henry camo, or do you call it desert tan hat, uh, goes to Princess Cut Lawn Care. So George, if you wouldn't mind, sir, send me a text with your um, email address or phone um, or email it to me um, with your mailing address and I'll get that out to you as well. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you guys have not yet, give me a like on the way out. If you guys wouldn't mind touching that like button ever so gently, I'd really appreciate it. It does a lot for the channel to help grow things. If you're not yet a subscriber, please consider subscribing. In addition to the live stream, I try to put out content at least once a week. Um, you know, I'm trying to raise the, the quality of the content so it's become more and more challenging, but at least once a week, I try and get some content out in addition to these live streams. So if you're interested in that, uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have an amazing, amazing weekend. Take care.